You got it locked on Rodeo Radio. Due to circumstances beyond anyone's control, Dr. Dre is in a motherfucking house. So right about now, and I say, Yo, Steve, are you with me? I C E, are you with me? Here's a little something about a nigga like me that never should have let me buy tape from Steve. Would like to play in Don't shit mix by Dr. Dre Since I was a youth I like concert Now I like the motherfucking rodeo Buying a tape or two That's what the hell I do You don't like Tony A Well fuck you This is a game And I'm in it Ice Cube will fuck you up in a minute With a right, left, right Making you sick And then you see Tony A is on the mix <laughs> Welcome back, everyone, to Rodian Radio, episode 270. And before I introduce my very special guest, actually one of my very special guests of the night, I want to uh, mention that Nacho Granny's Cookies has sponsored our show. I actually been running a little bit late, so I didn't get a chance to put them on the table. But uh, when we come back, I'm going to show you guys so we can all eat them because uh, they're beautiful cookies. And who doesn't love cookies? You know what I'm saying? So anyways, uh, on the description... Uh, her Instagram is there. You can click on it, and it'll take you directly to her page, and you can DM her, ask her prices, what type of cookies. Some are medicated. Some are regular ones, but they're nice and big. So, you know, guys like cookies. So, anyways, other than that, um, if you guys didn't see Calls with the Wizard on Sunday, you guys may want to go back. That one was a nice classic one. Definitely go back and check that one out. You won't be uh, disappointed. We had a surprise call at the very end, and it went really, really well. So once again, you know what? I want to thank everybody that's on the live chat, everybody who comments, comments, likes, dislikes, shares, whatever. You guys are still watching. But uh, I got a very special announcement to make as well that um, Freaky Tales will be introducing co-host Marvelous Inc., to the show and he will now be a part of the freaky tales uh team and he will be here on friday at 8 p.m many of you guys have been asking for that so we're going to continue to promote that i'll put the flyer on the, the freaky tales page and on my page tomorrow for you guys to uh i guess that have been asking for the freaky tales so uh other than that man you know what i'm just rambling so let me go ahead and jump right back into it with the one and only Mr. CR, how are you, brother? I'm great. Glad to be here. <laughs> you know what, man? Let's let, at least let the people know how we first met. We met at the Ice T show. Yes, sir. And, and you know what, Ice T, man, for being an older cat, for being an OG, he still did a fucking dope ass show. Yeah, that's a legend right there, man. He's still that's a legend right there. That's a motherfucking legend, man. Right? Yes, yes, up. exactly, man. You, you know what's funny? Because you see him on TV, you see him on commercials. But his ass still be keeping a gangster, man. Yeah, yeah. And then, I mean, if you uh, known him from way back in the day, that man, that dude came a long ass <laughs> way. I, went to, colors, colors, <laughs> colors. Just from that, and then looking to what he's doing right now, man, that dude, I would never would have thought he'd be as big as I, he I know, is right now. I know. And to still be able to hold down a show like that, I thought that was, yeah, was really, dope. really dope, man. Other than that, man, how was, let's go back to Friday. How did your weekend go, man? It was great, great. I chilled, you know, listened to some good music. It was great. Got got relaxed and psh. No shows, you didn't go, you know. But, um, damn, man, we've been doing so much shit. What, what did we do? What did we do last weekend? Because I know you, you attend a lot oh, of shows. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We did the uh, 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 Bad Bitch video with Johnny and him. Uh, 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 it was a single we got called Bad Bitch coming out mm. and, um, with the West Coast Creations. And, uh, okay. We did that, the video shoot oh, with Johnny uh, who, and him. Who produced it? Um, C1. Oh, okay. He said he, said he was his, uh, 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 his mentor. That's <laughs> it, C1. You, you know what? One thing about Carlos, I know mm. him as Carlos, so when people could tell me, you know C1, you know C1? I was yeah. like, who in the hell is that? You yeah. know? Yeah, he dope, though. But Carlos, I've been knowing Carlos since he's been 11 years old. Mm. And let me tell you something about Carlos. A lot of people may not know. It was uh, March 24, 1988. Me, him, my boy Mario went with my mentor, Steve, uh, Steve Yano, uh, 
who gave Carlos his first job at 11 years old, mm. who had given me my first job at 11 years old, took us to a uh, NWA show. Oh, that's dope. Yeah. So he, he C1 used to be at the uh, rodeo and all that shit too? C1 worked at the rodeo. <laughs> I would make the mixed tapes, for, you know, Dre did and then I did. That's you know? dope. That's but dope. yeah, so C1 has a lot, a lot of history with vinyl. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of cats that say they do, but I know for a fact that he's been there like from the very beginning. I mean, he saw B Real coming to the stand, Dre, Easy, Cube, all those guys will come to the stand. You know, a lot of people when I tell them these stories, they don't believe it because they're thinking of the Cubes and Dre's today. Mm -hmm. No, this is when they were just barely coming up. Yeah, they was getting you know? grind on. Yeah, so yeah, but y'all, what well, y'all was that shit? Y'all had to get y'all music. Had, if y'all shit, they weren't playing the shit. People weren't liking that shit. It was, it was a no go. Shit. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. yeah so, uh, um, so uh, ultimately, how did the video come out, man? So far, dope. It came out dope. You know, when you were uh, when you were artist, uh, um, where I'm at with it, as far as no, no major record deal and shit like that, mm -hmm. and then I'm like, I gotta come to my video. It's a song called Bad Bitches. Bitches be like, nah, they they they, they got a certain thing in their mind where they think it's gonna be some bullshit. But hopefully. When this shit come out, and next time I invite some chicks to jump in the video, when they see this, how classy it is, they'll be like, okay, right. it'll be a little bit easier for them. One thing about videos today compared to the videos before, before they had like major, major budgets. Like, I think uh, I'm. Uh, I like to say it was fucking whack, bro, but mm -hmm. our I'm Not Your Puppet video was $25,000. Mm -hmm. And this guy came all the way from Australia to film our video at mm -hmm. the Rolling Swami, okay? We would tell girls, and girls just flock. Our second video was done by the Hughes brothers, and we did that at Venice Beach. What was what was the second one? Uh, Leave my curls alone. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, yeah, yeah. we did that one. Quick was there. Easy was there. Sam Perkins from the Lakers there. There was a lot of people there, and we would tell girls show up, and they sh would flock. Yeah, but see, y'all was on, man. Y'all well, was on. Okay, but to, but today thing. here's the difference. We got Instagram models. Mm. They want to get paid. Man, these bitches, man, these plastic ass. <laughs> Fuck out of here. <laughs> You need to be. You need to be paying me. Pretty much, nah, but yeah, but yeah, yeah. anybody. Any, it's like anybody could get famous. You know, I, I, I know, but bro. it's a lot of suckers out here that be. They, I mean, they doing a thing called OnlyFans where they. I clicked on one just out of curiosity. You got to pay ten dollars just to. I'm like, I could get my girl to do that. I could, I should start an OnlyFans page for her, but it really be my shit. I just be having her take the pictures and shit. <laughs> shit, they get they get money like that. That's kind of like uh, uh, internet pimping. You know what, man? There's even only feet. Well, it's only fans, but the, some women just show their feet, and there be dudes over there. You know, but if your feet look like fucking demon feet, it's better oh, if you yeah. just don't show that. Shit. What type of motherfucker would take? You gonna pay to see somebody feet? But yeah, they doing like, it. Yeah, just feet. I know people, baby mamas, that was getting paid on the low for selling feet pictures. So. Oh well, to each their own. <laughs> yeah, I guess you get whatever pay the bill. I mean, I might have to give me a bitch to sell some feet pictures for me. <laughs> Man, I just, you, maybe you, I could, you never know. Maybe I could get a budget for my next record. Yeah, from a so, feet pictures. So, so now, uh, uh, Cr, uh, for the fans that may not know and they're barely getting to know you right now, mm -hmm. uh, uh, not only is your Instagram will be up on the on the page, mm -hmm. but also on the descriptions so that people can go and follow you as well. But uh, where originally are you from? Like, where were you born and raised? Okay, y'all from, um, well, I was born at Long Beach Memorial Hospital, but I was raised on, um, in, like, you know, South Central or the Watts area or whatnot, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And, um, yeah, it was, that's where I was born and raised at, man. Well, what uh, elementary, middle school, and high school did you attend? Well, I went to 49th Street Elementary School, and then I went to, uh, I was getting a magnet program, which basically was a program that take you from the grimy areas to, to so-called better schools. Right. So in junior high school, although I stayed in like, the Carver Junior High School area, we got bused to a place called 32nd Street USC Magnet School, which okay. is by the Shrine Auditorium. Okay. And then from there, you went to high school after that, you know, the game banging at that time. I went to Fairfax, Crenshaw, Locke High School, and then it was a wrap. Okay, any sports growing up? No, nah, it was just all, all music. Music been there since oh, elementary shit. school. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Growing up with your mom and dad or whoever you were raised with, mm -hmm. uh, what type of music was played around your home? Like, what, what type of music were you raised with? Okay, well, um, basically, because um, my, my, pe my peoples was like a, a resort of that nation of Islam shit, uh -huh. right? So they was real strict. No really TV, no music. It wasn't until when we moved over, uh, we stayed in the Pueblos, but then we ended up moving to... Uh, like the Avalon's over there. Yeah. And it was, a, ironically, it was a guy that stayed in a back house named um, C Rag or CR. Mm -hmm. And he used to uh, come to a, a back window and he slid us a tape. And on that tape, <clears throat> it was like maybe three or four guys in a midget. 
It was the Ghetto Boys tape. You know what I mean? He's in a midget. Yeah, but then yeah. when we start hearing that shit, uh, call me the gangster love, bro, that yeah. shit, it was over with. Yeah. But, you know, that was the very first album that I had heard of the Ghetto Boys on the, the album cover. And it had it, an albino on there. It had, uh, I believe he was Red, Reddy Red. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, he was their DJ, and I believe it might have been. No, he wasn't the producer because the guy who produced that record was Rick Rubin. Damn, I didn't know that. Yeah, Rick Rubin produced that record because I remember he got my attention because mm -hmm. I was thinking to myself, like, this motherfucker's hard because they sampled that Gangster of Love song. Yeah, yeah. That shit was hard. And then they came out in, uh, I want to say 1991 because we did a lot of shows with them, we, mm -hmm. whether it was Quick, Second Down on AMG. We did a lot of shows with the Ghetto Boys. Mm -hmm. And, uh, um, but then after that Ghetto, the My Mind's Playing Tricks on Me album, I, I believe it was called We Can't Be Stopped. Then Scarface dropped a single album like mm -hmm. by himself fuck man when i first heard those lyrics i thought to myself a, a, a sane man could not have wrote them lyrics yeah yeah, yeah. he's know? dope we just seen him recently oh yeah uh, I, I, he got a uh the farewell tour he was at the novo killed it no shit killed it he was up there like man and i don't i don't rap to my lyrics i just didn't man that shit was dope well, you know what? That shit. i had b-real here and he said the same thing like if you're gonna if you're a real MC, you don't rap over your lyrics. Hell no. Nah. You just go out there and you just rap. Hell you know? yeah. You know, like I mean, today, I'm not against none of this, but if we really want to talk about the origins and the beginnings of hip hop, it was a DJ and a guy had a fucking microphone. And he wasn't even doing songs. He would just keep the crowd high. That was it. You know what I mean? Like Dougie Fresh. I yes. seen Dougie Fresh do that recently for about an hour. No rap or nothing. He just, uh, and if you're 25, if you, uh, all that shit. He was yeah. just making that shit crack for yeah. an hour straight. Yeah. He but was dope. today, you know, we have fucking a laser show. We got fire and we got yeah, costumes man. and girls. Niggas be, up, niggas be up there like this. <laughs> the music be going. They be, then they drop, you know, sometimes they, they drop the beat. But, and yeah. then, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, that should be crazy. Now, do you remember Millie Vanilli? Yeah. Remember, remember what they got exposed for? Yep. Okay. Uh, yeah. Aren't people somewhat doing the same shit today? Yeah, they acting like they on Soul Train. Yeah, so Trey, you, know, you can't perform live, so niggas just be up there. That's yeah. that so Trey shit. Yeah, it is, it is. But I like to be do it live because sometimes, sometimes uh, uh, um, you might say it a different way than how it sounded on the record. Then when the DJ dropped the beat, and, and then, then the crowd be like, oh, did he kick it back in? You know, that's I'd rather do it live yeah, like that. Yeah, You know, I wanted to ask you, do you know my boy, uh, you may know, if you know C1, you may know him from the Black Forest Crew Wiz. Yeah, that's the homie. Yeah. <laughs> that's the homie. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. I've been knowing Wiz since the early 90s. Uh, uh, he did, a, he actually engineered a lot of my old, uh, like, 90s stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, whenever I produced for a lot of Chicano rappers from, like, 96 to 2000, mm -hmm. he engineered it all. Yeah, he just did, uh, did some shit for us recently. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. That guy right there, bro, is really, really uh, underrated, especially when it comes to engineering, mm -hmm. you know. So, yeah, you're in good hands with that guy, bro. Yeah, I ain't know. I ain't know he was on like that. Shit. Yeah, yeah. As a I'm matter, about to buy my bear. Yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, do you know the other guy, Moan, Ramon, a uh, Puerto Rican cat? He used to be a part of the Black Forest crew. Uh, okay, no, no. Uh, it was it was Wiz, uh, Ram, uh, what they call him Moan, but see, I'm mm -hmm. out, uh, Ramon, and there was another cat, and uh, uh, but Moan is now a, I believe, I don't know if he still is Carson Sheriff. Oh damn. Yeah. Shit, so you gotta get your money. Mm. So now, other than that, man, you said that when you, is it safe to say that you were introduced to rap, uh, maybe by the Ghetto Boys, like that was the first you heard? That, that but at, at, well, simultaneously at the same time, um, my people's bought us like a, it was like a clock radio. So, you know, as kids, we would just fuck with the clock radio. You know, at this time, you know, FM stations, we was playing a lot of that freestyle music. Right. So one day, I'm like, fuck with the AM. I fuck with the AM, and I turned the dial all the way to the right, and it was kind of fuzzy. And then I heard a motherfucker, talk, a bitch is a bitch. Oh, uh, yeah. It was Ice Cube. And then it's just, uh, 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 you are now listening to KDAY, right. Los Angeles. And then I'm like, what the fuck is this? And then they was playing, back then, it's it like they played more rap than they did. R&B And once I heard that shit I was, I was I fell in love with that yeah. shit man. Remember in the very beginning Of that song Let's describe a certain female Oh yeah yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. That same guy Is the guy who talked on Jack Move That's, that's dope That's the that's same dope. guy That's dope uh, um, And you know what I haven't released the pictures yet But I still have pictures and videos Of us recording those songs over there That's dope So that's hopefully dope. I get to release it on YouTube But now Okay 
before you ever rap, were you ever, did you ever dabble in DJing, b boying, break dancing, uh, popping? Well, uh, well, we dabbled in graffiti a little bit. Okay, but um, I tried to dance, but I wasn't really good at that <laughs> shit. Yeah, but I, mean, I always wanted to do the rap shit, though. Right, right. I was real good at that as a youngster. We used to take the uh, it, it would take a radio with a dual cassette player right here, one side, then the other side. We'll play the beat on one side and then re press the record button on the other radio, and then we would just rap the shit like that, record songs like that. And about how old were you when that was going on? That was like 12 to 11, 12. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Elementary school and shit. You know, it's funny, man. I'm going to show you something during break. I found one of my very first flyers when I was DJing. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I bring it up is you said 12. This was a 1980 flyer. Mm -hmm. And it was the same year that I had met uh, Joe Cooley from Rodney on Joe Cooley. Mm -hmm. And it was 1980. And I was DJing at a 16 and over club in the city of Long Beach called Grand Central Station. Okay. You know, on the east side where all the insanes used to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just found the flyer today, man. And uh, it just brought me back so many memories. That's some classic shit right yeah, there. Yeah, you know, because my brother used to run the place. So I used to always say to myself, what business did I have being there at 12 years old? Hip hop shit. <laughs> that shit is. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's like a. Re that's the only thing outside of religion that bring. Hip hop then had me mingling with people I never thought I would mingle with if I wasn't doing that shit. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, so, yeah, now, yeah, now, now you had said you grew up in a home, I guess, it's a safe to say a religious home. They were, uh, you said, in the Nation of Islam? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And they separated. Oh, okay. So, uh, 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 so it's like we stand with our moms and then pops you know, somewhere else. So being the fact that they separated and there's three of us, they all gone all the time, working. So we oh, okay. just learn shit out on our own and shit. Okay. You know I mean? Would you still consider yourself a part of the nation of Islam or a Muslim? Nah, I'm, nah. Okay, that was just someone you, it was just a That's, kid? That was them. Okay. Yeah, you know, uh, uh, well, my brother and my sister, they serious into that, but me, I'm, nah. Okay. Really. The, the reason why I ask that is because I've interviewed people that would tell me they grew up in like an every religious home, like a Christian home, mm -hmm. and they weren't allowed to listen to like the secular music or to mm -hmm. even rap. So that's what I wanted to ask, if you were raised as a Muslim, would they would have been okay for you to rap? Oh, it's still to this day, my possibly like, we need to kill all the gangster rappers. Oh, okay. And I think he'd be talking, I think he'd be watching my shit on the low, and then when I see him, he'd be like, yeah, these rappers need to go. <laughs> he'd be tripping like a motherfucker. But yeah, but yeah, they, they, they don't, you know, because they, you know, they think uh, it, uh, it's the cause of, Whatever I'm like, man, rappers ain't doing nothing but talk about what they seeing in the street. That's we it. not influenced, like all that shit NWA was talking about. We was seeing that shit. Yeah, it ain't like yeah. they make this shit up on the record and people just started doing it. That was already happening. Right, uh -huh. right. And you, you know what, man? It's it's funny though because I've talked to a lot of, for me, West Coast legends. Like I had Violet Brown here. I've had. Mm -hmm. Lonzo from the World Class Wrecking Crew. I had Arabian Prince. I had clientele from the World Class Wrecking Crew. Uh, Man, just so many other people that 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 come don't come to mind right now, but they've been there since day one. And mm -hmm. I've always asked them this question: When rap first came in, what were people saying about rap? Like radio stations, record labels, and they all said the same thing across the board: It's just a fad. Mm -hmm. It's just gonna you know pa pass away pretty much. It's on its way out. Yeah. And that co the hip hop culture has changed the world, man. Yeah, and it shows that the motherfuckers didn't know shit what the fuck they was talking about. They didn't fucking know. No. They didn't fucking know. You know, I had. Um, did you ever see the the um the, and, and and there's a point why I'm sharing this. Um, what the fuck? L. A. Originals uh, documentary on yeah, Netflix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's what uh, uh, Oreo and uh, Cartoon. Esteban Oreo and Mr. Cartoon. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Cartoon's <laughs> another uh, um, Rodian Swamp Me guy. That's who I met there at, at the Rodium. Oh, that's dope. And um. When I interviewed Esteban, Esteban here, he had told me that um, Netflix only wanted to release it in Netflix, Mexico. For like what? that was for it. For what? What the fuck for? That's some hater shit, man. It, it is. That's some hater it shit. It is. You would think you would you would make more money if you just let the people want to see that shit. Yeah. I, I yeah. Don't, that, that's them corn bars behind it, them Hollywood corn bars. They think they know what they're doing. They don't know what the fuck they're doing. You know, when I shopped my documentary... Uh, uh, we went to Hulu. We went to Amazon. That shit supposed should be on Netflix or something. Okay, we went. As a matter of fact, one of the girls that worked for Netflix came here to the studio. And we played mm -hmm. it for her. Now she got offended at what I asked her because mm -hmm. I asked her, "Are you originally from Southern California?" And she said, "No." And I said, "Do you mind if I ask where you're from?" Mm -hmm. And she said, "I'm from India." See, that's to be the problem. You got people that's 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 from other places yes. dictating what's how you. It's like that nigga say. 
uh, uh, you don't know the meaning of dope when you look when you looking for a, cleaner, a mountain climber who plays an electric guitar. How you how you in control of what comes out as far as hip hop in the game, and you don't even you ain't even you don't even fuck with this shit. I know. That's why so much corny shit out right we now. We met people from Amazon, Hulu. One guy was from Canada. One guy was from Philadelphia, and they were all young guys. And I'm thinking these are the guys that are determining what's going to be played out here. But it, it but you know what? Sometimes I feel like. We probably sh- at times should be blaming ourselves because we need some of our people in those locations. By the by, the time we go over there, we're already there, and they understand our culture yeah, and yeah, see, yeah. okay, this shit will, will work right here. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And then they not even realize it. It's a big demand for that shit right now. Yeah. And they that, but they these motherfuckers. Are... Um, you know what? And I don't want to sound. I don't want to sound like this is something racial, but mm-hmm. I couldn't believe it. at at that time. I don't know if it's still now, but at the time, 2019, 2020. The lady that was in charge of signing documentaries, like, mm-hmm. okay, we're going to give you a deal type of shit, was a lady from India. You know, and I guess my only question would be like, okay, look, I, I don't doubt that you're smart. That's mm-hmm. why you have this job. But my thing is just like, how do you understand this culture? They don't. Or else it'd be more, I mean, it'd, it'd, be, it'd be nice I'd be searching for Netflix, searching Netflix for shit, like that type of shit. It's a big demand for that type of, that type of shit because it's hard to find. Right. And somebody they could make money off that shit and they don't right. even realize that shit. It's no, they don't crazy, realize man. it. No, it's they crazy. they rather release some bullshit. I mean, sometimes they'll release some good murder mystery documentaries and I watch yeah, those shit, you know, where's the hip hop at, man? Yeah. Where's the hip hop, man? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Where's the goddamn rap? So 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 when is this uh, uh video going to be released on what do you when do you expect to drop it? Okay, it's um it's going to be um August 16th. But you know, you know the West Coast crazy dudes, they be doing like a thing called a 3 by 3. Okay. So it's like three singles at the same time. You just had uh Namek on here. He was doing they just did the battle cat mm-hmm. shit. They 3 by 3. So mine's is um the vid- bad bitch video is coming out August 16th along with two other songs. But all produced by your boy C1 too. Okay. Matter okay. of fact, Man, and now, now, uh, does C1 ever come out here, or, or does he just... I never I seen him in person. I never... Uh, yeah, damn. Okay. Yeah, I never like seen him in person. Yeah. I just talked to him, like, maybe about a month ago, mm-hmm. you know, and he's always working. I don't know why he moved to Arizona. It's mm-hmm. a motherfucking hot out there for me. Oh, man. So. Yeah. Hey, look, one time I, when I went out to Arizona, I went outside by the swimming pool at around midnight, and it felt like I was standing inside of a hot closet. Outside at midnight by the swimming pool. Uh, yeah. Uh, we, during the fucking day, it feels like somebody turned on the heater outside. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I just can't understand that shit. Yeah, Las Vegas like that too. Sometimes that's. <laughs> and, and then cold as hell at night. Yeah, see, that's crazy, man. So, all good, man. So now, now let me ask you this: Around what age you said around? I believe you said around twelve. Mm-hmm. You that you began spitting. Did you did you start taking it serious at that time, or was it just something you were just fucking around with? Yeah, I was taking it serious. I, that's what I wanted to do. But then I ended up. Uh, um, we was on a bus one day, and we was rhyming on the back of the bus, and some guy was like, "Oh, you guys rap, huh? Yeah, I need to go up to this place called the Good Life Cafe if you really think you could rap." Uh-huh. So we start going. That was a, like an open mic spot in the early nineties, every Thursday night. Right. So when we started going there, we started running into cats like Two Mix, mm-hmm. a, a, a group called Freestyle Fellowship, and a bunch of underground um, LA greats from there. One, see now Cube on K Day that inspired me to rap. But when I went to the Good Life and seen what they was doing, it showed me how to try to do it a different way than what everybody else was doing because they was all on some lyricist shit. Them dudes was beasts up there, man. Yeah, yeah. Now, now let me ask you this. Um, has anybody made a documentary about that place? Well, it was a girl named um, Ava DuVernay. She got a thing on, it was on Netflix, as a matter of fact, called uh, This Is The Life. You know what I mean? Okay. And, and it's basically a documentary about the good life and it's interviewing a lot of cats that was a, uh, um, that was a high caliber from that place. I'm, I'm actually on there, but I'm not being interviewed. But it's just footage of me on there. But that uh, this is the life. It's, I think it's still on Netflix. But um, I'm gonna that, have to look it up. Yeah, but it, it shows two Max All the news is on there. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Your Medusa's on there too. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Because Medusa's I interviewed two Max here. I interviewed uh, Cholo Lancinco. That's the homie too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm trying to remember who else uh, that was there, but they, like. I never went there a mm-hmm. lot of the times because I was pretty much always out of town. But y'all was on though, too, so, at the time. So. But I wish I could have went there because when I hear a place like that, it reminds me of Radiotron. Mm-hmm. I visited Radiotron twice. Mm-hmm. And I still have those memories, and it's pretty much all I have. Mm-hmm. So hopefully uh, Carmelo Alvarez, who used to own the place, mm-hmm. hit me up. He Radiotron. Wants me, yeah, he wants me to do music for his movie. They're doing a movie on uh, Radiotron. Oh, that's dope. So, yeah. But, but those kind of places do need to be, uh, if you were archived in either in a movie or... Uh, documented in a documentary. Yeah, yeah. People you know? want to see that shit, man. 
So this is the life. Is that what you said? It's this is the life. It's oh. on Netflix called This Is the Life. And Ava doing. It, she's a uh, she directed. It. She's a big time director now. But back then she used to rap. Up at the good life. Okay. <laughs> but she transitioned to this big time director, so that's pretty dope. Okay, and who was this again? Uh, uh, Ava DuVernay. Okay, Ava DuVernay. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to definitely check that out. Now, yeah. I know rappers came out of there. What about DJs? Uh, well, they had DJ Newmark. DJ Mark Love used to be up there. Uh, DJ uh, DJ Drez. Uh, 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 it's, a, it's a lot of them, but it's probably slipping my mind right now. Uh, but a lot of DJs came from out of there, too. Okay. Fat DJ Fat Jack. You know, because it was a lot of the uh, uh, volume ten pistol grip pump. Yeah. He comes from there. Um, there's a guy named Skeeter. I wish I was a little bit taller. I wish yeah. I was. he came from there. Um, back in the days when I was young, I'm not a kid. Yeah. He came from out of there. I used to see corrupt up there every now and then. I used to see exhibit in the park a lot of, every now and then. It was a guy named um, Main Green Rash Cash in there. They was off from um, Patchwork Recordings in Atlanta. They had uh -huh. the uh, record label studio in Atlanta, but they used to be up there. A lot, a lot of motherfuckers used to used to be passing through there. Okay, and, mm -hmm. and from what years to what years? What, what is it open until it closed? Um, I would say from um, maybe uh, maybe nine ninety to like ninety four ninety five. So it was a good like four years in. Yeah, and then okay. after that, uh, a thing called the Project Blow started, which was the continuation of that. Okay, and how yeah. did that go for the for the people that may not know? This is probably the first time that they're hearing about it. Mm -hmm. So you attended these both both. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, okay. it was, it was um, open my spots every Thursday night. Now in the good life, it was like they had rules up in there where you would go up there, you couldn't cuss. Um, stuff like that But then when the Project Blowed open It was just like A no hoes bar That was like a penitentiary A rap penitentiary In a sense <laughs> Niggas was coming up there Getting served You know Fighting behind What you what Niggas be up there With that old bullshit I'm the synthesizer The synthesizer The synthesizer The breath of all that Old crazy <laughs> shit The nigga be like Nigga I don't rap Like it was going down At that motherfucker That was like a rap penitentiary And shit Now, now, now let me ask you this <laughs> Straight up For uh, Because I've had comedians here mm -hmm. and, and I've always mm -hmm. asked them is it hard to do comedy without cursing? Some have said yes. Some have said no. Mm -hmm. Now, now let me liken that to rap. Mm -hmm. You said at one place you couldn't curse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the other one, it was like the fucking pen. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. Could you do both? Yeah. Just, I just recently, I just talked to him. Um, we just recorded some shit, right? And lately, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to start not cursing on the shit because I'm tired of the homie. We need a radio edit. So I'm going to start, yeah. and, and it challenge you. To, I mean, if you can't just, so, huh, what the fuck? If you, if you can't come up with nothing besides a cuss word, then what type of, right? you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been doing that lately, because I'm mainly, for the most part, I'm tired of making radio edits and shit. Right, right, right. And then many times, you may not know where you're going to get hired at, because I remember, remember, I forgot where we were. And they told High C, you can't see no curse words here. Mm -hmm. And we were about to cancel that motherfucker because. Mm -hmm. Oh, the he, show? Yeah, a show. But he on, he on one. Me and compadre, yeah. do no me gusta, chinga tu madre. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, so he, he couldn't he say that. <laughs> that was tripping. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so, so when he would say, because girl, you're on my dick, dick, dingling, yeah, 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 the guy yeah, goes, yeah. can you just say, girl, you're on my ding, ding, ding? Uh, the, that's what the guy said. Then come to find out that this was like a, a Mormon owned. I guess club, mm -hmm. and they just since they hold like the religious events there, oh. they rented it out, and they just said we just don't want no curse words here. In the but they was gonna pay y'all too, though. Huh? Yeah, we were, but I just told them, well, you, bro, just say ding, ding, ding. Yeah, they on my ding, ding. <laughs> I'm y'all paying me? Shit, we gonna get this cracking. Yeah, and, and then we had a song called Yo Dick. He goes, how, how, <laughs> I was like, he goes, how do I say? Out of my tip. Yeah, I was like, bro, we just skipped that song. Yeah, yeah, go skip you know? it, yeah. But we'll do, he goes, we'll do 30 minutes, talk more, you know. Mm -hmm. you know talk more, you know, get, get the crowd involved, and we'll go from there. Yeah, so yeah. he was like, yeah, all right, all right. So, But we had to do a couple of shows like that. Now, mm -hmm. say, say, say you're booked for a show, right? Okay. And um, they're paying you, I don't know, 1500 bucks for mm -hmm. 15 minutes. Okay. Okay. But uh, you know what? We're a re very religious group, and we don't want you to curse. Can you do that? Yeah, yeah. We done that before several okay. times. Hell you yeah. want to say fuck yeah? Hell yeah, <laughs> fuck yeah. <laughs> but now, nah, but hell yeah, but now, nah, but for, 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 sometimes we be, we'd be like, uh, and then when it comes to the customer, I'd be like, and then you know, just you know, man, shit. They paying, I'm gonna make it happen. I'm gonna make it happen. Just trust and believe. But I don't really do, uh, 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 I don't really do too much cussing like that anyway. So okay, you know okay. what I mean? That'll so, work. That'll, yeah. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and take a ten minute break. Mm -hmm. We're gonna come right back and uh, we're gonna open up the phone lines. If anybody wants to call you, man, it's all good, man. You know, if anybody wants to call and ask him a question or uh, ask him whatever yeah, or ask, ask me whatever, a question, man. but make sure it's pertaining to music. We don't want no bullshit. 
We don't want you calling, confessing your feelings. Or anything well, gang, like that. what was the last time you shot somebody? Yeah, 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 exactly. So we'll, we'll open hang up this the phone. Up. <laughs> so no, other, other than that, you know what? Uh, uh, yesterday we had the passing of Vince Scully, so we want to say rest in peace. Uh, rest in peace. And uh, much love, respect to all Dodger fans, everybody who loves the Dodgers. Once again, Vince Scully will be uh, forever missed. So once again, 10-minute break. We'll come right back. So make sure you call somebody, text somebody, slap the shit out of somebody, let them know that Mr. CR is in the motherfucking building, and we'll be back in a few minutes. Call somebody, text somebody, slap the shit out of somebody. Let them know that Rodian Radio is live up in this yacht. Hey, what it do? It's your boy Cap G. Subscribe to Rodeon Radio, hosted by Tony A. The Wizard. Yes, sir. Yo, what's up, y'all? This is King T chilling on Rodeon Radio. Tune in, subscribe every Sunday and Wednesday. Fucking with my man Tony A. The Wizard. West up, this Lazy Dub, and you're tuned in to Rodeon Radio right here with Tony A. The Wizard on every Sunday and Wednesday, 7 p.m. Make sure you like and subscribe there. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm right here at Local Negro, Tony A, Rodium Radio. Tune in. Yo, yo, what's up? It's your boy MTO right here with Tony A, the Wizard on Rodium Radio. Make sure you like and subscribe and tune in every Sunday and Wednesday. What's up, everybody? It's your homegirl, Lovely, and I'm right here at Rodium Radio with my boy Tony A, the Wizard. Make sure you subscribe and check them out every Sunday and Wednesday. It's Nina Beretta with Rhodium Radio and Tony A. The Wizard. Tune in Sundays and Wednesdays. Like and subscribe. What's up, everybody? This is a Puppet Master chilling with El Triste. Follow and subscribe to Rhodium Radio with Tony A. The Wizard. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Rashidi Harper, director, executive producer from Hip Hop Uncovered. And I'm here at the Rhodium Radio with Tony A. the Wizard. Stay tuned. Coming at you live through the Harbor area, you got MC Poncho, the number one Sancho. And you're checking out Rhodium Radio with my man, Tony A. the Wizard. Check it out. What's up? This is Ronan Gray. You're watching Rhodium Radio with Tony A. the Wizard. Make sure to tune in every Wednesday and Sunday. What up, this is Mr. D over at Rhodium Radio with my homeboy Tony A the Wizard. Make sure you subscribe and tune in every Sunday and Wednesday. What's up, y'all? This Uncle Spliff, man, from Spliff DTV. Y'all need to tune in every Sunday and Wednesday to Rhodium Radio with my homie Tony A the Wizard. Yo, you're tapping in with the Steel City Hustlers. This is Rhodium Radio, hosted by Tony A the Wizard. Motherfucking legend, make sure you fucking like, subscribe, share, do all that shit, make stuff. Yo, it's your boy Troublesome Man, TM Gang Live in Full Effect, here at Rodeo on Radio with my boy Tony A. The Wizard. You know what it is, boy. Yo, what's up? This is DJ Ernie G in the place to be. I'm chilling here at Rodium Radio with my homeboy Tony A, the motherfucking wizard. Bought those locals forever. Yo, what's up, man? It's your boy Young Hype here at Rodium Radio with Tony A, the wizard. Make sure y'all subscribe and tune in every Sunday and Wednesday.
Doge. Yo, what's up? It's Anthony Campos, a.k.a. Big Citric, inviting everybody to tune in and subscribe to Tony Vision, Rodeo Radio, with your host, Tony A. The Wizard. What's happening? This is your boy Bobby Castro, and I'm here at Rodium Radio with the homie Tony A, the Wizard. Make sure to like, subscribe, check out the shit. What's good, y'all? Eric Bobo from the Mighty Cypress Hill, chilling right here on Rodium Radio with the homeboy Tony A, the Wizard. That's right. Hey, everybody, this is Cliff Ritchie, and I'm here on Rodium Radio with Tony A, the Wizard. What's cracking it, y'all? Me crazy boy, Blue Rain Music. You tuned in to Rodium Radio with the homie Tony A. The Wizard. Tune in every Wednesday and Sunday, right here. What's up, everybody? This is Dali C, the Trap Queen, and you guys are listening to Rodium Radio with Tony A. The Wizard. Make sure you guys tune in. Yo, what's up? This is DJ Bobby B, and you're live with Tony A. The Wizard on Rodium Radio. 1212 coming to you live from the Harbor area. DJ Ralph Fan rocking beats with my man Tony A rocking the SB1200. Let's go. Yo, what's up? This is DJ Yella coming straight out of Compton Rhodium Radio with my boy Tony A, the wizard. Check him out. Hey, what's up? It's your girl, Miss Gathy from NYC. And I'm Saki with Tony A, the Wizard at Rodin Radio. You already know how to bring that NYC love. Hey, shout out to all of you guys. Hey, what's cracking? It's that guilty one. You're tuned in to Rodium Radio with Tony A, the Wizard, live every Sunday and Wednesday at 7 p.m. Like and subscribe. Ah. What's going on? It's Hazard. You are tuned in with Tony A, the Wizard on Rodium Radio. Make sure you tune in every Sunday and Wednesday at 7 p.m. Like and subscribe on YouTube. Yo, yo, this is your boy Invincible, and you are watching the Rhodium Radio Show with Tony A, the Wizard. Make sure you're tuned in and watching. Ooh, ah. What's up, guys? This is Isabella Soul, and you're tuning in with Tony A, the Wizard on Rhodium Radio. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Peace. What's up, guys? It's your girl, J Rocks. I'm here on Rhodium Radio with your host, Tony A, the Wizard. I'll make sure to tune in on Sundays and Wednesdays, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Yo, what's up? This is Jose Homicide. You hanging out at Rhodium Radio, hosted by Tony A, the Wizard. Like and subscribe.
Welcome back, everyone, to Roading Radio episode 270. And before I introduce, once again, my guest, I want to uh, introduce you guys to these cookies. And these are Nitro Granny's cookies. She sponsored them. These are the medicated ones. So I'm going to give this one to my boy, Alex, because he, he likes to get high. He likes psychedelics. He likes to make love with midgets and when he's in that realm. So anyways, then uh, these are the regular cookies. So these are the nice ones right here. So if you want to try one, bro, feel free to try one. You want one? I'm good. Okay, cool. So after, but once again, hit her up. It's on the description. Go ahead and hit her up and uh, um, she'll break you off with some cookies. So other than that, let's jump right back into it with yes, Mr. C.R. Uh, how are you, my brother? You Great. enjoying yourself? Yes, sir. All good, man. All good. You know what? Uh, you had a question about me, about some DJ question about mm -hmm. something that happened. With oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, what if that was you? On the video when Wiz Khalifa was like, nigga, oh, you want to fight me right now? What would you have done if that was you? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, for those that are barely tuning in, uh, kind of walk us through what led to that. Do you know what, what led to that? Well, uh, as far as Wiz doing that? Yeah, too? as far as Wiz doing that shit. I, maybe they was fucking up his set or something. Uh -huh. I don't know. I, I just seen a part. He was jumping up on stage and then he got off. He was like, you a bitch. And he called the dude a bitch. And he's like, play my shit and play my shit. I don't know if he like pushed it dude, but he said enough to get fired on. But okay. I mean, if it you. was me, and I, he's li <laughs> if he's listening, which I know he's not, but just in case, uh, I, I probably would have open hand slapped his ass mm -hmm. first and then came with the left hook. Yeah, hell yeah. That's what I would have done. Fuck that dude. Look, I don't give a fuck who he is. First of all, I'm not even trying to disrespect him, but if you would ask me why I like his music, I don't like his shit. Mm -hmm. I don't even think that I can rap, and I can always wondered how that guy blew the fuck up. Mm -hmm. You know, and now I'm a big time Dallas Cowboys fan, mm -hmm. so I'll be, I'll be bumping that We Then Boys. Oh, we yeah, then, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. I just like that little part, not his rap, mm -hmm. because it doesn't even make sense. But um, <clears throat> no, bro, being a DJ first, uh, there's no way in hell I would have allowed anybody to, bro, I don't care who you are. You could not, I mean, imagine somebody walks up to you with the mic after you're, you're busting in the middle of mm -hmm. your set and hey, man, you're going to have to get the fuck off, bro. That shit was terrible. I'm a fire on him. Yeah, fire. period. Well, now I'm, I'm trying like, I'm, I'm trying to do, I seen a video. If you just slap a motherfucker, they even take that. Like even, no matter how the fight turned out, man, that nigga slapped me, man. I'm trying to slap a lightning bolt. And lightning and thunder out of one of these motherfuckers for some shit like that. The dude called him a bitch and all that. I know. I tell, I've been telling chicks all the time in LA, if you want to get yourself fucked up real quick, just walk up and down the street and any man you see walking down the street, just walk up to him and say, I think you're a bitch. You're going to get into a fight. Let yeah. alone you a DJ. I'm working for you. I'm, don't get at me like that, bro. Like, yeah. Come on, man. We working together, man. You gonna that's disrespect. But then he pushed him and told him, man, we can fight. He don't, that's the type of shit. People people pick and choose their battles. People don't do that to people they feel like they can get away with doing that. He wouldn't have did battle cat like that. He wouldn't have did you like that. No, I if I was know. a DJ, he definitely sure ain't gonna get at me like that. Or yeah. anyway, I could look around the room and be like, Yeah, I don't think he would have said that to anybody up in here. Yeah, but these no. dudes just wearing uh, um, Popeye the Sailor Man hats and um, skinny jeans and um, tight shirts. So, of course, you're going to be like, nigga, when a nigga like that feel like he could, he, this nigga be wearing shit, was Dunk the Nuns on the internet. On, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what Dunk the Nuns is? Of course. Superman, He-Man shorts. Butt huggers. Yeah, on Instagram. Right. Nigga like that calling me a bitch? Right. You look like a tra uh, That's what Back in the day In Live a Color used to do parodies of rap and shit like that. And he was the parody, but now the parody is the real thing now. I'm not going to be called a bitch by parody. Like, uh, how, how does that turn around? You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't, I think it started with the, uh, you're a jerk, you're a jerk. Because at that time, people was wearing oh, skinny yeah, jeans. Yeah, and then, yeah. then it turned in, well, we could wear some skinny jeans and tight shirts. Well, let's try wearing a skirt. Let's try wearing some, a purse. Let's, let, I'm, a, I'm a blood rapper on my cover with a dress. And I'm going to change my name to sex. That's what Young Doug and them did. Yeah, let, let me get my nails done. Let me get my nails done. Niggas walk, man, you know? psh, we could go on and on and on. This is, I can uh, wear eyeliner. It's accepted. Yeah. Now, you know, kissing them, you know, they, but they were still like, nigga, I'm fucking bitches. I'm sniffing coke and I'll beat you up. You ain't, you ain't gonna get a kiss them, like, you know what I mean? But these dudes, nah, bro. Nah, and and you, know, bro. you know what the sad thing is? That <laughs> nah. I won't mention the guy's name, but I know the guy, he's a rapper. Mm -hmm. He sucked the dude that tried to jump on stage. Mm -hmm. His security was trying to get other people off because mm -hmm. they were trying to get on, like to touch him and to hug him and mm -hmm. bullshit like that. Well, this guy jumped on stage, and I guess he felt that homo was gonna try to attack him, mm -hmm. so he stole on his ass. Mm -hmm. That guy just happened to be gay. The guy he stole on. Yeah. So oh. now he, it's a hate crime. Oh. 
I mean, you just can't uh, get sucked up anymore. Now you you just don't know who might be gay because you might get a hate crime. Well, I was just this, it, gets, it gets even worse than that. I was just re- reading an article about um, Beyonce came out with a song just recently, right? Mm-hmm. And she said something about spazzing out on somebody, and they said, "Oh, you you're disrespecting a medical condition." And, it, and I'm like, "Man, hold on, man! You can't even say spazzing out." Yeah, it's yeah. like we. It, it, well, well, see, but but that's a. That's a way to take away freedom of speech. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in the name of, you've offended me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y- you know, it, it's it's not even, you can't even say shit anymore because yeah. you offend people. It's getting to that point where you can't say nothing. Yeah, pretty soon you're yeah. just going to be like, <laughs> you back in the day, see, back in the day, you you could say, uh, 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 I turn up, well, I don't want to say the, the say F- it. That back in the day, you but I turn a fag into a punching bag, and, uh, 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 all that type of shit like right. that. Now you can't even say that. No, no. Or, or like one time I was playing around with my son. We were in yeah. the in the market, and and again, we're just trying to make. We're having a conversation about certain words that we can't say no more. For an example, mm-hmm. I was with my son. He was about eleven years old. He was playing pop one <clears> football, and it happened to be a Nerf football at the market. So I threw it, mm-hmm. and the way he threw it is if like he was left handed, mm-hmm. and I said that was gay. Oh, so okay, yeah, be tripping on it. And there were two gay guys behind me. And, oh. uh, honestly, and he took that very, very offensive. Oh. You know, yeah. And I just, I just told him, look, dude, I'm gonna be real with you. I didn't tell my son you throw like a homosexual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't tell him that. I, I, I that was just like that's lame. That's what I meant. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, see, they now, just now, use lame. Now look, then you gotta think about back. You know when we came up with Eddie Murphy, delirious, raw, shit oh, like that. Imagine that. Okay, now let me yeah, tell you something about Eddie Murphy now. Okay, yeah. you know delirious. First of all, it's a classic fucking album. Raw's fucking classic. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, uh, that's who I grew up. Obviously, Richard Pryor, yeah. you know, and and uh, um, Eddie Murphy. Yeah. But Eddie Murphy did an interview where he apologized for his delirious. Uh, uh, um, he's trying jokes. to be politically correct. Yeah, bro. Yeah. yeah. I'm a kid, man. Like you know, would consider be a, a it's like it's like hate crime and all that. Back when we was young, man, that, that's how I got introduced to the high. It was a thing called the Hollywood Angels because we used to go to Hollywood and play a game called Point Them Out, Knock Them Out. Unfortunate. I mean, you know, right, we was right. all, you know, but there we go. Yeah, ping, ping, ping. Yeah, Bobby said, but now that would be a, a hate crime. Yeah, you do fucking gang of time. But then it, it, it's something that transpired between then and now. It's somewhere in between that kind of like uh, inspired people to be that way because back I could remember at it as being older I could remember a time but that was very rare and now when you fast forward to now and they know everything that's been happening in between it's almost as if it's like they they they, they when you watch TV shit like they making you accept that yeah and, and I mean I, and I, I'm like you know whatever you do but yeah but you got it in cartoons now you got it in definitely cartoons it's like you yeah. forcing it on what the kids, man? Yeah, y'all, you, whoever's in control of, of what's being shown on TV, y'all don't give a fuck about the kids. Well, they're gonna, they're, but you know, people are gonna say, uh, "Who are you to determine what the kids can watch and who can't?" You know, so. All it, right, well, let me then. All right, well, play some gangster shit on TV then. <laughs> we we going we could we could we we, we, we could watch two boys kissing and two girls uh, uh, fucking, but we can't watch a, a, a nigga at, at the swap meet DJing at the swap meet <laughs> and, and t- telling this story about how these motherfuckers we grew up listening to. Got to where they at. We can't watch that though. It's too but offensive. We, yeah, but we could watch two dudes. Uh, yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> Play. Uh, and then they're gonna be like, you homophobic. A phobia is a fear. I'm not scared of none of that. I just don't fuck with it. Right, right, right. We can watch two guys fucking play uh, pocket pool. But anyways, um, let's talk about your album. Okay, mm-hmm. uh, the Overstand mixtape mm-hmm. by Mr. Cr. Now, mm-hmm. when did that one drop? Okay, that that one dropped um, some months ago, like at okay. the beginning of, of the year, right? Okay. But it's only exclusively on Bandcamp. I tried to release it through the uh, the machine or whatever, but for some strange reason, they wouldn't they would <laughs> they wouldn't let it out because it's a lot of it's a lot of sample. Uh, okay. Kind of like it's a, a, a to y'all shit, you know what I mean? Right. It was like a sample driven shit, so a lot of it couldn't get cleared through the distribution site. So I just had to just leave it on Bandcamp, man. Okay, so uh, Bandcamp is that uh, for the people that may not know what that is? Uh, uh, give us that website where they can find okay, it. Okay, it's basically it's uh, Mister Just M I S T E R C R dot Bandcamp dot com. I got a lot of shit on there, okay. but that's that's the where you can only find Overstand mixtape. Okay, or if not, what they can do, they can go to your uh, uh, your page. Yeah, on yeah. Instagram and then from there they can yeah 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 okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. they just go to my bio okay now on track number one let's talk a little bit about it mm-hmm. and you put uh, um, Overstand intro featuring Tupac and Monster Cody Monster Cody yeah yeah okay now when you say Tupac we talking about the Tupac yeah they did Tupac it's good basically uh, uh, the homie just uh, took a beat and then put a it was a, uh, a phone call that him 
and uh, what Tupac and Master Cody was having, mm-hmm. and he was just basically talking about you know uh, uh, you know you have an understand to stand under some you know overstand I'm standing over like you know the helicopter in the sky you know when he's looking down at us he has an understanding we want to be over like he just was talking some deep shit so I'm like man that should be the intro because exactly how they was describing the term overstand is how I want this. Project to be, okay. you know what I'm saying? Okay. Like we overstand, like we ain't under nothing. We right. over that the bullshit. Okay, and then track number two, ain't safe. Ain't safe. Well, why ain't safe, and what's that song about? Well, basically, because you know, um, it's basically uh, about the Lamar Park area, but basically, it's a uh, paying homage to the Project Blow. So when I'm saying it's not safe, I'm basically um, displaying a, a lyrical thing against you know everybody think they could rap we got saying that everybody think they could rap it to the real rapper step in the room you know and it's sad and unfortunately in these days and times anybody could rap because they done done dumbed it down so much like a person that come from your era will look at this type of shit as trash but i'm an understudy uh, y'all era. i studied jaw so i'm like my thing is i'm trying to continue with jaw do it so so basically it ain't safe is for all you motherfuckers that don't know nothing but who think uh you know what I mean? Yo, 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 rap god is a nigga that's wearing dresses and shit. It's not safe for you if you think you be gonna go in the same place and rap at the, on the same stage. It ain't gonna be safe for you because lyrically, I'm going to murder you. Right. That's what. So that's what that's basically all right, about. All right. Now, say you were at a performing at a show. Mm-hmm. Where's Khalifa walks up and goes, "Give me the mic, fool." I'm gonna let him get the mic and make himself look stupid. I'm okay. gonna. I'm not. I, I ain't gonna say that. I don't want to be arrogant. I'm gonna let him get the mic and let him do his thing. And then I'm gonna grab the mic and I'm gonna do my thing and I'm gonna let the crowd decide what they, you know what I mean? Who's better and who's not? I ain't gonna even. Nigga, I wanna fuck that nigga. All right, I ain't gonna do that. Because they go, oh, nigga, you a hater. Well, well, you know, today when you, today, you know, the thing is that truth is the new hate speech. Yeah, you can't, yeah, yeah. So we'll leave it at that. Yeah. Uh, track number three, drink water. Is drink that good? water. Uh, Hydration? A, yeah, it's a metaphorical tone. You know how motherfuckers be like, man, that nigga thirsty. Mm. This nigga thirsty ass nigga Like you know what I mean Alright man you, you thirsty motherfuckers Need to hydrate yourself And drink some goddamn water You gonna stab me in the back For five dollars You could've went and jo- Got a job But got five dollars Twenty times on your first check Nigga you thirsty Here's some water man I'll Drink that man So it's basically a, mo- a metaphor for Oh It's just a metaphor For a thirsty motherfucker Go drink Go drink some water Stupid so thirsty mm-hmm. doesn't necessarily have to mean like I'm trying to get the the man's cheeks. I'm well, thirsty for homegirl. Yeah, well that could be like that. But I'm I'm mean, adding it to a, these thirsty niggas that that are backstab you for pennies and shit. Or yeah, talk behind you, talk behind you, but bad about you to behind you, but to fuck the same bitch. You nigga, you a thirsty nigga. Why, that's my bitch. Go <laughs> find you another bitch. Why is you trying to fuck the same bitch I'm fucking? You want to kiss her on the mouth? You want to taste and see what my dick tastes like? I could just put my pants down right now, and if you want to see what my dick down like that, I'm just saying. <laughs> But these thirsty, it's thirsty niggas out here. Yeah, like but that. I know one girl that fucks up now. Anyways. Oh. <laughs> so. I don't know. Okay, anyways. Uh, and then it says, uh, yeah, that featuring Debbie Wonder. Oh, yeah, 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 that. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's just, it's just, uh, just, yeah, that, though. You know, we just rapping, but uh, basically, I'm trying to uh, say a positive message on it. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, bounce to this. Bounce to this. I'm talking some real facts on that too. You know what I mean? I'm basically describing my how I grew up in first verse one. Then I'm also describing about how you could be with a chick for so long and you never know that that chick behind your back is the, the work you sleeping with the enemy. That's what the second verse about that is about. You know what I mean? I'm just trying to give people some game from what when I put my experience on the beat and when I put it out there, it might be somebody who will listen to it. I went through that same shit, bro. I feel that, bro. It's just like I took that page out of Ice Cube, but he makes songs. For situations people go through, and they listen to it, get over that shit, and then move forward. Okay, okay. And then we have uh, track number six, The Way. The Way. Oh, that way. Yeah, yeah, that way. The, oh, oh, that way. Yeah, yeah, that way. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I'd be like, uh, uh, uh. Yeah, yeah, you know, the pussy was good. You know, uh, 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 I really like you a lot, but today I got to handle some business, so the door that way. No disrespect, but you got to leave because I got to go handle my business. We've been fucking all night. Three o'clock in the morning came. It's five. I gotta go to work. They go to the door. It's that way, that way. What if she says? That I, ju- I just can't stay here. Nope, bitch. I don't. I just met you last night. I like you a lot, but I just met you last night. So, so nah, you came yeah, to yeah. your senses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. You know, I still gotta handle my business. No disrespect to your baby, but I gotta. I gotta go go to work. Okay. Now, if featuring God. Uh, oh yeah, if got a reef in a, a um, reef, 360. Okay. three sixty. Now okay. if because it's if if was a fifth, we all be drunk. That's basically like oh. if I people have excuses for why they didn't do whatever it is they were supposed to do. Well, if I would have had a, this, or if I would have had what you had, or if I would have had if if was a fifth, we'd all be drunk. 
Fuck the excuses. Just make it shit happen. Yeah. That's what that's yeah. about. Okay, okay. Mr. C speaks, uh, Mr. C oh, speaks interlude. A, that's just an interlude, yeah. Okay. All right, and then it says, uh, <laughs> "What's my name?" Oh, that's just because if the hook go, boom, Mister Cr, then do the Mister Cr. So basically, I'm just talking about myself. Battle Cat did that at the Namek video shoot, so I just recorded it with my phone. My nigga, yeah, my nigga that do beats. I'm like, nigga, look what Battle Cat just did. And he like, he, he a nigga like you. He like, what? He like, watch what I do to this, and he just took that and made the, and it. And that's how that came about. No shit, <laughs> <laughs> nigga. We rap for real, man. You ever thought about getting into comedy? They say I look like Dave Chappelle, Dale Strawberry, DJ Quick with no hair and all this old shit. I'm like, well, I might as well get in the motherfucker. Uh, I'm a, <laughs> I might as well get in that shit. Fuck it. But then I'll get on stage and probably be like, oh, man, this nigga d- did a cold dud. DJ Dave Strawberry. So, so Okay. Okay, then it says, uh, home to you. Fi- uh, featuring Squish. Oh, yeah, home to you. Yeah, basically it's just like, uh, that's a song about when you're having a good day. And you might, you just make, you know, have a good day. You might meet a bomb ass chick. Then y'all just hit it off. Y'all don't even know each other. But then y'all got some kind of connection. Then y'all end up leaving and making it happen. You know what I'm saying? You when body starts slapping. Body starts slapping. That's no cap. Body starts slapping. And, um, so that about that is why I was rapping. You know what I mean? And okay. Yeah. So Okay. The Road. The Road. That's basically, it's, it's On The Road Again. You know, remember that song, On The Road Again? I'm just, that we, country song? Yeah, but I just redid On The Road Again. I'm getting money on the road again. I might be leaving with your hoe, but at the end of the night, I might be leaving with your hoe again. It's just basically a song about uh, going on tour. It's funny that that song was so damn popular. We don't listen to country, but we know Back On The Road Again. But see, and then how I flipped it, that's, the, that's yeah. the, once again, that's studying y'all type of cats. A lot of cats redid... Rolling down the street, smoking endo. Rolling down the street, crotchet ladies go by watching you. Like you know what I right. mean? That's uh, that's an art to the people that came before me, like y'all guys. That's dope, man. That's dope. Yeah. Okay, now the um, the album is called Overstand Mixtape. I mean, well, why Overstand? Because it, it said like uh, understanding is to be like under, like you know, you know, what I mean? I'm over that. Like the, the dude made an example of that is like uh. Like the helicopter when he's looking at y'all in the street, then they send it to telling the police. Yeah, he has a the helicopter has an understanding of what y'all guys doing. No, man, I'm over that. We over that. I I'm I overstand. And that was basically what that man. They didn't get ready to say shit. Well, it sound better. Dude. All right. <laughs> okay. Well, you know what? Uh, I know that you have. Uh, uh, you said August sixteenth. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. Okay, your video drops. You're dropping three songs. Yeah. Um, my thing is that what can people expect other other than those three songs dropping? Mm-hmm. What can people expect from you 2022? Are you coming out with a, a, maybe an a EP, another mixtape, an album, or you know? Yeah. Well, okay. So so well right now. Uh, 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 okay, we got the, the three by three thing, and then I also got this a project with my boy Monstro. So you know, we see when in hip hop, right? Where I'm at, I'm caught between. I'm like in between <laughs> hip hop. Gangster rap, I write in the middle. So okay. I, I do certain certain shit for you know what I mean for cats like y'all to fuck with. But then I also do certain shit for that small group of people that just want to hear certain type of beats and certain type of lyrics. Right. So then, so me and this guy Monstro, all he gave, he was like, nigga, I'm, I'm rapping. He coming with the bars and all that. So me, me and him linked up together, yeah. and we did the Manual Labor, a project called Manual Labor, which okay. is out right now. That's through West Coast Creations as well as a three by three. But as far as projects, I got several projects. That I, I dropped out like maybe three or four projects in one year. I got a project called Solar Power, nigga. I got Reptable, and then I also got the uh, the Overstand shit. Okay. So then we got Manual. I linked up with Monster uh, um, for the Manual Labor to satisfy. The uh, hip hop is, and then I got the three by three coming out August 16th with West Coast Creations and okay. shit. You know I fucking swallowed the ice and it fucked up my I throat. I hate when quick. I do that shit. I be sometimes I be then, then I, I well, drink the soda and then go down the wrong pipe. Then I be coughing. In these days and times right now, I'm get the coughing. They didn't see me yeah. swallow the, the shit the wrong way. They just see me coughing. And everybody wanna grab their purse and walk the across yeah. The you can't even sneeze. Bullshit. You can't even cough. Yeah, you I can't, man. Nigga, uh, nigga. <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and you know what? When when fucking COVID was at an all time high, mm-hmm. you couldn't even cough at a motherfucker, bro. You get arrested. Yeah. Oh, nigga be like, yeah. nigga be like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Turning all blue and yeah, shit, yeah, 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 trying to yeah, hold yeah. that motherfucker. Yeah, that shit crazy, man. Okay, you know what? At this time, you want to bring in your boy, bro? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. All right. Okay, big dog. Just go ahead, sit down, make yourself comfortable. Yeah, bro, what up? What up? You know what? Just speak directly into the mic, please. Yes, sir. Um, you know what? Can you introduce yourself? 
Yes, sir. I'm Monstro, the MC. Stro, one of the graffiti artists out of Crenshaw District, West Coast Creations. Okay, you know what? He had showed showed me um, a picture of a Nipsey mural, if I'm correct, yes, sir. that, that yeah. you had done. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Wh where can people go to see that? Well, I got two of them out there. You got one uh, at 11th Street. It's at a tent shop. It was a commission. That's a stronger stronger one. It's a big, big wall. It's on 11th Street in Central where they be doing the sounds and shit at. Okay. And then you have another one at an alley on Mateo. It's called the UTI Corridor. And at the end of that that uh, little walkway, I did another Nipsey mural. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Now, can you give us a little bit of history about yourself? Like, how long have you been doing graffiti for, for, the, for those that are possibly barely hearing of you now? Mm -hmm. Let's see. I started graffiti is my first love. Then it's MC and they about neck and neck now. I started uh, graffiti in uh, 87, Lemur Park, number of trouble. Okay, 1987. Oh, yeah. so you've been doing this shit for a fucking a long time. Yeah, I started writing and grew into a, more of an artist over 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 time. You know? Okay, yeah. okay. Now, now, <clears throat> I I know this is like for. I like to ask interesting questions for the fans because I'm not a graffiti artist. I've known a lot of graffiti artists. Mm -hmm. Like probably there's two guys that I I met in the '80s. A guy named uh, Flair One Marcus. I think you may know him. Yeah. Okay. He's the one that designed yes. yes. And um, um, I met him at actually at the Rodin Swami and then Mr. Cartoon. Those were the, the only, pretty much the only two guys right. that I know that were graffiti artists that pretty much are still pretty much doing Shout it. Shout out Cartoon, legendary. Yeah. yeah. Now, um, a lot, there was a documentary that came out, Boogaloo Shrimp, Michael Chambers, uh, Turbo from Breaking. Mm. He's from my neighborhood. The reason why I'm bringing this up is because I, I have a point to this. He said in his documentary that popping started in New York. Pop locking, okay? Okay. Started in New York. Now, we could say that, you know, yeah, breaking did. There was a lot of dudes out here that were looking for his ass because they were pissed off because they're from out here, and they were saying, no, nah, it didn't start in New York. Pop locking started out here, okay? Mm -hmm. So now, <clears throat> would you say graffiti started out there, or did it start, right he start here, or was it almost a simultaneous thing? Let me see. I think a lot of styles came out of New York, but I wouldn't say graffiti itself started out there. Um, you know, you got a lot of old, old writers from from them old hoods, like White Fence and that, like old shit, like back in the 50s, you know what yeah. I mean? That was getting up, you know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, and That's still a part of graffiti. You know? Okay. And now, now, again, I don't know, so I'm asking, when people graffiti, do they use different tips as far as cans? Yeah, well, you you different cans got different pressures. You know, some cans are more aggressive than others, um, but there's definitely different different tips. Okay, know? now in the '80s or early '90s, yeah. were those tips available? Nah, in the '80s and early '90s, we had to steal all our shit. You okay, know? <laughs> we we uh, now as graffiti is less mysterious, it's accessible to everybody. Motherfucker can pick it up overnight, but the thing is that they don't have no resume and they don't know what styles originated from what, and they missed a lot of chapters. You know? Now, in graffiti, I know in producing, I know in breaking, popping, and DJing, we have a lot of biters. Mm -hmm. In graffiti, is there a lot of biters, like still styles? Yeah, but everything came from somewhere. Everybody used something before that, before them. Okay. But the thing is, it's just <clears throat> flipping it more so into your own style. Like, how can you freak that style your way? Right. I mean, okay, okay. <clears throat> Who? What were some of the early graffiti movies that you would say possibly inspired or that you would enjoy watching growing up? Uh, Wild Style, I'll say. And then um, later on in the game, you had um, uh, Meeting of Styles. That, that was more so an event. But but for me, Wild Style set the tone. Wild Style. Uh, then there was another one, but I think it was more breaking. Style Wars. Style Wars. That's the one I was looking for. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, eventually we had um, Homeboy Spit from uh, 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 B Street. From B Street. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's a lot of spits out there right now. Really. To this day. Hey, you got motherfuckers that pride themselves on like capping on like full elaborate murals. You no know? shit. Um, I don't like to look down on anybody that's in the graffiti culture. I think taggers got a place in it, bombers got a place in it, and full on muralists have a place in it. But it's all about getting better. But um, you know, when you go and like pride yourself on capping on somebody's uh mural that they put in hours on, that's a no go in my book. Yeah. You know yeah. Saying? Yeah. You know, one thing that I wish we could have had out here in the eighties, like when New York had uh uh subways. 
Mm-hmm. You know, because well, we had the MTA, we had the RTD. Right, right, the yeah. RTD. Yeah. Pretty much, because I remember when I went out there to New York, the first time I went out there, they took out the most subways, they, they put them in with the new ones. Right. But in one location, they actually had uh, uh, some subway trains on display from the old days of people. Right. Be, and yeah. it, it was fucking pretty I remember dope. remember that. But see, in our day, let me see, this is about 87, 88, 89, the bus mobbing, uh, Thing took off, and we would just battle on RTDs. We could get driver side des- destination, rooftop grills, inside grills. The buses, the bus mobbing became our thing. No shit. Sure. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. You know, now I don't want to ask you too too much because I eventually would like to bring you back and go a little bit more into depth. Oh, sure, definitely. You know, and, and like ask you around what time did usually would you guys do this? But we'll save that. You know, what I'm saying because I know usually. Uh, People do that shit at night? All day. We just be broad daylight with it. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. Now, let me ask you this about a guy that was very, very famous coming up. Uh, you remember Chaka? Mm, I've just seen him not too long ago. Okay. Yeah. Now, would he be considered a graffiti artist or just a tagger? Hmm. Chaka, his style is more landmarks. He okay. gets up around the city. I've seen him do burners. I haven't seen him do elaborate pieces, but... um. I think he's built himself up to an, a graffiti artist. Yeah, I was I would see him as a graffiti artist. Okay, because yeah. I'm remembering the fucking eighties, bro. He was with no yeah. social media, that motherfucker was popular. Yeah, Chaka was 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 a beast. I remember he had that case in CCB and I and I had a case in CCB at the time and I would see his tags in the in the elevator. In the so, elevator, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was like, this motherfucker. Yeah. But anyways, listen, uh we come to the end of our interview. Uh, uh, I would like to bring you back. Okay, okay? I'll get so. your info. We'll book you uh, because the reason why I want to bring you back because you know at least for me there's four elements of hip hop. Some people want to add the fifth as knowledge, uh, uh, but here we have b boy and here we have DJing, MCing, and graffiti. Yeah, yeah, and you got certain cats that don't even see graffiti as an element of hip hop. It, it um, all it's all hip hop so to me. I fit. That's where I'm cut from. Right. You know, but, so, uh, yeah, I'll come back. We can talk more about the music. Manual Labor out now, though. Monstro, Mr. CR, West okay. Coast Creations. You know yeah, I mean? we'll talk about both. We'll talk, definitely talk about Solid. both. Big Dog, you want to come in here and give a couple of your shout outs? We got about two minutes, so. Uh, well, I ain't gonna take the. I like to give a shout out to everybody for the West Coast creations because I used to tell them niggas, nigga, one day I'm gonna get on Tony Yates shit, <laughs> and we and we all made it happen, man. So shout out to West Coast creations and shout out to Tony Yates and Rodian and Radio and everybody that's keeping hip hop alive. Uh, all good. You know what? All it took is just for me to go to the Heist T show. <laughs> hey, hey, I ain't gonna lie. I was like, man, I was coked the fuck out tripping. I don't know what I told Tony A, but that nigga following me right now on motherfucking Instagram. I'm gonna get on Rodian and Radio. Why? I'm just fucking with you. All good, man. <laughs> all good. Shout out to Rodian Radio. This is an OG right here, man. Thank you, my brother. <laughs> I was just listening to your shit the other day. Me, I see it's one mean <laughs> compadre. Do no me gusta. That shit still bang. Had these niggas out here making that water down music. I ain't going to listen to your shit five minutes from now. So. All good. All good. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and take a 10-minute uh, break. We're going to come right back. Once again, much love, much respect to Mr. CR. Uh, check out his music. Make sure you guys follow him on Instagram. His tag is up there on the page. If not, it's up on the description. Other than that, me, I see one mean compadre. Tu no me gusta. Gobble, Chica. gobble. And we'll be back in 10 minutes. <laughs> It's your boy King Cash right here at Rodium Radio with the homie Tony A. The Wizard. Make sure you guys subscribe. Yo, what up? It's your boy Trouble P here at Rodium Radio with your boy Tony A. The Wizard. Make sure y'all subscribe and tune in. West Coast. Yo, 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 yo. What it do? This your boy, Big Havoc. One Hood Admiral. South Central Cartel General. And you're tuned in to Rodium Radio with my boy, Tony A. The Wizard. Stay locked in. Hello, everybody. This is Rocky Padilla. And you're listening to Rodium Radio with Tony A, the wizard. Hey, what's up? What's up, my people? Hey, Trouble Kid right here, you know, in the house. 
Shout out to Tony A, the Wizard, and shout out Rodium Radio. Much love. Thank you for having me. What up, world? It's YQ, Young Quicks, and right now you're listening to the OG Tony A, the Wizard, on Rodium Radio. Make sure to keep it locked, subscribe, comment, hate. It don't matter, man. We get into it. It'll five stand up. Hey, what up? It's your boy, Mark Cruz. You're now tuned in to Rodium Radio with Tony A, the Wizard, the Legend. Tap in. What's happening, everybody? It's your boy, Queenie. You're tuning into Rodium Radio. Check my man, Tony A, the Wizard, every Wednesday and Sunday. Stay tuned. Comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. You know what it is. What's up, Pimpin? It's your boy, Johnny Boy, a.k.a. Mr. Las Vegas, at Rhodium Radio with your boy, Tony A, the Wizard. Yes, catch us every Wednesday and Sunday. Gia. Hey, y'all. This is Elvia Cadena here at Rhodium Radio with motherfucking Tony A, the Wizard. Make sure you guys subscribe, like, and share. Can I get a moment of your time? Hey, it's your boy Lucky Sun Zhu from Hood Stars Podcast. Hey, fuck with one of the best podcasts in the game, Tony A, the Wizard, Rhodium Radio. Don't motherfucking play with it. Don't sleep on it. Hey, HA, stand the fuck up. Yes, sir. What's up? This is Clever from the Brown Side. Make sure you guys tune in to Rhodium Radio with Tony A, the Wizard. If not, you're a bitch. What's cracking? It's your boy Young Trav right here with the homie Tony A, the Wizard on Rhodium Radio. Don't forget to subscribe, man. Check out the best interviews on the West Coast. Yeah. I'm on the Rhodium Radio. <laughs> what up? It's ODM from Light and Shade of Brown. You know your daddy's favorite rapper, your mama's favorite DJ, <laughs> plus that YouTube star. You know what I mean? RBG fam. Light and Shade all day with the homie Tony A. Right here, Rhodium Radio, Sundays and Wednesdays. Let's go. What's up, y'all? This is Alia Coronado. I'm here on Rhodium Radio, and you can tune in on Sundays and Wednesdays with Tony A, the motherfucking wizard. What's up, y'all? This is your boy, Raz Kaz, and you are tuned into Rhodium Radio with my big homie, Tony A, the wizard. What's up? This is Truth with Tony A, the wizard at Rhodium Radio. Make sure y'all subscribe to the channel live Wednesdays and Sundays at 7 p.m. Tune in. Hey, what's up, what's up? This is Lalo KB, desde Atlanta. You're listening to Rodium Radio with Tony A, the Wizard. Yo, you know what it is. It's your boy OG Rome, a.k.a. Mr. Everywhere, repping Road Dogs Entertainment. Make sure you tune in to Tony A, the Wizard at Rodium Radio. What up, what up? You know what it is. It's the L.A. West Coast native, the Vario, and you got to tap in with my boy Tony A, the Wizard at Rodium Radio every Wednesday and Sunday. So it's your boy Isaac Palau on Rhodium Radio with Tony A. the Wizard. Tune in every Wednesday and Sunday. Hey, what's up? This is Lady Band. Make sure you're tuning in to Rhodium Radio with Tony A. the Wizard Sundays and Wednesdays. Yo, what's up? This is Jimmy from Urban Kings. Make sure you tune in with Tony A. the Wizard on Rhodium Radio. This is A.O. to the Saint coming to you live from Rhodium Radio, hosted by my homeboy Tony A. the Wizard. That's right, baby. Yo, what's up? It's Bella. I'm here on Rodium Radio with my boy Tony A. the Wizard. Stay tuned. Yo, it's Ray Monique on Rodium Radio with Tony A. the motherfucking Wizard. Tune in and subscribe. What's going down, everybody? This is Big Rich G here at Rodium Radio with Tony A. You guys got to check this out, man. Don't miss out. Tune in.
It's your boy Producer AI here at Rotom Radio. It's your boy Tony A. Make sure y'all subscribe every Sunday, Wednesday, 7 p.m. with the dopest podcast popping in the motherfucking West Coast. Make sure y'all subscribe. Peace. Yeah, this is Pablito here at Rhodium Radio. I'm here with Tony A, the wizard. Tune in. What's cracking? It's your boy Noel G in the house, a.k.a. Hector. You guys know what time it is right here with the Rhodium Radio Show, hosted by your boy, Tony A, the wizard. <laughs> Keep listening. We got something good for you. What's good, beautiful ladies? It's your boy, MC Magic. Tony A, the wizard. You already know. Rhodium Radio Show. Turn it up. Yo, what's up? Good with y'all. This your boy, Big Prodigy, from the legendary South Central Cartel. And I'm over here chilling with my homeboy, Tony A, the wizard, on the Rhodium Radio Show. Make sure y'all like, share, and subscribe to the page on YouTube. And by the way, check out that interview with yours truly. You dig? Wes. What's up, guys? This is my YouTube. You're watching Royal Radio with Tony A, the Wizard. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Lil Silent from BOTG, the voice of the ghetto man. Tune in every Sunday and Wednesday to Rodeon Radio. You already know, hosted by the legend himself, Tony A, the Wizard, man. Just don't miss out, man. That should be active out here. What's up, everyone? This is Antonio Palayo. I'm here at Rodeon Radio with Tony A, the Wizard. Make sure to subscribe. Yo, what's up, everybody? L.A. Baseball Head here, also known as L.E.F.C. Soccer Head, chilling on Rhodey Young Radio with my homeboy, Tony A., the Wizard. What it do? DJ Joe Cooley. You chilling with me, DJ Tony A., the Wizard, and Rhodey Young Radio. You heard me? What up, everyone? This is Alita. Tune in to Rhodey Young Radio, hosted by Tony A., the Wizard. What up, what up? Susie Q in the motherfucking building. I'm here chilling with Tony A, the motherfucking wizard. Rhodium Radio, YouTube. You guys check it out. Subscribe. Spank it easy. Yo, this is Shady Boy right here with Tony A, the wizard on Rhodium Radio. What's poppin' with it, family? It's your boy, Jokes Loves Life. And you are now tuned in to Rhodium Radio with the one and only Tony A, the motherfucking wizard. That's right. Love life, y'all. It's your boy, Wito Trees, Rhodium Radio in the house, Tony A, the wizard, what's up? What's up, this is your boy, Panther, on Rhodium Radio, tune in with your boy, Tony A, the wizard, and make sure you hit that subscribe button, yeah, yeah. This is Murray Brumfield, a.k.a. Mexicali Slim, Familia Records, and you rolling with Rhodium Radio with Tony A. Yo, what up, it's your boy, DJ Kazel, we're right here live, Rhodium Radio with my boy, Tony A, the wizard, that's what's up. What's up, you guys? It's your girl, Mariah Avila. I'm here on Rhodium Radio with Tony the Wizard. Please subscribe, like, and comment. Yo, it's cracking. It's your homeboy, Mr. Motherfucking Junebug. And you just tuned in to Rhodium Radio with Tony A, the motherfucking wizard. And don't forget, subscribe to the channel. You know. Juvalet Rasa, it's your homeboy, Hypnotic, right here in Rhodium Radio with Tony A, the wizard. Make sure you subscribe, like, and do all that. Don't forget to comment. Much love. Yo, 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 this is Grinch Brown on Rodium Radio with Tony A, the wizard. Keeping this shit popping. All West Coast, all love. Shout out to my raza. Getting it. Hey, look, this is Chunks, the San Diego Wall Star. You are now tuned in to Rodium Radio right here with Tony A, the wizard. Tap in. What's up? It's your girl, Carolyn Rodriguez, here at Rodium Radio. Make sure you tune in every Wednesday and Sunday to Tony A, the wizard. What's up, y'all? This is DJ Tony G. You're listening to Rhodium Radio with the homeboy, Tony A, the wizard. Rhodium Radio. Yo, what's cracking? It's 2 Max with Mexican descent, visionary shapeshifters, good life project, blowed, LA underground hip hop. You're tuned in to Rhodium Radio with Tony A, the wizard, on Wednesdays and Sundays. LA hip hop will save the world. Ooh.
Welcome back, everyone, to Rolling Radio episode 270. And once again, uh, Nacho Granny's Cookies. So if you want to hit her up, uh, her page is on the description. Nacho Granny's Cookies. So if you're tired of your girl's cookies, hit up Nacho Granny's Cookies. Okay. Uh, medicated or non-medicated, I usually take the medicated, the non-medicated. <laughs> let me let me say that again. The non-medicated. Alex always takes the medicated one. Okay. So, anyways, other than that, uh, much love, much respect to Mr. Cr. But we're gonna go ahead and jump right back into it with someone who is no stranger to Rhodium Radio, and I'm glad to have him here. And he's got a lot to talk about, a lot to say, what's on his mind. And after the break, we're gonna be taking calls. So if you guys have any questions, any complaints, comments, or anything you want to ask him, we'll be taking calls. So once again, without further ado, please allow me to introduce once again Hypnotic. What's up, brother? Thank you for having me on. Bro. Yes, sir. Just, just a quick reminder. Speak into the mic, my brother. That's right. That's right. Other than that, how you been, man? I've been good, dog. Just been uh, since the last time I've been here, it's, I've just been active, dog. Doing shows, mainly shows on me, like just show after show after show. And I'm, I'm fortunate and I'm blessed to be saying that I, you know, I, I get paid for most of my shows nowadays. That's like, good, man. So you start to reach a certain level. And then you learn the business, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm independent, I do everything by myself, and you learn things. And now to the point where I'm doing my own shows where I'm benefiting, I'm getting the ticket money myself, you know what I'm saying? But when I do my shows, I space them out. I'm not trying to burn myself out. Because when right. I do my shows, that's when I invite, hey, everybody pull up, pull up. And yeah, yeah. I, well, I have to have yet to pull up, so I'm going to pull up. <laughs> I know, dog. You got to pull up, fool. I will. I, you have one coming up, right? Right. I got Well, I got one this uh, this Saturday with the MB Riders. I've been doing a lot of shows with the MB Riders. What about... Uh, um, and then on August 27th, that's mine with Ilza Kill. Ilza Kill. Yeah, yeah. He's been here, too. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I, I always get his name wrong. You want to say Iz... <laughs> Ilza Ezekiel. Everybody yeah. says Ezekiel. Yeah. Ilza Kill, so yeah. yeah. It's Ilza Kill, dog. And... um. Just want to, hey, hey, since we're here, dog, since we're already on the topic, I just want to let the people know as well, me and Ilza Kill are actually going to do an EP together, dog. Awesome. So we're, we're probably going to hit people with six to seven songs, and um, there's a mutual respect there between us as far as our skill level and what we what we rap about. It's very similar, you know what I'm saying? We're, we're about uplifting our gente, the raza, and uh, we do have a, a single dropping August 12th. It's called Una Raza. And we're actually going to be shooting the music video for it this Sunday. We got a lot of different props. I might have to use one of these lowrider model cars, dog. You know what I'm saying? That'll so. work. That'll work. Because <laughs> if you can't get the real ones, just take this one right here, bro. You know? No, but yeah. So that's a that's one big announcement I wanted to make is that me and Ezekiel will be doing a little EP together. And uh, we, we got a show together August 27th, a video coming out and a single coming out. Where, so. where are you guys filming the video? Is it open for anybody to show up or no? Yeah, yeah. Pretty much, bro. We got a lot of... um. This is a very elaborate storyline and stuff. So there's a lot of different hint involved. I'm going to have a, a, a shout out to my uh, indigenous community. You know, we got the Danzantes coming out. I got some people that are connected. We have uh, some brown barrettes coming out. We're going to do a protest scene. You know, a lot of my music has uh, tapped me in with a lot of these uh, different people. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's a beautiful thing about music or when you speak up about certain things, it catches attention of yeah. all kinds of people. You know what I'm saying? So, and then you make connections and then you can reach out to them later. Hey, I got a video coming out. I want to do this and that. So we're going to be shooting it like in the Boyle Heights, East LA area. Uh, Ruben Salazar Park is another area. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Rick, my bad. Doug. We got a little group chat and we, 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 we found some things kind of funny. But, <laughs> but no, but with that said though, we're going to have, a, we have a lot of people. We have a lot of characters. So anybody's welcome to reach out to me. If you can contribute uh, right now we are looking for an old school Like a Mexico jersey uh, Cause we're gonna have two kids A kid playing me when I was young And a kid playing Ilza Kill when he was young And we want the uh, Ilza Kill was born in Mexico He came over here as an immigrant So we want him to be wearing like a, a Mexico jersey So That's if cool. anybody has that on deck You know what I'm saying For like a nine year old Holla at your homeboy you know, what I'm saying? you know what I didn't have a jersey And I wonder if I wonder if oh, my, my boy still has it when they when Metro went to the World Cup, the soccer team, right? I had bought like a 
dope ass fucking windbreaker. Right. And it was just the whole Mexican flag with the eagle in the back. Right, right. I just wonder what the fuck ever happened because I used to wait to the Chavez fights. All right, yeah, yeah. You know, so definitely. But yeah, but that that it's, it's not a jersey, but fuck, maybe. Hey, I that'll work. It. Something like that, you know, something with the uh, like the Mexico soccer team. That's what we're portraying. We're trying to. We're very detailed in this video. You, so. you, you know who? It might be a. Well, I don't know if I may be too late. Are you familiar with uh, Rockin' Chicano? Yes. Okay. He does them sarape jackets. Yes. Yes. Something like that. También might be nice. Uh, but for for a kid. Oh, you need it for a kid. Oh no, kid. he does. I, I believe he does have for kids. Maybe for the Chicano kid. You know what I'm saying? That, yeah. That could be dope. You know what I'm saying? Because we're gonna have me playing the Chicano kid and Ezekiel's playing the Mexicano kid. And what we're gonna display in this video, man, is just unity between raza. Like back in the day, I feel like raza, there was they were more divided than they are now. Even though we're still divided now. To an extent, but uh, back in the day, I feel like the Mexican Americans might have looked down on the Mexicanos here or the immigrantes and stuff like that, and vice versa. The Mexicanos didn't really fuck with the Chicanos and shit. Even yeah. at school, there was like, oh, the paisas are over there, the Mexicanos are over here. Right. So what we want to display in this video, because the song's called Una Raza, is that you know I'm I'm talking about me being Chicano, he's talking about him being Mexicano, pero somos iguales, way we're the same people, right. you know what I'm saying? And, uh, and we, so these kids are gonna go through a tour of the city and stuff, and they're gonna see a a homeboy chopping it up with a elotero, you know what I mean? Showing them love, they're, they're buying stuff. That's a Mexicano, maybe like immigrante or something like right. that. Uh, a cholita eating elote with a danzante, a female danzante. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So they're gonna, and they're gonna see the protests, you know, maybe some Chicanos. Like A lot of the protests I've been to, you see the brown barrettes, you see these activists there, and you see these cholita Chicanos and homeboys there, like, like essays, dog. And yeah. that's a mixture of the Mexicano, Chicano all in one, and we're starting to see that more. So we're just trying to push that even more. Una raza, that's going to be a pretty big anthem for the raza. We're pretty excited about that one. That's dope. That's dope. You know, you know what's funny is uh, when you said that we don't even really get along just yet or we're not really necessarily united between Chicanos and Mexicanos. Uh, let me share Let me share something real quick, okay? Uh, and I've shared it before, but it kind of goes along with what you're saying. Like both of my parents were born in Mexico, okay? Right. Uh, half of my family was born over there. From me down... I was born here. So my question is to people that look at me as, do not as Mexicano, eres Chicano, because you were born here, but you're, even though your parents were born over there, how how, how does that make me not Mexicano. A, a Mexicano? You know, when, when if you really think about it, if I wanted to, I can go back to Mexico and get a Mexican citizenship. Yeah, yeah. So would that make me... <laughs> You know, give me some points, dog. I guess. Yeah, give me some points. Like you're not Mexican, then I just pull out my, <laughs> yeah, my, my citizenship. You care? You care? Yeah, you know. no, it's crazy, bro. Because both of my parents are born in Mexico. Um, half of our siblings, so the, the older three, were born in TJ, and the younger three, including myself, I'm the youngest. We were born here. It's like because we were born here, they take away points from us. Yeah, yeah exactly. You no, know, it's true. It's true. It's yeah. funny because I used to do like a little game with my homegirl. Sandra, I call her Neta. Shout out to Neta. But like you lose Rasa points for certain things. Like my brother, I'm gonna put him on blast. He don't really like beans. It's like how the fuck you ain't gonna like beans, dog? <laughs> you know right, right, right. He, he he'll eat them, but that's not his favorite. Yeah. I think you lose Rasa points with that. Okay. And if you can't handle spice too much, I think you lose some Rasa points with that. Of course. Dog. Okay. Now, now here's another one. I, I've known Rasa that has came from Mexico, that came to this country for a better life. Right. But a lot of them left the. The, the Mexican culture alone, and they adapted to this new yeah. culture, okay? Mm -hmm. Vamos a comer hamburguesas, or we're gonna eat fucking meatloaf, or we're gonna eat whatever. Right, right, right. And then us here, who weren't born over there, we want fucking arroz y frijoles con carnitas, or carnitas. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's almost like, uh, it's different, like, it's weird. It's all, I think it's all based on the individual family or the individual person as well. You know, parenting plays a big part on how we turn out, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. um, there is a lot of families that came here and they assimilated and there's, that's why a lot of some Mexicanos don't speak Spanish, you know what I'm saying? Because right, right. they assimilated and, or maybe at that time you were looked down upon if you spoke Spanish. No, that, that is very, what I'm very saying? true. I've heard that from a friend of mine and he's like, hey, my parents always said, hey, don't, we're not going to teach you how to speak Spanish right here. We're in the U.S. You learn how to speak English. And the fucked up thing about it, though, is that down the road, the Chicanos that speak Spanish or the Mexicanos are going to clown homeboy because he don't speak Spanish. And then he has a disconnect with his gente. And then he starts being cool with white people, black people, which is cool, you know what I'm saying? But he's disconnected from his raza. 
and, and he that's lost a, his identity. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's different. It's how you grow up, bro. And it, it's sometimes it it's not the, the the kid's fault. You know what I mean? It, Very true. But but at the same time, if you are Mexicano and you and your parents come from Mexico or your grandparents. There should be some kind of interest there from you yourself. Yes. You know, you should want to, to study and, and know your culture. Yeah, but it, but know? at the same time, sometimes the parents protect them from all that, or they, they don't they don't show them themselves. You know right. what I'm saying? Now I'm going to speak on my friend because he shared this with me. <laughs> one of my black friends growing up, you know, uh, uh, and I even hate to say that one of my black friends got because I just want to say one of my friends, but for the sake of the conversation, I'm going to say <laughs> so, so that right. people can understand who I'm talking about. My black homie. Yeah, my black homie. Okay. <laughs> He used to tell me, I can't stand African motherfuckers. And I was like, why? Those are your people. Those are my motherfucking people. They don't even fucking like us. And I was like, right. what the fuck? Right. So then I would meet people that come from Africa, whether they were from Congo or whether they were from Ethiopia. They don't like black people from here. Really? Yeah. And I was yeah. like, what the fuck? To me, I just look at dark people. So I'm thinking they have to get along. Right, 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 right. But no, there's a there's a division. I think maybe that that plays a part in maybe multiple cultures. Or, yes. You get what I'm saying? And But we're talking about our experiences yes, yes. with our people. Yes. But I did see a comedian talk about that on TikTok, too. He was like, the Africans, they, they'll say what's up to the white man, but they won't. They'll be like, oh, this black fool. Like, we don't like you guys right here. There was a black comedian that was talking about that. And uh, but yeah, I think I think there's tension there, like um, within within our own gente. There's always gonna be that there, bro. And um, and and then there's always gonna be tension between other minorities as well, black and brown. You know, some stuff like that. It's just what it is. But you know, there's a lot going on right now nowadays with the, with like uh, the American Cholo shit and um, yeah, and uh, Tariq, Nasheed, and and Power 106, Tiger. It's just frustrating to me, dog. If I can just speak on some things, I, speak on it, bro. I wanted to say that um, I felt like American Cholo, he did a, a really great thing in in uh, in speaking up for our gente. But this isn't nothing new, though, because we've been on podcasts. I've been on this podcast with you speaking about similar topics two yeah. two and a half three years ago, bro. As a matter of fact, one of your clips is one of our highest. Right, right, exactly. You know, so and that's when we were talking about the blue face song, the Carnesada. Yes. And uh, and but the thing is, like I was, I talked to American Cholo recently too. Um, it takes time, bro. It takes time to get your voice heard or to yeah. gain respect. You know what I'm saying? And and while I'm I'm not nobody famous, but when I did that song, Proud People, it, it started to take off. It made noise. People yeah. were hearing the message. You know what I'm saying? And then Duende, he did Respeto at around the similar time. We started to hear the message, and we start getting on podcasts. His is the highest clip that yeah. we've had on Rolling. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then, and then you start to see different things with the vendors and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? So if, pe if people don't remember, there was, there was a lot of street vendor attacks. And from our point of view, the way it looked, it, it, was, it was being done by the black community. You know yes. what I'm saying? So we were getting frustrated. Like, where's the outrage? How come right. there's no uh, black rappers speaking up? You know what I'm right. saying? So me and Duende, we did a whole song. We did everything. And we've been on this tip for a while. Right. But, you know, we're, I'm not nobody famous. And I've always said this before. I feel like a lot of the Mexican artists that are in a high platform, they don't really speak up enough. No, no, they don't. At they, all. Because, they, uh, let me elaborate, they don't want to lose what they have. Right, right. Okay, now, now let me say this. And, and I want to make this very, very clear. This has nothing to do with raza against blacks. Right. Okay, because there's... People that have assaulted these vendors that weren't even black people. Yeah, of course. We're just a talking. We're talking about these certain individuals right. that attacked attacked these vendors. Right. You know. So I just need to make that clear because the last thing that I want is anybody to think you know that Rodian Radio is a racist of platform. It's of not. Yeah. I want to give any, any and everybody a voice. Yeah. But. At that time, it just made it seem the way the media was portraying it, that right. it's just, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, black individuals, you know, doing this to Raza, you know, but we do need a voice. And that's why we're trying to pass that law yeah. for, yes, for them to get protected. The, the petition, they want to make a, a, an attack on a street vendor, yeah. a hate crime. Yeah. And, and I agree with that, bro. And, um, but I, I, I've been on here too from previous interviews and, and I said the same thing. Like it, it's, it's, we're not, 
holding the whole black community accountable. These are individuals that are doing of that course. themselves. But the, the facts are the facts, bro. When we see another race doing it to us, it gets us more mad. Right. If, right. As opposed to seeing a right. rasa doing it, we're right. going to get a little more outraged from the eye. Oh, oh black food did that to the, the, the right. paletero instead right. of a Mexican guy doing it. It's still fucked up either way. Right. But you know what I'm saying? But we, we saw what we saw, bro. And, and the thing was, it was becoming a trend. The, the thing that made it intentional was when they were recording it and posting it on Instagram. Of course, that's not almost because like premeditated. You're, you're planning it at that point. Yeah. You're, okay, hey, hey, uh, film me slapping this fool. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's right. when it became, it started becoming more and more and more of a thing. Like, and that's when, like, yo, dog, like somebody speak up. And granted, there was people that spoke up, yeah. bro. Matt Barnes, Big Boy uh, from the, the radio station. Right. I think uh, someone said Trey the Truth was pretty vocal about that. He's a Houston rapper, I believe, and there and, and there's some there's some hints that spoke up, bro. But it wasn't it wasn't to the level that what American Cholo did. You know what I'm saying? And I'll say it right now. Like I said, I, I feel like no mainstream Mexican rapper speaks up. You know what I mean? I know Snow the Product. She's been a little more vocal lately in her interviews, and and as of late, the last few years, she's been more on her rasa tip, mm -hmm. which is cool. You know what I mean? I've noticed things. You know what I'm saying? And I give give her credit for that. Uh, I haven't seen King Lil G speak up too much, but you know, at the same time, it's not. It might not be their responsibility to do that, dog. But us as people in the barrio or, or Mexicanos that see these people with high platforms and we're seeing some of these middle ground rappers trying to speak up, it's like, yo, where are you at, dog? You, if you say something, it's going to make some noise. Look, look, look well, let me say this. <laughs> I don't know if they spoke up or not, but from what people have told me, they haven't. And I'm not picking on anybody, but I'm just telling you what people have told me. Right, right. The Fool's Gone Wild guy. Right. Uh, the King Little G. Right. Some people have mentioned Snow the Product and, and, and others. They've said, okay, these people make money off of Raza. Yes. Okay. Yeah, exactly. They're making money off of Raza. Raza's getting assaulted and you want to say... Hey, I just don't want to get involved. Exactly, dog. You can't do that, bro. You're playing it too safe, bro, at that point. And that's when and that's when we got to hold them accountable. And we're yeah. not here talking shit, bro. Right. We're here like, hey, this is what's going on in our communities. You have a voice. You have a platform. Even if you tweet something or just say something, that can go a long way, bro. Show that you care. At the same time, it's up to that individual if he wants to get involved in that. You know what I'm saying? Right. People like to avoid controversy, like you said, because they might have a million followers and they don't want to piss off half of their fans or whatever it is, bro. Right, right. But, you, you, you know, but there is some kind of responsibility you have. Like you said, that's a good point. You're making all this money off of us. You're rich because of us. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you're making money off of us. Now... I don't know if they've said anything. Right, right. Say nothing. There's, there's little things. I know right. King Lil G. He bought out a, um, a, a paletero. I think there was. Yeah, a but video. what's that? Twenty bucks. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, on, bro. Let's I just think see. he gave him like a good, like a few racks, and it was that was one thing that he did. But, but they don't make it a point. You know what I'm saying? I, I it's know. not a priority. I, I know. You know the whole money thing is cool. Don't get me wrong. But Takashi Six Nine doing the same yeah, shit. Yeah, that's true. That's true. He's doing the same <laughs> shit. Come on, bro. You know, so was going to freaking uh, Central American countries, every country, and just yeah, giving away money, dog. You're giving away money. You but know you know what, what he's trying to do? He's trying to <laughs> salvage some type of credibility, some type of you know respect yeah. back because yeah. he fucking snitched. No, I mean it is what it is. I don't really like when when you film doing that. I feel like you're 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 doing it for your attention as well. But at the end of the day, if you gave someone money, you gave someone money. You know what I mean? You, I'm not taking away the fact that you did that. But a lot right. of times people do it for their own, to make themselves look good. You feel me? You know, like I, you said, you just said, he's just trying to uh, secure his credibility. You, you know, I read something years ago, and it took me a long time to understand what it meant. And, and it goes along with what you're saying about filming. Some people film for different reasons, you know, when they bless someone. But I read something that said, "Do not let your right hand know what your left hand is doing, or do not let your left, do not let let your vice versa. It was do not let, let your right hand know what your left hand is doing, or right, right, or, et cetera. It took me a long time to understand that, and it was pretty much it was like, you know what, what you do to somebody, you don't have to go tell the next man, right, exactly. You know, you don't have to go. That's around. your business. That's your business with that person. That's it. If you want to bless this person, then that's between you and God. If you believe in God, yeah, exactly. And that's, and let that's God, how it's supposed to be. That's the way it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Let God see your heart that your intentions were to bless him, encourage, uplift him, and inspire this man. Right. You know, here's twenty, thirty, forty, or a hundred dollars, whatever you want. Right. But now, if I go like this, hey, you guys, look at. 
You know? Oh, yeah. yeah. You, you know, Come on, look, look, some people may disagree with me with that. Right, right. I, I get that. I understand it. They have their reasons. But me, now speaking for me, my, I, I just can't do that. So if we're going to bless someone, you know, let's, let's bless them. You know what I'm right, saying? Right, right, right. But if we're definitely going to speak for our people, you know what? Then let that be loud. Right, right. You know, let that be loud. Like, here's another controversial topic, okay? And, and during the whole BLM movement, okay? Uh, 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 the Black Lives Matter movement, okay? Right. Which, you know what? I support. Right. Okay? A lot of us did. A, a lot of us did. Yeah. But you know what I saw on the streets, believe it or not? I saw more Raza and whites out there with uh, BLM uh, 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 signs. Right, right. You know, now, here's my point. I'm not saying that they should not have been out there. But here's what I'm saying. When we come together and we want our voice heard, where in the fuck are you? <laughs> right, exactly, dog. You know, and now, that's why it's frustrating, bro. And like, and a lot of you Raza artists, uh, Chicano artists, and a lot of you female artists that are watching, okay, uh, those were those were you. Right. When it came for us, you were fucking no nowhere exactly. to be found. All we heard was fucking crickets. Exactly. You you quick to hop on other people's struggles, which is cool. Yeah. Applaud, applaud for that. But what about us, bro? It's like we're so divided within ourselves yes. that motherfuckers even even motherfuckers get jealous. I think Cholo's receiving hate from Rasa too because he's making all this noise. They're quick to judge him or like, you know, and, and believe that fake video. So what I was gonna get at though is that American Cholo did what no rap, no Mexican rapper did, or what no Mexican rapper could do. Uh -huh. He made so much fucking noise that it caught the attention of a mainstream uh, uh, African American artist in Tiger. Uh, uh, Rolling Stone even wrote about yeah, him. Rolling Stone. See, that's the thing, bro. When when a mainstream platform quotes American Cholo and and they're in support of how we feel. That's a win for us, bro. We're not here like, oh, we hate the black community. Tiger needs to put that shit down. We want our voices to be heard, bro, because right. we've been dealing with with certain controversial things from from previous songs. It's been going on for two, three years, bro. Right. And um, you know, specifically, a lot of people were offended with YG and the mariachi, sh uh, uh, his mariachi uh, outfit. Yeah. And then Blueface with the carnesada. And then there was another video. I forgot what it was, but it's like, it's, it's happening. There was a little small outcry and then our voices were somewhat heard, but not to the level where American Cholo's taking right, it now. Right. Bro. And the thing is, the thing that's sad that frustrated me, I was actually at a, at a Bella show because I had a show this, this Saturday in Pomona with Bella the Rapper. Uh -huh. And um and I see my phone and it's like Power 106 takes down the interview with American Cholo and Tyga. And I'm like, damn, homie, that was fast. That With, was really fucking within fast. Within not less than a day, they take that shit down. And that's because, uh, I don't know, I, I, I hear, I keep hearing the name T Tariq Nasheed. Um, and then he's, I guess he compiled the video and edited a video of American Cholo. Uh, uh, certain things he said that was taken out of context. Yeah, yeah. And then and it makes referring him to him racist. Re I think he was referring to him. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So and then he took that and just chopped it up. Right. Look, and they had their own beef too from before. They've been going at each other in in, in, in videos before. See, but, I didn't even know that. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So um, because uh, uh, American Cholo responded to him about some stuff he had said about Mexicans and about about uh, Mexico and stuff like that. And Tariq Nasheed, he's very. He's, I guess he's a big dude. He's he's behind scenes right i guess you could say uh mainstream in a way um but very black power you know what i'm saying which is nothing wrong with that but he's on record saying mad racial things about mexicanos bro right but yet he's on every mainstream platform yeah you get what i'm saying right that's, that's what i'm trying to say is that we don't have the respect as the same amount of respect that the black community has even the lgbt community dog even the asians when people were beating up the asians to stop this asian hate that's just all real these quick. all these mainstream the nba everybody's hopping on that bro but they don't hop on our shit you know what i'm saying nobody right. fucking does so when american cholo got rolling stone to to do that that right. was like fuck yeah about time right. bro right and then and then not just that he he goes to the extent to get tiger on, a, on an interview with them right and and he he spoke intelligently he spoke with respect but stern right. at the same time and tiger ended up taking down the the, the video yes. okay yes and that's applaud to him right. for that bro like because he didn't have to go to that interview yeah and he didn't have to do all that bro right i mean tiger could have just said ah, who gives a fuck I'm gonna leave it up there right exactly but out of respect you know what and we respect that you know but now okay 
the no jumper situation. Right. No jumper just goes ahead and maybe that's why they call him jumper because he jumps on shit. He went ahead and jumped ahead and posted <laughs> that video of fucking Gil right, on right. his fucking page. It's crazy because he's the one that actually helped Gil get some shine too. He brought right. he brought up Gil to uh, Duno, the Mexican comedian. I don't know if you know who Duno is. Yeah, yeah, the chubby. Kid. Yeah, he had yeah. <laughs> the chubby dude. He uh, he did a whole thing about. Oh, all you Mexicans are mad at Tiger. Oh my God, he was kind of mocking yeah, yeah, Rasa. It's how that. it felt. Yeah. He's over there defending himself. Whatever. I see what I see, bro. And I see you clowning us for being mad and shit. It's weird, bro, because there's some Rasa that, like, they think it's like a tough thing. Or oh, I don't get mad at that. Like that doesn't offend me. Oh, they're just trying to fit in, bro. Motherfucker, like that's cowardice, bro. Yeah. Like. Like you're you're avoiding the problem at that point. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He, he just oh, trying to fit a, in. No, that, that doesn't affect me, bro. He, he's a young kid that's trying to fit in, and he's he's right. on a high right now because he's on that platform. But you right. know what? No jumper can jump ahead and cut his ass off, and then he's he's done. <laughs> right. You know, I mean, that, it, let's be honest. I I've seen major artists take a bunch of nobodies on a world tour. Right. They come back six months later. Okay, bye. Right. And right, those right. guys turn to alcoholics and fucking get fat and don't know right, what to do right, with their right. lives. <laughs> okay. I I've, I've seen it happen, dude. So. My thing is this: I know Gil uh, um, got invited to go speak at No Jumper. Yeah, I and see it just it. happened. I see now that. here's my thing: they showed up. Bozo shows up. Well, Everybody's there except No Jumper. I know, dog. He had he was at a poker, poker. Well, you saw how many homies pulled up, dog. Yeah, all of a sudden <laughs> at a poker event, he jumped his ass on out exactly, of there. Exactly, that's dog. what he did, bro. Yeah, see, yeah, me personally, me. This is, and I speak for myself, okay. But you know what? Uh, uh, Gil and Bozo uh, uh, had. A, they use that opportunity great. That's what I'm saying. No, they did a, gr- a, ma- a magnificent me, job. Bro. Me, I would have said, tell homeboy to call me later. We'll go. If he's not going to be right, here, right, I'm right. not going to. I'm not going to be here. You know, because yeah, yeah. to me, I take that as disrespect. It's almost like when Vlad interviews certain people. Sometimes he just has a camera there, and he'll have somebody interview them. Really? Yeah, bro. And I'm like, fuck that, dude. Right. You know, right. if you invited me, at least give me some type of respect that you're going to fucking talk to me. Yeah. yeah. Oh, can you imagine you come and then they just have a standee of me? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like a cutout. Yeah, a cut out of me. <laughs> oh, shit. You know? I'd be like, what the fuck, dog? Yeah. I'm not worthy. No, I'm not no, worthy you know for the real thing. No, I ended up going to a fucking, um, uh, I don't know, a fucking homeless convention. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Some, something, bro. No, but I get it, though, bro. I get it because Gil's trying to make sure that people are aware that, hey, that, that video is bullshit, dog. You know what right, I'm saying? Right. People are quick to jump the gun. And assume he's racist, you know what I'm saying? And and as of right now, Tariq Nasheed, that guy, I, I've, I've been studying into this stuff, dog, a little bit. Yeah. And he's actually today, he's at outside of the Power 106 headquarters. Oh, and he was? They're protesting, bro. Him and some and the black community for um, Power 106 having a racist, anti-black guy there interviewing Tyga. So they're already hopping on that. But if it's Tariq... He has something personal with American Cholo. They, they've been beefing personal. at it. But, you know, some people might not dive into it and they don't want to see American Cholo's putting the actual videos where you can hear the whole conversation. Yeah. 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 But, but some people, like Bozo said, some people just want to be mad. They, they ain't going to, like, take the time and be like, I'm not going to see the real video. They're just already assuming, oh, this was racist. You know what I'm saying? They're going to hop on that. Yeah, that's true, bro. And so, so but, but they're out there, like, Protesting and shit, but 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 what I'm trying to say is that, bro, like Power 106, they took the the Tiger video down quick. You know what I'm saying? Because the interview, the yeah, interview. yeah, the interview with with Tiger and American Cholo, and and what I'm saying is that the the respect that the black community has, along with other groups, is way greater than what we have as far as mainstream or, or corporations or businesses. Like I said, we, we don't really have a voice, and I feel like American Cholo, he's starting to make noise. I don't know if it's a fearful thing. We're not in competition, bro. Right, right. right. We get inspiration from the black community of course. because of all the fighting they did and all the all the protests they did back in the day. All the, you know, dealing with slavery and and dealing with all that shit. We know right. we. Know their history more than we know our history, dog. And we I know Malcolm music, X, Martin Luther King. My favorite artist ever is Tupac. You know what I mean? Like, we know their history and we're inspired by that. And we're not here to compete with you, bro. We just want our voice to be heard just that's as much it. as yeah. yours, bro. Absolutely. And that, that's all we're getting at, dog. And, yeah. and, 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 and uh, it just sucks. It's very frustrating that as soon as we had a win, it lasted a few hours, bro, and before they take that bitch down. But uh, applaud to American Cholo for going out there, going on all these different platforms and clearing his name. He Did you know he went on live with Snow the Product? No, when? Yeah, the, the right before the No Jumper. Oh, I didn't know that. Because uh, Snow the Product had said something 
about his uh oh, about him like, yeah something like negative dish, she, huh? she was like oh that's bullshit she she wasn't on his side with this with him saying that word which i get you probably shouldn't say that word even if you're paraphrasing of course, of course. people take it out of they took it out of content but he actually but applaud to her for even because they, they they didn't let american cholo go live no more instagram Oh, so okay. but she invited him to go live on her page and they conversated. It didn't really go nowhere. They, they're just different mindsets, bro. Older generation, new generation. Yeah. But I, I give her props for doing that and giving him the platform. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. To do that. But, you know, at the end of the day, dog, I, I roll with American Cholo. I, I like what he's doing. I like what he's trying to do. And uh, hopefully he can, you know. Like and I, I like what you're doing. <laughs> so here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and take a 10 minute break. We're going to come right back and I'm going to start drinking. Okay, everybody, make sure you call somebody, text somebody, slap the shit out of somebody. Once again, <laughs> hypnotics in the motherfucking building. And Mr. CR right here is going to take a fucking shot of tequila with me. So we'll be back. <laughs> Yo, what's up? It's Bella. I'm here on Rodeon Radio with my boy Tony A. The Wizard. Stay tuned. Yo, it's Ray Monique on Rodeon Radio with Tony A. The motherfucking wizard. Tune in and subscribe. What's going down, everybody? This is Big Rich G here at Rodeon Radio with Tony A. You guys got to check this out, man. Don't miss out. Tune in. It's your boy Producer A here at Rotom Radio. It's your boy Tony A. Make sure y'all subscribe every Sunday, Wednesday, 7 p.m. with the dopest podcast popping in the motherfucking West Coast. Make sure y'all subscribe. Peace. Yeah, this is Pablito here at Rotom Radio. I'm here with Tony A, the wizard. Tune in. What's cracking? It's your boy Noel G in the house, a.k.a. Hector. You guys know what time it is right here with the Rotom Radio Show, hosted by your boy Tony A, the wizard. Ha <laughs> ha! Keep listening. We got something good for you. What's good, beautiful ladies? It's your boy, MC Magic. Tony A, the wizard. You already know. Rhodium Radio Show. Turn it up. Yo, what's up? Good with y'all. This your boy, Big Prodigy, from the legendary South Central Cartel. And I'm over here chilling with my homeboy, Tony A, the wizard, on the Rhodium Radio Show. Make sure y'all like share and subscribe to the page on youtube and by the way check out that interview with yours truly you dig Wes. what's up guys this is my youtube you're watching royal radio with 28 the wizard hey what's up everybody this is little silent from botg the voice of the ghetto man Tune in every Sunday and Wednesday to Rodeon Radio. You already know, hosted by the legend himself, Tony A. The Wizard, man. Just don't miss out, man. That should be active out here. What's up, everyone? This is Antonio Palayo. I'm here at Rodeon Radio with Tony A. The Wizard. Make sure to subscribe. Yo, what's up, everybody? L.A. Baseball Head here, also known as L.A.F.C. Soccer Head, chilling on Rodeon Radio with my homeboy, Tony A. The Wizard. What it do? DJ Joe Cooley. You chilling with me, DJ Tony A. The Wizard, and Rodeon Radio. You heard me? What up, everyone? This is Salita. Tune in to Rodeon Radio, hosted by Tony A. The Wizard. What up, what up? Susie Q in the motherfucking building. I'm here chilling with Tony A, the motherfucking wizard. Rhodium Radio, YouTube. You guys check it out. Subscribe. Spank it easy. Yo, this is Shady Boy right here with Tony A, the wizard on Rhodium Radio. What's poppin' with it, family? It's your boy, Jokes Loves Life. And you are now tuned in to Rhodium Radio with the one and only Tony A, the motherfucking wizard. That's right. Love life, y'all. It's your boy, Wito Trees, Rhodium Radio in the house, Tony A, the wizard, what's up? What's up, this is your boy, Panther, on Rhodium Radio, tune in with your boy, Tony A, the wizard, and make sure you hit that subscribe button, yeah, yeah. This is Murray Brumfield, a.k.a. Mexicali Slim, Familiar Records, and you rolling with Rhodium Radio with Tony A. Yo, what up, it's your boy, DJ Kazel, and we're right here live, Rhodium Radio with my boy, Tony A, the wizard, that's what's up, Ooh. 
What's up, you guys? It's your girl Mariah Avila. I'm here on Rhodium Radio with Tony the Wizard. Please subscribe, like, and comment. Yo, it's cracking. It's your homeboy, Mr. Motherfucking Junebug. And you just tuned in to Rhodium Radio with Tony A. the Motherfucking Wizard. And don't forget, subscribe to the channel. You know. Jubile Rasa, it's your homeboy Hypnotic, right here in Rhodium Radio with Tony A. the Wizard. Make sure you subscribe, like, and do all that. Don't forget to comment. Much love. Yo, 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 this is Grincho Brown on Rhodium Radio with Tony A. the Wizard. Keeping this shit popping, all West Coast, all love. Shout out to my Rasa, we getting it. Hey, look, this is Chunks, the San Diego All Star, and you are now tuned in to Rhodium Radio right here with Tony A. the Wizard. Tap in. What's up? It's your girl, Carolyn Rodriguez, here at Rhodium Radio. Make sure you tune in every Wednesday and Sunday to Tony A. the Wizard. What's up, y'all? This is DJ Tony G. You're listening to Rhodium Radio with the homeboy, Tony A. the Wizard. Rhodium Radio. Yo, what's cracking? It's 2 Max with Mexican descent, visionary shapeshifters, good life project blowed, LA underground hip hop. You're tuned in to Rhodium Radio with Tony A. the Wizard on Wednesdays and Sundays. LA hip hop will save the world. Ooh. Alright, what up? It's your boy King Cash right here at Rhodium Radio with the homie Tony A. the Wizard. Make sure you guys subscribe. Yo, what up? It's your boy Trouble P here at Rhodium Radio with your boy Tony A. the Wizard. Make sure y'all subscribe and tune in. West Coast. Yo, 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 yo. What it do? This your boy, Big Havoc. One hood admiral, South Central Cartel general. And you're tuned in to Rhodium Radio with my boy, Tony A. The Wizard. Stay locked in. Hello, everybody. This is Rocky Padilla. And you listen to Rhodium Radio with Tony A, the Wizard. Hey, what's up? What's up, my people? Hey, Trouble Kid right here, you know, in the house. Shout out to Tony A, the Wizard, and shout out Rhodium Radio. Much love. Thank you for having me. What up, world? It's YQ, Young Quicks. And right now you're listening to the OG. Tony A. The Wizard on Rhodium Radio. Make sure to keep it locked. Subscribe, comment, hate. It don't matter, man. We get into it. It'll five stand up. Hey, what up? It's your boy, Mark Cruz. You're now tuned in to Rhodium Radio. The Tony A. The Wizard. The legend. Tap in. What's happening, everybody? It's your boy, Queenie. You're tuning into Rhodium Radio. Check my man, Tony A. The Wizard, every Wednesday and Sunday. Stay tuned. Comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. You know what it is. What's up, Pimpin? It's your boy, Johnny Boy, a.k.a. Mr. Las Vegas, at Rhodium Radio with your boy, Tony A. The Wizard. Yes, catch us every Wednesday and Sunday. Gia. Hey, y'all. This is Elia Cadena here at Rhodium Radio. With motherfucking Tony A, the wizard. Make sure you guys subscribe, like, and share. Can I get a moment of your time? Hey, it's your boy Lucky Sun Zhu from Hood Stars Podcast. Hey, fuck with one of the best podcasts in the game, Tony A, the wizard, Rodium Radio. Don't motherfucking play with it, don't sleep on it. Hey, H.A., stand the fuck up. Yes, sir. What's up? This is Clever from the Brown Side. Make sure you guys tune into Rhodium Radio with Tony A. the Wizard. If not, you a bitch. What's cracking? It's your boy, Young Thrive, right here with the homie Tony A. the Wizard on Rhodium Radio. Don't forget to subscribe, man. Check out the best interviews on the West Coast. Yeah. I'm on the Rodeo Radio. <laughs> what up? It's ODM from Light of Shade of Brown. You know your daddy's favorite rapper, your mama's favorite DJ, <laughs> plus that YouTube star. You know what I mean? RBG fam. Light of Shade all day with the homie, Tony A. Right here, Rodeo Radio, Sundays and Wednesdays. Let's go. What's up, y'all? This is Dalia Coronado. I'm here on Rhodium Radio, and you can tune in on Sundays and Wednesdays with Tony A, the motherfucking wizard. 
What's up, y'all? This is your boy Raz Kaz, and you are tuned into Rhodium Radio with my big homie, Tony A, the Wizard. What's up? This is Truth with Tony A, the Wizard at Rhodium Radio. Make sure y'all subscribe to the channel live Wednesdays and Sundays at 7 p.m. Tune in. Hey, yo, what's up, what's up? This is Lalo KB, desde Atlanta. You're listening to William Radio with Tony A, the Wizard. Yo, you know what it is. It's your boy OG Rome, a.k.a. Mr. Everywhere, repping Road Dogs Entertainment. Make sure you tune in to Tony A, the Wizard at Rhodium Radio. What up, what up? You know what it is. It's the L.A. West Coast native, the Vario, And you got to tap in with my boy Tony A, the Wizard at Rhodium Radio every Wednesday and Sunday. Come on, it's your boy Isaac Palau on Rhodium Radio with Tony A. the Wizard. Tune in every Wednesday and Sunday. Hey, what's up? This is Lady Benz. Make sure you're tuning in to Rhodium Radio with Tony A. the Wizard Sundays and Wednesdays. Yo, what's up? This is Jimmy from Urban Kings. Make sure you tune in with Tony A. the Wizard on Rhodium Radio. This is A.O. to the Saint coming to you live from Rhodium Radio, hosted by my homeboy, Tony A. the Wizard. That's right, baby. Welcome back, everyone, to Rodin Radio episode uh, fuck, 270. 270. And uh, once again, I want to give a big shout out to Nacho Granny's Cookies. This uh, show has been sponsored by Nacho Granny's Cookies. Okay. Nacho Girl's Cookies, not her friend's cookies, but Nacho Granny's Cookies. So make sure you guys hit that link on the description and you guys go over there by medicated, non medicated. If you like the medicated, eventually you'll be relocated. So uh, once again, let me go ahead and introduce our very special guest. The one and only Hypnotic. Hypnotic, ¿cómo estás? Everything good? Everything's good. I think we had a good first segment. Yes, yes. We'll well, take that shot. Salud. Sí, salud. Salud. Just, okay, bro. Uh, I, I didn't put nothing in there, so you could... I saw, dog. Okay. Mm -hmm. Gil's in the chat, huh? Sí. Andale. Peter, man. Okay, we're not taking calls just yet, so slow down, pal. Okay? And once again, if you guys call me with a private number, I'll respect your privacy and not answer. Okay? So, I got a question for you, Tony. See, si. this is a reasonable question. I don't want to sound like a hater, <clears throat> but we always hate. The topic's hot, bro. Yes. Do you think there's Rasa rappers out there, or even people <clears throat> that are going to start to speak up 
because it's a trend and not like someone I'm just I'm not I'm not tooting my own horn but I've been on this shit since three years ago, bro, you had me on this interview. Of course, talking about similar shit. Uh, I I do think that it, it might it might be a if I can say it this way, it might be a trend to be a Chicano. <laughs> no, bro, it dude, people don't realize that, bro. I've always kept it Cholo Stilo. I did a song called Cholo Stilo uh, seven years ago, bro. I know. I need some more of those Cholo Stilo shorts. Yeah, I, got I went you, to the dog. gym. <laughs> yeah, all right, that's freedom, it, dog. But but what I've said, what I've been saying is that I've always embraced our our cultura. And um, I always feel like a lot of the Mexican rappers today, they, they try to be more black with their style, their swag. It, it, well, a lot of them think, and it, this is the sad part is, what I noticed coming back into this game, that I noticed a lot of them were using the N-word thinking they were going to fit in right, with exactly. the black crowd. But here's my thing. Doing music pretty much predominantly all my life with black artists, they find that offensive. Right, right, exactly. You're not going to fit in. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? You may be able to say it, Amongst once or two guys that you might have grown up with, I think I think we've gotten away. Not we, because I don't say that word. Um, but a lot of Rasa have gotten away with it without any harm. You know what I'm saying? Right. And what I've noticed is, um, I've always thought it was disrespectful. For one, like you don't know how the black community feels about it. Maybe right. in your hood, it might be cool if you say the N word. But I had a homie uh, from uh, his name is Flaco from Texas. And he said he used to say the N-word in his songs and stuff. And in Texas, they're all cool with that. Of course, of course. He said, but when he went to New York and he said it, motherfuckers was tripping on him. So it all depends. It depends on, but you don't know for the most part how they feel right. about it. You know right. what I'm saying? But here's something I noticed, bro, because I've been vocal about the whole Tiger shit yeah. and on my Instagram, on my YouTube. And, um, you know, a lot of us, a lot of those Mexican kids probably never... Took that heat from the black community But now that we are speaking up a little bit Like American Cholo got people's attention He made Tiger take the video down I feel like I've noticed the black community on my thread On my comments like Well why don't you tell your Mexican rappers to stop saying the N word It's like where were you Three where were you the last six years with that argument It's like they had it in their back pocket bro right. and, and hey it's a valid Valid argument It is. It is. But we can now argue that with we're them making about it. noise It's just like oh let's deflect it now Right. Who gives a fuck that no, or whatever. You that guys you, are mad about a video. Right. Or what about this? That's what people always do. Deflect shit. There's right. a time and place for something. If, if our time is now to speak about our... The, the fact is the fact. Tiger took the video down. Right. The, right. the individual that made the, so, the, the song and the yeah. video, he took it down. So, uh, so I he, had a conversation like that with one of my black homies. Because he, he said, uh, you know, well, you need to tell your people to start saying, stop saying the N-word. Okay? And you know what? I agree with him. Yeah. I agree with him. And I'm like, well... Bro, you already know that I don't talk like that. Right, right. Can I make them stop? No. Right. No, but here's the disgusting thing, is that I many times I see Rasa using that more than black people. It's true, dog. I see the full community. Shout out to them. They're a dope page. They always promote all these Rasa rappers. Yeah. Every other word is the N-word, dog. I'm like, what, like, what the fuck's going on, bro? They say it more than usually, black rappers, Usually it's bro. the Edgar Coalition that, that uses it. <laughs> the Edgars, <laughs> So, So it's usually them. You know, and, you know, I'm not going to fight you over that, bro. If that's what you do, that's how you grew up, whatever. It is what it is. You know, I'm not going to fucking like bang on you for that. I just personally don't use that. And I feel like it's ammunition for for people to use against us, bro. But at the at the end of the day, I know for a fact they're not using it in a negative right. way. Yeah. They're they're just so influenced by hip hop. That's right. how much influence hip hop has. Right. That's how much influence the black community has on on the world, bro. Right. Because it's not just Mexicans using that. There's probably right. some white boys saying that of with, course. amongst themselves. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? Really but, what we're telling our own people, let's respect ourselves. Let's respect ourselves right. and, and let's respect their culture as well. You know what, dog? It's even worse when there's like a 40 year old that says I've seen some OG looking fools that say that shit, dog. I've seen dudes that now say ninja. <laughs> My ninja? Yeah. I'm like, bro, hey, that's better, dog. Yeah, I, I go, but let's just avoid the whole shit, you know? Yeah, right. But uh, yeah, man, you know what? Like Remember, I said, uh, Dub C, he even says, My Nia. Yeah. Nia. Yeah. Like, Nia. That's yeah. classic. Yeah. Dub C's tight. You know, but, and, and here's the thing people will look at us, you guys are just old. Stop using that, That's bro. That's some dumb shit. Yeah, stop using that. Like if outdated morals don't mean anything nowadays. Yeah, you know. You guys are too new, dog. What the fuck? You uh, guys you, are fucked up. You, you, you know what I like in that too? And and I don't want to reach too far. But when people say you're too old, it's like one time I was sharing uh, with someone that I, I read the Bible, okay? Right. And the one guy goes, well, that's just for the Jews. That's what he told me. And then I said, okay. He goes, and plus it's outdated, it's old. 
And I said, okay. So, and then I just asked him, I'm going to just ask you one question, bro. He goes, what's that? Honor your father and your mother. Wow. That's outdated. That's old. Exactly. That's only for the Jews. You know, he didn't know what to say. So when we say, let us respect ourselves and let us respect our culture, let them use it. You know what? We yeah. don't use it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, th that was the example that I gave. That's a good example. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just if something's outdated in your head. It doesn't, it's because people, they, it, it doesn't agree with what they believe now. You know of what course. I'm saying? And they try to make an excuse to make it okay. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. It, it is what it is, bro. If you're taking heat, you're taking heat. It's not because we're old. It's just because it doesn't, right. it looks weird, bro. You're, you're straight right. rasa right here and you're using that word more than, than them. Right. It's like, it don't look right, bro. Like, you know right. what I'm saying? I'm, you know, it, that's my opinion, bro. Right. Um, but, and if you use it, kudos to you, dog. You know, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, but it, it just, it, it, it's, it's a slippery slope, dog. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's like one of my uh, black homies again. And, and, and I love these guys, bro, because they're my friends, okay? I've been on them for years. But when he heard me talking about the whole Tiger thing, he just said, well, I don't like Mexican people talking Spanish in front of me. That's what he said. And then I said, some of us can't speak English. <laughs> Not serio, dog. Yeah. It is what it is. You know? My mom can speak English, but it's very broken, bro. Right. She's comfortable in her native right. tongue, dog. Uh, That's just what it and is. And then he used another one. I don't like it when you guys say raza because it excludes us. And then I said, so did BLM. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, but we respected it. Of course. You know, and, and that's what we're doing. We're respecting it. Now we want the same respect. Exactly, you know what I'm saying? dog, yeah. But no, you're too old. Like, okay, fuck it. You're outdated, yeah, dog. I, I, make, I expired. You shouldn't be having a podcast, fool. I know, you shouldn't fuck. be on this. Your, it's, your, it's your a views are too outdated. This dog. is my last show. I'm gonna start. Show. You're I'm retired. Start, I'm gonna With start packing. Hypnotic, dog? Yes, yes, Damn. yes, Duval. Hey, salute, dog. All right, nah, 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 nah. call somebody. Nah, text nah, me. nah we need you, dog. All right, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. oh man, but you know what? I like these type of conversations, bro. Um, uh, before we open up the phone lines, um, you got some new music? Oh, I just dropped a uh, a new single. It's called "Life's a Risk." Uh, famously quoted uh, by uh, the Life's "Blood In, Blood Out." Yes. "Life's a Risk," Carnal with the. Uh, Paco Aguilar, wey, el gallo negro, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, obviously, with Raza, man, that movie just touches our heart. I've, I've seen it like a hundred times. Okay. It, I still have it in my DVD in my Let, room. Let's be honest, that's like the comedy version <laughs> of American Me. <laughs> no, <laughs> yes, American Me They're is so great. raw, so, so yes. crazy. But I'm going to be real. Maybe in my time, I'm a little younger, um, Blood and Blood was my favorite movie of all time, dog. You know what I'm saying? Really? That shit's my shit, bro. <laughs> but um, good movie, bro. The, the, yeah, the, no, but you're right though. American Me is very, whoo, right, very ruthless. But uh, so the new song, man, is called "Life's a Risk." Uh, we just shot a video in uh, Elysian Park this past uh, Sunday. They actually had a picnic there, man. Uh, uh, the the lowrider, I forgot what they were. I think it was West Side lowriders, but they uh, they bought. Everybody tacos, bro. They had a taco guy there giving away free tacos and shit. Uh, Fucking feed him, dog. You know what I'm saying? And and but we we took advantage of the scenery there, beautiful scenery. We have a whole storyline behind it. So in the movie, when Paco Aguilar says "Life's a risk, carnal," he's pertaining to the gang banging shit. And you know what I'm saying? There's a particular scene there. I know most of you guys know. But what I did with this song was like, it's not only life isn't a risk itself, like the gang banging. Shit, it's also a risk. Who your partner is in life, your your companion, bro. Right, right, right. So that's what that's about. It's about, you know, you can fall in love with somebody, it don't mean it's gonna work out. So in this particular video, we have a whole storyline of, of a, some high acting scandalous and shit. I'll just say that. There's dog. a bunch of scandalous <laughs> out there. Bunch of scandalous hyenas out there. But shout out to the to the scandalous hyena Priscilla. I was just playing, girl. <laughs> she ain't scandalous in real life. But uh <laughs> shout out Priscilla, she's the main role right if there. If you want a real scandalous hyena, I could have gave you her number, her address <laughs> anyway. So, anyways, yeah. you, you know what I'm looking for? You know who I want? I really I'm looking for a dope chola rapper. Dope. Right. But I'm talking about lyrics. Well, good lyrics. I'm not just talking about some Mickey Mouse type of shit. Remember some that one? I know. She, I think she came out on that movie with the, the two cops. Travies? No, nah, I don't know what her name. Was. I'm looking for a dope. You want a dope? Chola. Chola. That would be hard, bro. Chica. I'll call the album American Mija. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> I'm telling you. American Mija. This one. Exactly, bro. So, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I want to. Because you know what? One thing. And I'm being sarcastic when I say that. But one thing about Rasa, we don't like talent, bro. Look, some of the greatest singers, 
some of the greatest actors, some of the greatest musicians, bro, all come out of Mexico, bro. Right. Okay. And then in the black culture, bro, you know, we can just go down the list of shit that we grew up and still bump. Right. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. So in all different nationalities, in all different cultures, everybody has their talent. Of course. But my thing is through this platform, I like to shine light on our people and right. display you know, your guys' talent. Right, you know? exactly. So, I, I, that's why I think it's important, and I tell people, now that we have the technology to go live, you know what I'm saying? Uh, um, fuck it. I always tell people, you know what? Instagram Live is free. Facebook Live is free. Right, right. YouTube Live is free. That's the only thing true, ain't dog. free is the internet. And with that so, said, can I, can I display a little bit of that talent for you, dog? Yeah. I, I, I usually do this verse at my shows. Every time I, I have an opportunity, I do an acapella. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But it goes like this, check it out. Shout out to the paletero man and the ice cream lady. To some people, it might seem crazy, but these jobs are a pipe dream, baby. At least here in the States, if they persevere through the aches, maybe their kids can catch a break and strive to become something great. There's always pride in any work you do. Don't belittle the people that put in work for you. See, there will always be a certain few criticizing because they looking from a further view. But if you look close, the shit is real. My abuelito used to pick the fields. And that makes me proud. When you work that hard, you should take a bow. Round of applause. Heads off to the people that come across and give their kids opportunities to be something greater. Because here in the U.S., you can show us what you're made of. You can be a lawyer or you can be a doctor or be like Canelo and be a boxer. This ain't the only place for advancements, but in America, you increase your chances. Salud, dog. You know what I'm saying? A little something like that. Hell yeah. I like that. Just give him a round of applause. A round of applause. Hell yeah. Okay. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to take me another shot. So you might get drunk Tony. Go ahead and pour so me one, dog. Some people say they like drunk Tony better. So Is that right? <laughs> I guess as long as I get to fucking sleep, good. So. All right. Good. Good. Okay, cool. All right. I didn't put nothing in it, so you can go ahead. I and saw it. I, I, yeah. I know I'm looking feed him as fuck right now. Bro. I know, but uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and put the, the, the um, oh, you know what? Let me, let me connect my Bluetooth. Alex Cervantes Cervantes hey, Enterprise That's a good job you have Tony You're getting fucked up Just interviewing motherfuckers Hell yeah Having fun laughing Women lusting <laughs> <laughs> Living the motherfucking dream dog You know what nah, I mean <laughs> Kudos to that dog Alright oh, uh, Go ahead and put up the number So go ahead and put up the number If you got a, a question for Hypnotic A question for me um, A this or whatever Just call <laughs> this. You know what I'm saying <laughs> Even if you don't like us Just call You know what I'm saying <laughs> Yeah, let's put it all out, put it all out on blast yeah, right now. Dog. Yeah, fuck it. You know yeah, what I'm saying? exactly. Okay, here we go. Let's put on the headphones. Okay. I could put on headphones. Simon. Okay, here we go. Caller, your name and where are you calling from? Frizzo El Metal Metal from Escalera, New Mexico. What's up? El Metal Metal from New Mexico. What's up, my brother? Como estas? Frizzo, what's cracking, dog? I just want to give a big shout out to uh, to Hypnotic man. He he came down to. To my casino about a month ago, and he rocked the stage. He opened up for Jarro and Ashanti, and he's just a dope artist. The rocks, I loved it out there, <laughs> and he, he sold a bunch of merchandise at the booth. And he's a good, he's a good dude. He's a good homie, man. So much love, if not. A- hey, Frizzle, that's crazy, dog. I can't believe you called, dog. That's a big surprise, but. Thank you for that, dog. Shout out to my boy Frizzle out there in New Mexico, man. He um tapped me in. I, I known him. I actually went on a, I went on tour with him. With, uh, with Tony, your best friend, all royalty. Um, <laughs> that was love to royalty. Shout out to royalty. Yeah, but, but at the end of the day, that's how I met Frizzo, bro. But this is how music works, bro. Low key, Frizzo, like we vibed back then, bro. That was like what eight, seven years ago. And I kept tabs it was with like homeboy. 2015, 15, that's what I'm saying. 2015, yeah. bro. Like, and we kept tabs. And, you know, Frizzo does a lot of things out there in New Mexico, and he had a show with Ja Rule and Ashanti, bro, and I hit him up, bro. Hey, Frizzo, thank you. Paid for my hotel, paid for the food and all that shit. That's a beautiful thing, I just man. had to get there. I sold 2,000 in merch, bro, that day. Hell yeah. 4,000 tickets sold, bro. That was the biggest stage I've ever rocked. Hey, Frizzo, gracias, way. That's the real homie shit. Real homie love. The, the Mescalero Apache tribe loved you, too, dog. You I'm, know, I'm a Mescalero Apache. Right. So, and, man... 
the reservation, they love you, homie. So it's all love here for you, dog. I appreciate hey. you coming down. Gracias, güey. Hey, and, 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 and quick question, Frizzo. The, 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 the native, yeah. do they, they fuck with the raza culture? Hell yeah, man. Right. We love I've that noticed shit. that. We're like the same people. Well, you know what I mean? I've noticed that. A lot yeah, of the homies out there, the natives, they looked all like choloed out and shit. Like they look homied out and shit. That's we all like, smoked the peace pipe. <laughs> Hell yeah. This is, we're the same people, man. This is all our land. This is all indigenous land. Indigenous land. land. That's you know right. I mean? That's right. All good. All good. Yeah. Muchas gracias, carnal. Gracias, homie. All right, thank you for that call, big dog. For New Mexico, New Mexico's in the building. Just keeping calls coming. Once okay. again, if you don't like us, call. If you like us, call. If you like What's hypnotic and dog, you wanna, me. you know, um, whoa, whoa, talk whoa. to him. <laughs> <laughs> yo, 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 big dog. How you doing, man? Uh, caller, where you calling from? Huntington Park. Huntington Park in the building. What's good, my brother? You got a question? Yeah, how you guys doing? It's more of a comment. Oh yeah, man, we're doing good. Uh, we're getting a little tipsy. <laughs> right, right. Oh, that sounds like fun. Yeah, um, yeah. This uh, about uh, you guys were talking about the N word earlier. Yes. And uh, I don't, I don't know if it's, I don't know why people use it, but I, I think it's more of, of the, the music. Yeah. Could yeah, be. yeah. It's very influenced. Uh, Hip hop has such a huge influence on the world and even on Rasa, man. If you, we and Tony have talked about this before, man. If you go to a Snoop Dogg concert, if you go to an Ice Cube concert, Daz and Corrupt, you're going to see 70% Rasa there, especially yep. right here in Cali, for sure. So we fuck with the black community, yeah. dog. We love hip hop. And it, it influenced a lot of our young ones. If, if the young ones are going to say that word, it is what it is. I know they don't say it in the negative terms, but it's still a slippery slope. And I don't use that word myself. It's not my culture. But, you know, because you don't know how the, the black community feels about that, in well, my opinion. The but, thing is that we want to respect yeah. the black culture and not use that word, bro. Right, right. So because I, I personally don't use it, but uh, what I think is that back then when slavery was a thing, there used to be whites that used to use the N-word on yeah. on Mexicans, so I guess if that's true, then, really? then we probably would have the, the same right. But I, I, I don't use it, and I don't like it, you know? like right, I right. didn't grow up around blacks or anything like that, and so a you lot said, of people use that word. And You said whites would use that word towards Mexicans, too? From I, I've seen that. Oh, I mean, wow, from man. what I understand. That's interesting. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, man. Greatly appreciate your phone call, brother. Gracias, way. Thank yes, you. Sir. Have a blessed night. Hey, okay. hey, when I say way, I don't mean that in disrespect. I, I know, I know. I'm glad you said that, though. <laughs> so, all good, all good. Let's get in calls calling. The fucking tequila starting to kick in. Did you have a couple of shots? Hey, take another one, fool. Let's go. Hold on, man. I'm still <laughs> sipping on my shit. Go, go for it. Go for it. Hey, hey uh, if you guys need some more cup, Alex, I'm about to cut him over here. He's hogging them all up. So, once again, let's keep the, another call. Caller, your name, where are you calling uh, from? Hey, this is uh, Maria calling from Tucson, Arizona. Maria from Tucson. Oh, What's, hey. good? What's up, girl? Hey, hey. Uh, homegirl sent me a message earlier. She had a good point, like, and, and it's pertaining to um, the American Cholo shit on No Jumper. Yes. They had a, Ameri uh, No Jumper had a comedian on there, white comedian. Go ahead, hey, Maria, I'm going to let you speak on that, please. Oh, all right, all right. I was just calling, uh, but I, I'll go ahead and tell you, uh, speak on it. I was just like going, doing, you know, going down the wormhole of all this shit that's going on with the Raza and, you know, American Cholo and Tariq and No Jumper, right? Right. So I was watching some videos and there's this one with that dude. I don't know his first name, but the last name is Schultz. Okay. It's a very white name. Uh-huh. You know, right. so they're sitting there and Juno is sitting there with them. And he says, yeah, people get mad at me. And they're like, why do you let them say shit like web bag and all that? Like joke. And he was like, I don't let them. And then the dude makes a joke. He's like talking about a movie he was in. And he's like, I had a fire joke, too. And I was like, and he said it. He was like, wet back street boys. Get the dildos. Que se dio dos, que se dio, que se dio dos, wet back and all this stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I'm like, they're all sitting there cracking the fuck up. How is this different? Him repeating this movie joke line that he had, that he wanted to say, 
then Gil repeating what his homie had said years ago and him even saying, I didn't agree with him. And I right. told him like, hey, back the fuck up, bro. Don't right. say that. It's not different. It's so, like, language, what she, what it's she's saying, different. Tony, is that like no jumper, they're quick to have comedians on there saying wet back and, and clowning it and saying quesadildos and stuff like that. But when Gil's on, the, uh, they, they, they're quick to put a video with Gil saying that word that's out of context and it's a yeah. big thing. But yeah. when we yeah. got other motherfuckers on there, a white fool clowning Raza and then right. Duno's right there laughing about it too. They're still on there, and there's no outrage about that. Exactly, no exactly. Let that go to show. Exactly. Hey, but shout out to my and, girl, and Tiptoes. So, Tiptoes, uh, I did a show out there in Tucson. She came out, and she she showed mad love. Thank you very much, Tiptoes. I just want to give you my love. You know what I'm saying? You keep, hey, keep doing what you're doing. And say, man, you're really speaking for us. American Cholo, too. Like, hey, we need it, man. We need to stand together. Absolutely. Thank Gracias. you very much. Right. Thank you. Thank We're going to go ahead and uh, hold man, on. We need I, to stand I got, together. Absolutely. Okay. Thank Gracias. you very much. Give me one second. I got it. I got somebody on the line right now. Hold on. Hopefully he answers. Oh, oh. I can't hear him. Hello? Radio, radio, radio. Yo, yo, yo. Gil, Gil, Gil. Whoa, Gil. American Cholo? American Cholo. What's going on? Oh, shit. What's up, big dog? Hey, glad you're joining in, dog. How you doing, homeboy? For sure, man. So listen, man, I want to change this conversation just a little bit, Tony, if you don't mind. Okay. Okay, Let's so go. it's like this, man. I got, a, I, got, I got a jackass, like the guy right there on your comment section was marvelous. I got another jackass who's marvelous who wants to sit there and, and, and debate me and say that I'm not Chicano. Listen, homeboy, yo soy Dureño. I was born Dureño, right? I'm from North Hollywood. All that bullshit that we're not Chicano, we're not this, we're not that, we're brown people. Right. We need to get off that fucking subject. We need to sit there and support one another. I am a guy that was born on Duras from North Hollywood. Have I not represented for the Raza? Oh, Have man. I not sat there and put my fucking life, my, my, my life on the line for the Raza? Mm. All this shit about we're not this, we're not that. We need to come together and stop with the bullshit. And I call it any motherfucker that's going to sit there and tell me, oh, you're not Chicano, you're not this. Motherfucker, what are you doing for the Raza? So hey. to me, is this, this is the question. Do we need to get off that bullshit, Tony? Yes or no? Him not. Do we need to yes. get off that bullshit? Yes. Hey, let me say something to you, American Trailer. I was just having this conversation with my with my hermanos dog and I, i'm keeping it real 100 right now i told them i'm all hey american cholo he's not even mexicano eden amorado the activist he's not even mexicano yes. and what are they doing they're making the most noise they're making the most impact on behalf of us bro so salute to you because you're not even mexicano but you're still a brown man like you said dog you're honduran whatever you are dog like at the end of the day it is your raza bro in my eyes you know what i'm saying and you're putting on the fight for us dog and it's you and people like eden that are not even mexicano because our motherfucking mexicano fools that are high up in the platforms are scared to speak up so not even mexicano speak up dog so salute to you but but it ain't that listen homie i was raised chicano from since 81 oh boy all that other shit don't mean nothing when when i was not when i was fucking when I was gang banging, they never told me, "Hey, where were you born, homie?" They told me, "Where the fuck were you from?" Right, before they tried right, to shoot right, me. Right. I'm, and ta- that, I'm and talking that's technicalities. I'm talking technicalities. No, no, I hear you. You're Rasa. But, but, you're Chicano. But, you're Chicano. But, but, that, but that's the reality of dumb motherfuckers still trying to fight stupid ass fucking issues. Are we this? Right. We are brown men and women. We are Cali Mac. We need to come together and stop with the little bullshit ass fucking conversation. We need to come together as one people. And, and this is what this is what the Tiger thing showed us. If we come together, fools are yes. scared of us. Bro. Yes. They're scared of us. You saw what you saw. They try to cancel me. They try yes, to. Yes. They're scared of us, because we have the numbers, carnal. Hey, compa. You know. You know what the sad thing is, bro, is that in the midst of all this shit that's going on, they wanna they wanna focus on little stupid shit like that, bro. That does that's not even uh, relevant to what the bigger picture is and how we're trying to come together and speak up for our gente, dog. So salute to you, dog. I've always had your back, dog. You've always been a good dude, homie. I'm not. Listen, whether we're. Dominicano, whether we're yeah. Puerto Rican, right. whether whatever it is, if, when we finally figure out we are brown men and women, we need to come together. We need to stop with that low level bullshit about we're this, we're that. We ain't no better than one another. We bleed the same, and at the end of the day, they all look at us the same. They don't look at us as yeah. equal, yes. homeboy, but we yes. do, homeboy. Yes, yes, one hundred percent, dog. Well, Gil, well, let, let, look, let me say this, Gil. <laughs> Yeah. I, I support what you're doing, bro. And you know I've called you and I told you that. Yes, Tony, yes. You, you, know, you know I got love for you, Carnal. The, the, it just puts me in a bad position because uh, I, I believe you mentioned Marvelous, correct? 
Yes. Okay. I got love for Marvelous and I got love for you, but I support you. I'm, I'm just going to be real with you. I support you. And, you know, Cyber and I support him. The thing about the technicality stuff, I just try not to get involved. Right. But al mismo tiempo, si tú me llamas mañana and you tell me, Tony, can you come with me to Power 106 or whatever, I'll be there. Okay? Yes. Because uh, uh, together, uh, we're a stronger voice. That's the thing, bro. Yeah. And that's, that's true, yeah. dog. Gil, just to so, say something hey, real hey, quick. Tony, hey, Tony. Yeah. No, hold on. Hey, Tony. Yes. But, fi but fighting or trying to debate over that technicality is weak, homeboy. It's weak. That's over with. That's 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 some '90s shit. All right. Um, this, some that. We are brown people. We are Cali Mac. We don't need to be fighting over that frivolous shit, homeboy. And that's what that seems to be happening. We need to come together as brown men. We're, are we really gonna? If that's the case, I'm from the Hollywood boys. Let's fight. Straight right. up. Right. Right. Let's right. do it. Get off that bullshit, homie. We are brown men and women. Let's do this shit together. Hey, right. Bro. Right. I I agree. I agree. <laughs> I agree, bro. <laughs> no, no, Cholo, you're on a good one, and, and you're right, though, bro. Like, at the end of the day, fool, like, we, we need to be united, dog. And if you're going to go out there and throw your throw your 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 your, your safety on the line, bro, because like you said, you Thank and Bozo you. were speaking some real shit, bro. This ain't no more. You said you got death threats, bro. I can't even imagine that, bro. Like, many, many. You're doing that for Raza on behalf right. of us. Thank you. You're doing more than any motherfucking Mexicano has done at right. this point, dog. Thank you. Facts. Thank you. Hey, hey Gil. But I, but I do it because I love us as yes. brown men yes. and women. Fuck yes. that other bullshit, homeboy. Gracias. Hey, hey, Gil, you know what? I'm being sarcastic when I say this, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're on a sick one right now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 Tony. No, hey. I had to I had to bang for mine, homeboy. I know, bro. Hey, I know. Cholo's on a good one, but he's he's in a position in his life right now. This is where all the right. all the marbles are on the table, know, dog. And he's he's fighting the motherfucking fight. Not just for him, but of for course, us. Of fool. course. But for as I Gil, I'm right there with you, bro. Like I said, you need me, I'm there. Okay. Likewise, dog. God, likewise. God bless you guys. Likewise, hey, ha hashtag Cali Mac, homeboy. Brown and proud, carnal. Oh, good. Oh, good. Cubo, Cubo. Gracias. Right, brother. Hey. Okay. Pero, you know, at the same time, you know what? Much respect to Gil, and but at the same time, much respect to Marvelous because yeah, I, yeah, because I love both. I don't of know guys, him, bro. but he's. A, right. I've seen. I've seen yeah. you guys' interview. It was a yeah. dope interview. That's so, something that they're gonna have to yeah deal with and themselves. Like I said, you know what I'm like saying? I, said, but, I have respect for both of them. Bro. But I, I agree with I, to Tony. I agree with you on certain things. I, I've noticed this myself. Yeah. If I fuck with this fool, this motherfucker over here don't like it. You're not gonna satisfy everybody, dog. Right. That, and that the unfortunate thing is. That's some bullshit, though. I mean, it's like, I know you love royalty. I don't. <laughs> Stay away. <laughs> okay. Hold on. We got, a, we got a call we got to make real quick. Oh, uh, shit. Ver, let's see. I hope. Okay. Let's see. Let's see who this is. Hopefully, he answers. Um, let's go. Hello? Hello, hello. Hello, hello. He got scarred the actor in the motherfucking building. Orale. Hey, what's up, what's up? Carnal, you know what? You need to come back here and have a couple of more drinks with me. <laughs> last time you oh, last time you spit out a tequila, Shaq, you know? What? Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't handle it. I couldn't handle it. <laughs> oh, shit, Scar in the motherfucking house. Hell yeah, what up, Scar? Hey, what's, what's up, man? Uh, just wanted to uh, hop on the, on the conversation, man. I was getting into it, man. I love what you guys were talking about. I've been trying to get the message across, but I don't know people are ready to hear that. You know what I mean? Everybody's too comfortable thinking the world is all flowers and sunshine, you know? Right, right, yes. right. Definitely. Hey, I, I just want to say this, though. Scar, um, when I dropped Proud People, the blue face disc, mm -hmm. he, out of nowhere, I was at work, bro, and I seen a share, and it was Scar, Cholo's Try. My dad is motherfucker. He had 160,000 followers, bro. Right. He shared my shit, bro. I got mad followers from that. He was one of the first... People that had a platform that fucking shared my shit, you know what I mean? We weren't afraid to go out there and 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 and, and tell it how it was. Like that that song was bullshit, and then, right. and then también likewise, dog. Like the raza in there, they they should take the heat. You know what I mean? For 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 like we talked about that. The yeah, raza in there, they shouldn't have been in that video. But Scar was the first one of the first homeboys with a big platform to share my shit, and that helped my growth, dog. So thank you, Scar, for that on some real shit. Right. Dog. Oh, that's good to know, man. That's good to know. You know, I remember when we were doing the protest out there, and, you know, you hopped on stage, you had a, a message to say, and I know it was like we were running fast, but, you know, we try to do the best we right. can, but, right. you know, just seeing you is like, you're the voice, because sometimes maybe I can't articulate as good as I want to or say what I want to say after the fact. I'd be like, damn, I should have said this, but, you know, you're the voice for me 
and for a lot of people out there, you know, because people will listen. I think people like have a, an open ear more to music, like they can relate more yes. with that, you know? Right, yeah, right. No, it's true. Like when you hear a song that's, and sometimes you're like, a lot of people say that, damn, I couldn't say those words, but this guy's words is, yeah. is exactly how I feel. You know absolutely. what I'm talking about, right, Tony? Absolutely. Music is beautiful, dog. It is, absolutely. Music is universal, bro. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Look, you may not even speak our language, but you listen to our music, yeah. and you can fucking groove to it, bro. <laughs> exactly. Let's be so, honest. And, 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 and back to the subject at hand, that Tiger song, Ay Caramba, like, it's nothing um, catchy about it. Like, it's corny. You know, it's not good. You know, and... and, and I'm glad they took it down, but then they took down um, that apology video that right. when um, American right. Cholo was there. So I thought we had I thought we had won the the battle, but the battle was short lived, you know. And I think this is the beginning of a revolution. Like it already sparked the the flame to get this shit started. It's just for the people to boycott Power One of Six. Like on the last interview when I was there with um, Tony, I was telling him how. I couldn't really get my point across. I think it was the tequila, my my, my <laughs> most popular one in house. No, but I was trying to tell them that Power One or Six acts like they're for the people, but they're not really doing much, nothing. They're really just out there, you know, playing the same music over and over, getting paid, right? You know, just to play the same music. Like you, you go crazy listening to Power One or Six all day because they play the same shit, and they can't even play our shit like at least once in a right. while. You know what I mean? Scar, but, let me let me say something real quick, dog. I'll just tell it like this: You think of Power One or Six, you think of LA. When you think of LA, what the fuck do you think about, dog? Who's there? All Rasa, bro. all fucking Rasa, homie. They don't even yeah. play our shit. We're keeping them alive. Rasa's keeping them alive. We're the ones hearing yeah. all that shit, right? So as soon as we get a motherfucking brown man that's out there speaking on behalf of us, and 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 they take that motherfucking interview down with the quickness yeah. to accommodate the black community. It is what it is. I'm not gonna hold back. That's what it is. They accommodated yeah. the black community because you know. Let's keep it real. They have that. They've gained that respect that we don't have in the mainstream, dog. Right. So they took that shit down. That's a slap in the face to us, and that goes to show whoever's in charge. They're taking sides. It's not about or black and brown. We're not competing with each other. We just like we said. We just want the same respect. Right. But obviously, they're like, okay, when it comes to a black issue, we're, we we got to take that down, dog. We got to take that down. Gil's racist. Fuck that shit, bro. Fuck yeah. that shit. You know yeah. what I mean? Like they they don't give a fuck about us. Who the fucks listening to Power One Hundred Six? It's all fucking rasa, dog. Get the fuck out of here. Dog. You know. You know. I, I'm gonna yeah. challenge a Chicano to do a podcast called Chicano Power One Hundred Six. Right. Right. Let's do our own shit. Like that's yeah. a, that's the thing that we don't need to depend on. All these mainstream motherfuckers. We got our own platform. Shout out to Rodium Radio, dog. You know what I mean? He birthed a lot of things, bro. Hoodstock's Lucky and even fucking American Cholo. Like, from, like, because from what I remember, everybody knew who the fuck Rodium Radio was. Everybody knew 28th was. He's a pioneer when it comes to this, to this podcast shit. And, and then it just, it bur it gave birth to other things, bro. And, and that's how it is, bro. And even with me, I'm not, I'm nobody big, dog. I'm not a famous motherfucking rapper. But I did proud people. I did blue, blue face this. I, I woke people up a little bit. You know what I'm saying? That's my most successful oh, song. It has 260,000 views. But like, it's nowhere near all these mainstream guys. But it birthed something to where it, it, it is what it is now. Like you say, you're talking about a revolution, dog. It's just going to grow and grow and grow as long as we're all on the same page. Like American Cholo said, it's a collective effort, dog. It yes, takes it more than one. Motherfucking yes, person And and it takes years To grow and to develop But I'm here for the fight Bro I'm here for the long run And I know you are Scar And, and Tony Yeah I know you are Tambien That's why we're here Doing this shit bro We're speaking about Absolutely. real shit Absolutely So once yeah, again I think it's um Yeah I think it's time To boycott um, Power 106 And, and just um, Right You know let, let the, let's Spread the word Get people active And, and let, them, let them Make their own decisions They wanna right. A lot of people Are trying to be dismissive About what's going on Even yeah. I heard some black rappers trying to speak up on it. Like, is it really that serious? Like, yeah, it's pretty fucking serious, right. man. It's been right. 2022, and we still don't got nothing out there. Like, you know what I mean? Like, time and time is flying, and we need to catch up, and, and we're going to take over. Hey, let's do that, bro. Me and you, we'll talk. We'll fucking do our own boycott. You know what I'm saying? On some real shit. We got some leverage, dog. We got some hint that we know. Let's fucking do it. Yeah, yeah. We're doing our own boycott. Yeah. The, the black community wants to boycott them. We're going to fucking boycott them, too. Power 106 is in a fucked up position. Cause they about to get boycotted by black and brown. And they got no motherfucking white listeners. I'll tell you that, dog. Chicano <laughs> Power 106. I encourage Raza to start your own podcast. Let's go. Oh, hey, Scar. Muchas gracias, Scar. One last question for you, okay? 
All right, right. I'm going to invite you to calls with the wizard. You just come, drink, and we take calls. <laughs> you don't have to drink too much tequila, <laughs> pero, you know. Well, least- all right. All right, but we just got to touch on some um, some, some subjects, man, that's yeah. kind of, you got to, like, expose a- everything for where it is. You know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be raw. It's going to be real because I held back a lot, man. I held back a lot. You know, like, hey, I, I don't, feel like. Don't hold back no more, dog. I, I feel you. We had a conversation, and we know what the fuck it is, dog. All right, that lick is going to help for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All right, Canali, have a blessed night, man. I know you too. All right, here we go. Uh, I got one more call that I have to make. Because you know what? What's fair is fair. And like I said, I have love for Gil. Right. Okay, yeah, and and I, know, I, I got love for my boy Let's Marvelous. Let's do it. Let's do it. So you know what? I want to hear Marvelous side of it. You know what? But fuck, man. Go ahead. Turn it up. Hello? Here we go. Can you hear me, bro? Marvelous. Como estas, bro? What's going on, Tony? I'm good, my brother. You know what? I just finished talking to Gail. You know what? We heard his side. And you know I have love for Gail. You know I have love for you. Yeah, so, thanks, uh, thanks. You know, right. just, just go ahead, brother. You know. So so this is the thing, bro. Um, you know, I, I heard, I, man, my phone started blowing up, bro. You know, when my name got spoken. <laughs> <laughs> but, social, hey, media, cool, dog, you know, social media, dog. Social media. I'm not here to come at, at anybody with no animosity or none of that shit. There was a there was a question asked about the term Chicano, the word Chicano, right? Yes. yes. And the correct definition and what it, what it means. And I mean, if he was raised Chicano, talking about American cholo, that's cool. That's cool if he was if he has Chicano style and whatever it is. But the real meaning behind Chicano is for Mexican American. You can't sit there and feel some type of way and say that I'm dividing anybody. There's no division in anything. I got as, as, us as raza, brown people. There, there should not be no division between us, especially when it comes to a word yes. or for somebody to feel right. bothered by it. You know, Gil takes a lot of things very personal. And that's because, you know, I'm not to, not to put him on blast, but there's a lot of ego issues going on. You know what I mean? And especially when you that, like the other the other day, you know, people are asking me, who was I talking about? Or, or you know, are you throwing shots at, at American Cholo? I'm not throwing shots at nobody, but people need to really sit back and and take a good listen to who is representing the Rasa or, you know, Gil likes to call out a lot of people. Oh, I'm the only one speaking up for the Rasa. I'm the only one doing this. And you're not, bro. You're not. Rasa has been speaking up for, for our people have been speaking up for ourselves for the longest time. You know, we got the Brown Berets. We got a lot of Chicano movements that are of people, um, including senoras and all that that speak up they rally there was a protest back in the 70s you know in the 60s with the school system and you know because we we, the lack of education that we were getting so our rasa has been speaking up you know so i mean because he has a platform that's cute you know what i mean and and he could do anything that he that he wants to do you know but you know i see a lot of a lot of ego coming out you know and me 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 like the whole um the whole fucking um what's the thing with um Adam twenty two situation, right? If people would really sit back and take a listen on, on what that was about, it was about something that Gil said. Now whether he wants to, to um you know clarify what he said and, and it wasn't derogatory because he was speaking about somebody, it's still a word that was used, bro. You know, it's still you you could pr- have another choice of words instead of picking out coon because what if a black person said Oh, this wet back this, hey, this wet back. We're hey, gonna be real offended, real quick. You he know, ha- he has multiple black people defending him on that. So, what do you got to say yeah. about that on some real shit? No, yeah, that that's cool. You know what I mean? But, no, no, no. It, At the end of the day, like we're we're over here. You know, like I know there's animosity, there's egos between two people that are beefing it, bro. But at the end of the mm-hmm. day, for the greater good, Gil's doing was was no one's taken it this far as of late to get a mainstream rapper to apologize f- on behalf of Chicanos, even though he's not a, right. technically a Chicano, he's doing more work than any motherfucking Mexicano or Chicano has ever done, bro, to take it that far. So at the okay. end of the day, I get it. There's animosity between certain things. You know what I mean? That's that's ego uh-huh. on both sides, bro, because now you're not giving him credit for what he did, bro. Now you're shifting the conversation to something else, and then now you're defending... What the fuck Other people are saying That he said that word He shouldn't have said that word At the end of the day It was taken out of content You know what I'm okay, saying Okay you didn't let you, you didn't let me finish Spencer, Spencer. Wh- right, wh- whether, whether it was taken out of context Or not 
what I'm saying is the word was still used, bro. Right. So you show up, you show up to to that podcast over there with a hundred homies because of something that you did. And this, and and he, what he said, if I use that word, let me give you an example, homeboy. If I say a ghetto coon or a black person, I call them out of their name, bro. And I get called out for it. I'm not going to tell the Rasa, oh, they're attacking us. No, they're not attacking us. They're attacking you for something that you did. So don't use the Rasa as a backup and show up a hundred deep or 50 homies deep when it was just an issue with you. Your, yeah, your it's, a, issue, it's a personal. Bro. I get what you're saying. It's a personal issue. You know what I mean? It, it, makes us look, it makes us look soft. It makes us look weak. It makes us look that we need backup. Everybody should conduct yourself like a man. Man. Bro, At the end of the day, dog, when, when they showed up like that, I don't think it makes us look weak. It just makes us look like homeboy has a lot of backup, bro. And that's something that a lot of motherfuckers can't even do themselves, bro. A lot of fools can't pull up. I'm not saying you can't do that. I'm just saying a lot of fools can't do that, bro. If he's showing up deep, that means he has support. You can't downplay that and call it weak, in my opinion, dog. Because now okay. it, it, it seems like a personal thing now. Because, I mean, if you pull up deep, you pull up deep. You got backup, bro. That's not a weakness, in my opinion. I get what you're you're trying to say, but I, I disagree in a way. You know what I'm saying? No, and okay. I understand, bro. We all have our differences of opinion. And Marvelous, you know, so the day that I met you, I've had nothing but love for you. And you know what? I have to say the same thing for Gil, and this kind of puts me in an odd spot. But I needed to give both you and him an opportunity to speak because it would have been chicken shit on my right, part. right, right. Not no, 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 that's understandable. I, I would want that. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. he put a comment out there and, and he likes to use the word, let's talk about it. So let's talk about it. That's then. That's the conversation. Get, get that's a conversation both, that gotta get them be, both on the motherfucking podcast. Okay, yes, okay, that's, a, that's, a, that's a conversation that should be had on both on both right. parts. Okay, you know, I under, that's understandable. That's 100. But, you know, for as far as to say that somebody's dividing anybody, there's no division mm-hmm. in anything. I still got love for Gil. Right. Like, I, I, got, I, I hope he does well in, in everything that he does. But from the outside looking in, I mean, I'm not speaking on in a personal thing. I don't got no podcast. Right. I'm not saying I'm going to delete my, my podcast if I if I don't get a thousand followers or people don't agree with me. I don't care. I could care left or right if anybody disagrees or agrees with me. Right. You know, I would just tell people that would study and instead of voicing their opinion all the time, take a step back and look at the, the facts and the situation that's at hand, bro, instead of speaking out the side of their neck. Marvelous. You can, know? I, can I ask you a question real quick? Yeah, yeah. Go for it, homie. It's smart. At the end of the day, you have to you have to do smart. Um, como they say, like um, prom- promotion. That's it's, it's a smart tactic on his side too to say that. You get what I'm saying? Is it's also yeah. As much as real as he wants to be and legit as he wants to be in this business, if you want to get your voice heard, he needs to be flamboyant. He needs to be loud. You know what I'm saying? When you're quiet and you're not controversial. You, this wouldn't have happened. He would have never got Tiger on there unless he was loud. And for him to say that we're not going to get a, a, I'm going to quit if I don't get a thousand, ten thousand, or whatever, whatever the number he said. It's a smart marketing thing as well. And as a business, as a businessman, you got to give him, I think that's a smart uh, tactic. Okay, okay. Okay. Uh, marvelous. Well, this, 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 go, go, go for it, bro. No, no, you know what? Go ahead and answer that. And then I just have one more question then. So, what I was going to say, bro. To me, when you get on these po- and on these po- podcasts and these platforms, bro, I'm not looking at it. It's a smart, um, it's a smart move to do. You're either going to help the rasa and not worry about the numbers or anything because it's going to get to whoever it's going to it needs to get to, right. or you're not going to do it. I, I I don't do this shit to get likes or numbers or none of that shit. I don't get paid for nothing that I do. I don't tell nobody believe me or else. I tell people to go study. And, and and like it, it all started over the word Chitano, bro. That's right, how dumb right, it is. Right, right, you know right, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm not, exactly. I'm, I'm not the ignorant one. I'm not the one lowering my my standards about anything or, or dealing with an ego issue. I just gave them the proper definition of what a Chicano is. Okay. And there's no need to feel that bothered where you got to go. I was gonna go. T- I was gonna talk to him, and I found out that I was blocked. And like, damn, dude, like you're talking about coming together as Rasa. I mean. What's the, what's up with that? Like you know what I mean? Like I thought with this conversation should have been had. Okay, now here's my question, and I believe this is the question that the fans would like to know. Okay, because, right, right. Because let me tell you something marvelous. Yeah. You, you whether you want to believe it or not, you have a huge fucking following, bro. Yeah, I've seen your shit, yeah. dog. I know yeah. who you are. I've I've, yeah. I've listened to you. Appreciate your it. Shit. Yeah. yeah. Appreciate Gail, you. Gil, with all due respect, has a huge fucking following. Right, now, right. Now here's my question to you: Would you consider? Coming in with him here 
and talking about oh, it. Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah, love, yeah 100. It. love it, love it. Okay. Yeah, 100. Okay, Like so, I said, I got I got no animosity towards, towards Gil. When I made the, if, you, if anybody wants to go and, and review the, the video, I said Gil's the homie. I got nothing but love for Gil. I hope, you know, no offense. But just this is just the definition. It was just nothing, a, whether he was raised yeah. with Chicano style, that's Firme. You know, he runs with with the yeah. With, you're being with, technical. Are, you're being technical. Homies. You're being technical. That's, that's what it is. You're yeah, being technical. It's, it's no like and you're not you lying. Know? You're 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 right. You're right in the technical, uh, fan in, in technical terminology. You know, what I'm yeah. Saying? So right. there shouldn't be nobody offended by what I'm saying. Like you know what I mean. Like people tell me things all the time, whether it's about my tattoos and whether it's constructive criticism or not. I embrace it, bro. I learn from all you guys, everybody. Right, right, but but at the same time, I get what you're saying, dog, and the way your approach is. You're not doing it for likes. You're not doing it for this. But at the end of the day, fool, for for our voices to be heard, we do need to worry about that shit. We do need to worry about views. Unfortunately, that's the life. That's how social yeah. media works. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And people mm -hmm. people hated on Colin, Colin Kaepernick. He should have went about it a different way. If he would have kneeled, if he, for him to kneel on his knees during the football game or during the national anthem. Yeah. People are like, oh, he shouldn't have done that. If he did it any other way, it wouldn't have gotten as big as it did. That's the only way it has to be done. Sometimes you need to be loud. You need to be controversial. That's the only way shit works, bro. Unfortunately. Uh, on today's society. Yeah, so today's society. It's true. But bro. that's just what it is, bro. And, and at the end of the day, I get it. It's respectable that your whole mythology and your your way of thinking is like, I don't need to be loud and shit like that. Because I'm the same way, dog. With my music, a lot of people come at me like, you should do this video with 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 uh, people eating watermelon and, and doing all this chicken. I'm not gonna do that, bro. <laughs> no, you, no, you get what I'm saying. Man. I'm not gonna do that because that's not my stilo, bro. I, right, right. I like to keep it 100 and keep it. True to what I am And I'm gonna speak on shit That I'm passionate about yeah. But at the end of the day That shit is effective And it works And if it helps To get our voices heard I'm behind it okay. Dog To an extent right. You know what I'm saying and Unless good. they're acting Foolish and shit you know? Marvelous um, right. Yeah American Joel just called me I'm gonna call him back <laughs> I need you to stay tuned. Get, because the, get them both here now, yeah, yeah, dog. Bro, bro. <laughs> they don't live too far away, dog. <laughs> Marvelous. I, I really want to get you both, both of you guys in. So I'm going to ask him the same thing that I've asked you. You know, will he yeah, be go willing for to come? Bro. Okay. All right, Cardinal. Yeah, yeah, I'll I'm call done. you tomorrow. You guys, hey, you guys have a good night. Thank you for calling. Hey, Tony. I appreciate it. Yes, hey, sir, my first time oh, talking to you, Marvelous. My, my first time talking to you. Feed me, dog. Good good combo, dog. All right, bro. Nice to meet you, homie. I appreciate you. Likewise. Likewise. Okay. I got to call Gil because, you know what, Gil was just calling me and oh, I... Gil. Hell yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> we got a fucking novella going on here, dog. <laughs> Gil. What's good, Tony? Y yes, Gil. Uh, yeah. You know what? I asked um, Marvelous, would he be willing to uh, sit down with you? You know, would you be willing to do that? Listen, I'm, I, I have no business having a discussion with somebody I tell you, oh, because my bloodline is this, because my bloodline is that. That's a, some low-level shit, right? Okay. And, 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 and Marvelous will sit there and say that I don't mess with him because he said I'm not Chicano. I don't mess with Marvelous because he messed with somebody who's an informant. Let's make this straight, homeboy. You can tell Marvelous, you can hear this. I don't fuck with Marvelous because he started messing with an informant's fucking platform, homeboy. He tries to act like he's one of the homies he messes with an informant's platform, and that's why I stopped fucking with him. So if you fuck with him, Tony, get your money, homie. If not, I fuck with him, get your money, homie. The reason I don't fuck with Marvelous is because he fucked with an informant's platform, and I said, you know what, Marvelous? I'm good, homeboy. You, you, you get your money, I'm good. He tries to act like he's a South Star, he tries to act like he's a homie. He fucks with informant's platforms, and that's when I said, you know what, brother? I'm good, because if that was the case, I can't pull up with the homies that I pulled up with. Because you know what? We've been out here for years doing what we do. We ain't out here. I, I ain't out here no banging shit. But if I fuck with the people that Marvelous fucked with, I wouldn't be able to pull up with the homies that I did, homie. And that's a fact. And that's all I got to say, Tony. Have a good one. <laughs> Gil, you still on? Quite uh, uh, Quite a go. Fuck. Like, you know what? Gil, that's why I shouldn't have called, bro. Because I, I at least wanted to ask you something, bro. Like... Like wh who is no, he? No, we, we, he don't got to throw his business on blast. I know, okay. but you know if that's how he feels, that's how he feels, and, and, and you know, Fuck, bro, he, you know he, what? And, and but it, that's something that's now we're publicly in the mix with it. Yes, I get it, bro. You know what I'm saying? But like, 
that's that that's something that they have to hash out. But if if Gil made a state, if if he believes that, if he if he has his shit, I know he I know. has his paperwork. See, but but you know, sabes que carnal, I'm stuck in the middle because yeah, 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 yeah. I got love for both of them. Bro. Of course, of course. You know, so I didn't know anything anything about this shit. So. Well, yeah, well, that's what Gil, well, that Gil just put on blast. That's that's his 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 okay. his version of it, whether it's true or not. You know what I'm saying? You got to take it as his word if you if you fuck with him or not. Okay, here we go. Go, lift it up. Let's go. What's not going on, bro? Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Can you hear me, bro? Yes, sir. Okay. Once again, this is marvelous. And this Feeling. is the last oh, time. Oh, we're going back and forth. Yeah. yeah. Hey, let, it, let, let him hash it out like that. That's the only way to do it. That's the only way to do it. Hey, look at this. Is, this is a thing, bro. I'm, it, it, man, this is sad that it ended up being like this. I wish I, we, I could have seen him in person. But it's cool. Look, at, bro, the thing is, is if he wants to say I mess with an informant or I went on an informant's channel or whatever, I go on people's platforms and channels, bro, to bring education to the Rasa. Point blank. Everybody knows that. I don't mess with no child molesters and all that. And if he wants to say that I went on a, on a, a person that dropped out or whatever, that's fine. Whatever. I, I I deal with people that conduct themselves as men respectfully. And and if that guy doesn't want a part of the life no more, you know, there's no there's no um rat or paperwork on this dude like that. He just left left the organization and he's doing the family thing. I respect that. And Gil, as being a family man, should understand that. No, so if anybody wants to call anybody an informant, I'm not out here holding little kids and calling the cops on them because they're writing on walls. So, I mean, if he's going to call anybody an informant, I mean, you got to look at yourself, bro. You don't call the cops, homie. I don't call the cops. So, I mean, he should really take that informant thing out of his mouth. You know, that's not that's not cool. And he should have been willing to address it in person. You know what I mean? And Gil, if you're listening, address it in person, homeboy. You have my number, dog. You don't need to show up with 50, 50 people. If you want to talk like a grown man, you you know I'm with it. So hey. there's no need to go back and forth. I'm not trying to, I didn't try to get you. Yeah. I'm not, I don't mean to get you in the middle, Tony, or, or yeah. the other homie right there. Like, right. you know what I mean? It's just, we're, we're grown. You're either going to be a grown man about things. And, and I don't know why he's acting so active right now. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> right, right. we're supposed to be grown men. And especially on on uh, on social media, I mean, come on, everybody's listening, everybody's watching this, and that's not how we conduct ourselves as Harasa, point blank, period. You know? Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey let's let, let's cut it and let's uh, let us talk about it, dog. Because okay. right now they're yeah. going back and forth. This ain't I, I this ain't yeah. some real G shit. This ain't nothing. Right. You, you know, right. You, you know, right. But, right. but you know, but let me say this because marvelous right. didn't hang up on me. I'm gonna say this. <laughs> bro, bro, bro. You know, so, so carnal, You know what I. I publicly said this that I have love for you and I have love for him. So this right. kind of puts me in a bad spot because yeah. because I told Gil, you know, if if he were to call me tomorrow and tell me like you know what, let's go over here, I would go with him. If you call me tomorrow and say, Tony, let's go over here, let's, I would go with you. You know, so <clears> it's just that I just wish we could have sat down and things right. would have been a little bit different. But you know what? Yeah, it didn't happen that way. So. <laughs> we'll leave it that way. Sabes que, carnal, you know You what? never know. You never know, but, you know. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. So, Marvelous, sabes que, thank you, bro. I just needed you to call back because uh, I, I gave him two calls. I'm giving you two calls, and we'll end it here. So, yeah, all right. So, sabes que, carnal, have a blessed night, you know, and anything you want to say, Big Dog? No, no, no. Yeah, it's cool. No, it, they they both had their say. Yeah, that's it. And we'll, I, I want to talk to you after Absolutely. we hang up. All right, carnal. Sabes que, Marvelous, I'll call you tomorrow, bro. All right, homie. All right, bro. Bless night. Okay, let's keep it going. All right, Tony. So, like, that's a sad thing right now. What, 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 what we just went through, what we just witnessed, while we're over here talking about uplifting the Rasa yeah. and then how, you know, I'm, I'm giving credit to Gil all day. He, yeah. he made a lot of noise on behalf yeah. of us, and I have his back to the fullest. Bro, bro. and I agree with you 100. Right. I but, agree with but you. But the stupid shit like this is that, is that, in the midst of all that shit, when we should all be united, here we are, two vatos arguing on the phone. You know what I'm saying? To each other. Two brown skin motherfuckers, whatever you want to say, Honduran, Mexicano. Like, at the end of the day, somos iguales, way. And yeah. for them to be going back and forth like that, it's not a good look for us. In the midst, in the, in, in, in the time where we should be the most united, you got two guys with high platforms fighting over some. Technicalities and but shit. I, I get it, like the Chicano shit, and Gil's know, on bro. his tip with the, the with the gangster shit. And I yeah. get it. If you want that gangster tip, you want that gangster tip. The streets are rough, bro. You can't fuck with informants. I don't know who's true, who's saying the truth or not. At right. the end of the day, at the end of the day, though, the sad thing is, is that we should be united. 
We should all be on the same page in general, dog. Yes. We don't all have the same morals. We don't all have the same ideas to a T. But in general, when, when we're fighting against the system, when we're fighting against mainstream, right. when we're fighting against motherfuckers trying to voice us out, you know, Gil did a good thing for us, dog. People yeah. should get behind him and fuck all the technicalities. And, bro, dog. you know what? I agree with you, bro. And here we are fighting. Two vatos fighting on the motherfucking internet, dog. Bro, bro, bro here's my thing. It okay? sucks, though. It sucks because we should be united. It, it su- I'm going to tell you why it sucks. But you carna- put the good effort in, though. Yeah. You, you did the right thing. Yeah, but, you but, gave them both a, a, a chance to of course. speak. Here's the thing that sucks with me. It's because I got love for both of those guys, right, bro. Right, right, for right, Gil right. and Marvelous. And it hurts me. Right, right, right. Okay? Porque both of those guys not only have a huge following, they got a fucking voice, bro. That's what I'm saying. We're, we're you know stronger what? together I, than I know, I know. separated. But but I can answer for Marvel. I can answer for Gil. And I just hope... Hey, you, you, know. you did your thing, though. You gave them both an opportunity to yeah. speak on shit. Because so that's the best we yeah, can do yeah. in this particular platform. Absolutely. So if Gil, if you listen to Marvel, you know, you're listening, I'm for both of you, bro. I, I know it's going to be hard for you to accept that, but... That's just the way it is, bro. I, I I got love for both of you. Call me tomorrow, I'm there. Marvelous, call me tomorrow, I'm there. So we'll leave it at that. So I got one more phone call I got, I got to make because my boy Joe Castro wants me to call him. A ver. All right. Big Joe? No. Uh, Big Joe. I don't know, maybe. Yeah, Big Joe, the, the actor? Yes, that's him. Yeah, that's the homie, dog. Come on now. Okay. Oh, uh, man, it just... It just it just hurts me, bro. We, hey, you did the right thing, though, bro. You gave them both a voice. Howdy. Joe, como estas? Hey, not too bad. How you doing, Carnal? How you doing? Oh, man, we're good, bro. We're good. Me and Hypnotic right here, <laughs> just enjoying the pisto right here, bro. That's <laughs> uh, Hey, do it, Hypnotic, do it. What up, Big Joe? That's the motherfucking homie right there that fool had mad love for me since I met him at the Lake Elsnore show I did. Let, I just tell you, I've been working for the last fucking five years, bro. And people that follow me, they know I've been on my grind, bro. Independent, no record label, nobody. I do it all myself, dog. I got support from real homies, familia, from fans, from real motherfuckers, dog. And Joe's one of those homies, dog. Joe's one of those guys that got a mean ass brocha. Oh, OG, dog, yeah, to the fullest. Hell yeah. Uh, they said I got a tarantula on my face. Huh? <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, that's a hey, Mexican I, alien. I just want to say, dog, I was over there at the No Jumper interview with uh, with Gil and Bozo. Peterman. You know, and uh, I went out there. I didn't know it was going to be a bunch of gente there. I thought it was just like three or four of us were going. So I was just going like for support. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. And uh, like a lot of us being there, that was Peterman, dog. That just showed support. Nobody was on a gang banging thing. Nah, I, I, yeah. dog. Right, right. Yeah, you know, A A D and uh and Duno, there were Feedman and everybody working there, they were all like welcoming to everybody and, and it wound up being like a lot of love there, you know, and uh but the thing is, man, it's just I'm old, dog. I'm an older Vato and you guys know me, I do the movie stuff and I do the promotions, but it's just how everybody's coming at it like, oh, that Vato's Salvadorian, that Vato's Guatemala, and that Vato can't rep. You know what I mean? Yeah, like he's dumb the one, shit, dumb he's, shit. Yeah, he's the one planting the flag homes right now. Now, if anybody, any Chicano out there or Chicano wants to go out there and plant the flag, do it. By all you means, I mean? but do it. Be, yeah. Think about it, don't talk about it. But this is like that 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 thing, like the Marines, like the Iwo Jima, where they're all holding the flag up and they're all working together to keep the flag off the ground. That's what we should be doing. We should be supporting these vatos. We should be out there holding the flag up and and, and pushing our agenda forward. Hey. Yeah, you know I mean? hey. but yeah. no. Yeah. As much as much as that flag needs to be, there's the other people on the other side trying to pull the freaking flag down right. and trying to haters. And it were and it's not even it's not even the blacks, the whites, the Asians that are trying it's to. Pull our the flag. Own, it's our it's own. It's our own people. It's, bro. Our, it's our own people, homes. And that's that's what's disgusting to me, homes, because I'm just like. <laughs> Uh, you know what I mean? We're all about positivity and unity and trying to push you know, that to people and trying to push the youngsters not to gang bang and lose their life on the street corner and, and, and not to be hooked up on drugs. And, you know, we're trying to do our best there, but also trying to get our name, trying to get our, our people into the movie industry and right. trying to get big able to notice our people and trying to push forward, you know, because we're tired of being at the bottom of the barrel. It's you true. know what I mean? Very true. We dog. need to fight to the top, but we got we to gotta push each other to the top, folks. And, and every time somebody tries to do it, it's like, 
oh man, that bato wears a size nine shoe. You gotta wear a size K-way? eleven to get us there. You know what I mean? Oh, that bato doesn't have good complexion, or that bato doesn't have. <laughs> It's always hey, dumb, he's, he's too mean? dark. <laughs> he's yeah, too white. Hey, the hey, truth what, is the truth is the truth, dog. Like fucking, who the yeah, fuck? Hey, who the, hey, hey, who else is speaking up? All these motherfuckers no. hating on Gil. Who else is speaking up, dog? Where's King no, Lil G? King. Where's Snow the Product? Where's Lil Rob? Where those are rappers? You know what I'm saying? Like, where's George Lopez? They, Lopez they has done some shit in the past. American Cholo, he's the motherfucker making the most noise right now. I don't give a fuck if he's Honduran, dog. If he yeah. he's speaking for us, bro. No, pero Get behind que, that shit. Look, whether he's Honduran or not, bro. It don't matter. Look, hold on, yeah. hold on, hold on. Whether he's Honduran or not, he's married to a Mexicana. Right, bro. He got Mexican kids, bro. He grew up bro, Chicano. Yeah, exactly. how can we say, bro? Look, look at technicalities, not, bro. Mira, carnal, mira, carnal. Right. I'm not coming against our own people. Exactly, I'm not. But to me, I don't see him any different from me. No, not at all, bro. You, you, you know what I'm saying? Not at all, bro. I don't see marvelous any different from me. I don't like. There's a lot, bro. If you're from, you know, Ecuador. If you're from Honduras. If you're from Guatemala. If you're from, you know. I'm, I'm, I might have forgotten some countries, you right, know? right, right, right. But Venezuela, Venezuela, but, yeah. El Salvador, El Salvador, anywhere, all the Central American companies, dog, uh, companies, countries. So, so, some people might might get mad at my technicalities, right? We're all raza, bro, right? Yeah, let's hey, move forward. You know Somos gente indígena, look, 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 indígena. Look, look. Mira, 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 Joe, hey. Joe, let me say one thing before I make you. Uh, I, I allow you to make your point. Mira, Allow me, alright? Whoa, no, no, no. <laughs> Tony A. Come, come up the way. I'm just playing. No, no. Uh, well, well, yeah, you know, well, I say allow because this is my podcast. So, yeah, yeah. Joe, Joe, with all due respect. But, yeah, but, say, it, yeah, say it, youngster. Say it, youngster. Yes, youngster. Hey, hey. Simon, Simon. Is he so older than you? No, he is. I, I think oh, so. Oh, shit. Know. I don't Joe, know. I didn't know that, yeah, for real. Joe, Joe, Joe. Hey, OG, triple OG right yeah, here, see, dog. I'm, I'm already forgetting my fucking point. But, I mean, now. My whole thing is just like one thing about Gil that I can appreciate about Gil is that he's speaking up for us, man. Yes, and, bro. And, and you know what, man? I, I know, I know. Like Marvelous said, and other people have said, and I'm not trying to downplay anybody. People have done this for years, but we're talking about now. Yes, right now, Gil is doing that, bro. He's the man right now. Get you know, behind so, so him. Here's my dog. thing. Look, whether he's the man, whether he's the podcast or not, he's the voice. Let's yes, just say that. He is what it is what it is, bro. Okay. Get behind it. Okay. Yep. Yep. Here's my I thing, agree. Joe, and I think you'll understand this. Okay? And I'm gonna tell you this, Carnal. Simon. John the Baptist in the Bible was baptizing people. The Pharisees, meaning the priests, came to him and told him, Who are you? Are you one of the prophets? Are you the Messiah? Are you Elijah? Are you Jeremiah? Who are you? Right. And here's what he said: I'm just the voice. And Gil is the motherfucking voice. He's bro. just the voice. It don't matter. It don't matter what the technicality is, yeah. dog. Get over all that dumb shit, bro. He's just the voice. Get behind it, bro. And, and I'm behind. That's why I told Marvelous. That's why I told Gil. Gil, if you call me tomorrow and you say, "Tell him let's be here tomorrow," I'm there, bro. I just hate to be in the, in the yeah, middle. Yeah, I get it. It's get an it. ugly feeling, bro. But, but you know. Yeah. That's yeah. what happens though, fool. When you're the top guy, Gil's the top guy right now. Everybody's talking about Gil. Everybody's talking about American Cholo. I know this motherfucker's hating on it. I know this motherfucker's trying to shine away from the topic. They act all machismo, like, oh, you know, we, we ain't even offended by that Tiger video. Or, you know, we'll, we'll yeah. get on some gangster shit and, and fade Norbert. up with somebody, you know, Norbert. do some bullshit. But yeah. hey, you know Gil, Gil's the I, voice, bro. And at the end of the yeah. day, he's the one that's leading it. It don't matter if he's fucking Mexicano or not. And like I said, Eden Amorado, activist, speaking up for the street vendors. He's not even Mexicano, but he's out there speaking up on behalf of all of us, bro. The two biggest motherfucking fools that inspire me today are American Cholo and Eden Amorado. And they're not even Mexicano, but they're out there speaking up for us, bro. And I don't give a fuck if they're Venezuelan, Honduran, El Salvadorian, whatever the fuck it is, dog. They're speaking on behalf of us because a lot of our motherfucking hint are too bitch made and too pussies to speak up. And that's the fucking facts, bro. It is what it is, bro. And the Mexicanos are, are spineless that are in the top motherfucking tier, bro. They don't got no they don't want to speak up. It's too controversial. You know what I'm saying? And the third person that inspired him was Rodin Radio. <laughs> 
There you go, Rodeo Radio. Right hey, there. hey, don't, don't forget, dog. Me. I dropped Proud People three years ago, dog. I was on here three years ago. Nah, with me. You, dog. Nah, Absolutely. me. Hey, hey, salute, listen, dog. I, I wanna, we I were all this shit before now. anybody, dog. Something. Okay, listen, you couple of drunks. Uh, <laughs> hey, but I want to <laughs> say, I want to say, look at, I had homeboys, dog. I grew up in the eighties and nineties out there, right? It was Simon. like super active, right? I had homeboys that, that were gabachos. But man, they're fucking hearts with Chicano 150%. Huh? Me close. You know I mean? me, me, me close. Yeah, yeah, they were like, they homes, but they, but their heart was Chicano. Huh? They were out there. They, they, they would have died for, for a right. Chicano out there. The guy is. And so to me, it's like, right, when they talk about, oh, you have to be, um, you have to be Mexican right, to be right, Chicano. Right. You know what I mean? Chicano is it, it's a word, but it's also a feeling. Homes. It's you gotta a lifestyle. Feel that it's it's a, it, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's how you grew up. You're black and you with Mexicans or right. you're white or Asian, whatever it is, but you feel that love for for the raza. They you love how we come together as a community, how we have that tribalism in our, in our blood, right. and you want to be a part of that, and you are part of it. I mean, how many bottles out there have died on the streets that were gavachos and black right. that died for for, hey, for that flag? You know? There's always so, exceptions, me, always exceptions yeah, in there's anything. Always exceptions, yes. always. and you know what? And Gil's out there and he's doing it. And Bozo's out there doing it. And they're putting their, their necks on the line. Oh, yeah. And yeah, Bozo's a I Salvadorian también. He's not even Rasa, but he's yeah. out there speaking. Yeah. Same thing, bro. No, same no, no. thing. Hold on. Yeah. Hold on. Let me say something about Bozo. He's Mexican. And a Salvadorian. And Salvadorian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That we yeah, respect yeah. But, but what I'm saying is, what I'm saying, you don't have to be purebred yes, of anything, bro. homes. If you want to, if you want to grab that flag and help us hold it up, yes. everybody's welcome to help us hold it up. Exactly. Because I know a lot of Rasta was holding up the BLM flag. Homes. Yeah, yeah. They were exactly. out there yes. protesting and marching, and Fuck and they yeah. were doing that homes, because they felt it in their heart to do Some it. Mom. And, and so if anybody wants to help us with this, I mean, grab the flag and help us keep it up. You know what I mean? And and let's just do it. Homes. And I'm like, he'll call in right now. I think he was just frustrated, home because he's going through a lot bro, right now. Exactly, he's like, dog. He's, but, this is his yeah, toughest time of his life right now, bro. He's going to be yeah. a little hyped up. He's going to be on edge, bro. Yeah. It's understandable, yeah. bro. He has motherfuckers coming at him left and right on yeah. over some yeah. stupid shit like that. I get it, bro. I get it. So, okay. You know what, Joe? I'm going to say this, and I hope Gil's listening. Gil, uh, look, for two years, I put up with his fucking, his fucking nasty ass fat bitch. Uh, Falsely accuse me of shit, okay? Right, 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 right. I know what it is to go through shit. Right, Pero right. sabes que, carnal, if you need me to be there with you, I will be there with you. And at the same time, Marvelous, if you call me, I'm there for you. Bro, I, I'm not going to cut anybody off. I'm not. Gil's my yeah. homie. If sabes que, Marvelous is my homie. Like, right, so, right, right, right. So my thing is this. If they need me, this is for the culture. Yeah. So I'm going to do it. Joe, if you need me, I'm there for the culture. So that's all I'm going to say, bro. Yeah, you know how I feel about you too, Tony. I'm I'm here for you. Hypnotic knows how I feel. Right. I'm, you know, I'm Scar, Marvelous, uh, you know, um, Javier, everybody homes. I'm here for everybody homes. Yeah, you know, all I ask in return is that if I help you, you help the next guy. Absolutely. That's all. See, man, That's all I have. Hey, Joe's the homie dog. That that motherfucker's known me for the last three years. He's always had faith in me, so I respect him because he's always seen me as someone that can blow up. And I'm on that journey right now, dog. And um, I, I don't have no anim animosity for anybody that blows up before me. All I know is that hey, I've been on the raza shit. If you want to hop on it now, cool. If I inspired that to a T, that's my job, bro. I don't need to be the first one to blow up, bro. But I've been pushing this Rasa shit since the fucking first day I started rapping, dog. You know what I'm saying? So if motherfuckers want to hop on it later than never, it is what it is. But, Joe, you know me. When you see me perform at Lake Elsinore, I've been putting on for my Rasa five, seven years ago, bro. Tell them, dog. Like, it is what it is, bro. Like, All good, Kanan. Perform performing at events that I ask you to come out and you show love on and you know what? Just like hypnotic, like what he says in that song, I'm gonna sum it up. Butcher, you're you're, you're saying host, but if nobody's willing to help out, he'll put the rust on his shoulders and carry him. Exactly. You know what I mean? exactly. All, good, exactly. All right, Joe, I gotta let you go. We gotta, All right, we gotta take a right, hey, God bless you guys, man. Yes, I appreciate yes. you guys. Keep at it, and um, you know, what, man, hey, bro. no five hundred two. That's it. Take okay. the Uber. <laughs> All right. No five hundred two. Let's man. go. Okay, now we're taking callers. We got about, about two more calls. Let's go. Oh shit. We got about two more calls. Andale. Let's, pushing. Andale. Let's see. All right. Caller, where are you calling from and what's your name? Hey, what's up, man? They, uh, they're calling me Lito from San Rady, but I'm calling you from the city of Australia. From where? All right. All right. All right. All right. Hold on. Let me, turn, let me turn on the volume. All right. Yeah. All right. Look, so uh, 
Call me, they call me Miguelito from San Valley, man, but I'm out here. I'm out here in Visalia. All right, man. So, look, I'm going to tell you guys what, what it, everything seems like from the outside looking in, being from Central California. Well, being at Central California. I'm not from here. Yeah. I'm from San Valley, all right? 805? So, look. This, no, no, no. 559. Orale. Visalia. Central Orale. California. Tulare County. Orale, orale. Right? All right, look. All right, look. I'm going to tell you guys this from the outside looking in because no one has been speaking up on this. From the outside looking in, right. it's been... I guess it's been getting very political, right? But let me tell you, like I said, from the outside looking in, there's people that were living now on these, and some of these are the Asians, man, because the Asians, talking about like the tiny rascals, the Oriental troops, the Asian boys, mm -hmm. they've been using the nigga word a long time. They have not been getting pressure. It. They're not black, man. All right, another one. No more singers up here? No more singers up here, man? They, when they bang on you, they don't bang on you like in down south. When I go back to my neighborhood, they don't say, hey, what's up? What's up, nigga? Where you from? Nah, bro, they don't be sagging their pants, wearing right. Mongolian. Right. And I, yeah, bro. So, so like, the, those are the thing is, they're not going to be feeling like, uh, hey, the blacks are saying that you guys can be, the Rasa, how you guys saying unity, Rasa? Hey, we can't be saying the N-word no more. Can't. Hey, these people are going to, bro, the Norteños and the Crips and the Bloods have been rocking with them. For years, right? If they're, they're not, if they're gonna try to, if they're gonna try to make, because this is all going on. This N word is for the youngsters. How you guys saying we gotta bring up the youngsters, right? Because we don't want to bring having little s's walking around. Hey, what's up, man? what's up, nigga? Where you right, from? Right, right, hey, right, right. Okay, like, right. okay. Sudan, Sudan, you're like, bro, bro. How we're going back to like we're forgetting our culture, and it's and it's great that uh, Marvelous and American Cholo want to come in and, and and give a history lesson on the word Chicano. Right, uh, and you know what? I feel like that's, that's something that they should conduct as men within themselves, and right, right. and people will speak for yourself. But that's not something we should get involved. In. That's people with them should get involved, and and we respect them to at least, um, you know, bringing up the subject, man, because they, these both of these people have done have done a lot for the community. Right. And when we get together, there's power in numbers, and we see that. But what I'm speaking of is that, as an outside looking in, like I said, that N word, bro, the Norteños are not gonna stop using it. They're not going to stop using it. Hey. They're going to continue yeah. using it. Yeah. And hey, 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 let me just say this. And, uh, certain sections, dog, Texas, okay. certain sections, Texas, we love SPM, even though for the music, for the music, you know what I mean? I'm not going to speak on his whole fucking pedophile shit but spm musically and texas in texas uh we gave them a pass and in a way when i say we gave them a pass they grew up around blacks they always say that a lot of rasa out there in texas says hey we grew up around blacks we say the word we say the n-word and norteños the same shit they say the n-word you know what i'm saying and we understand that in certain sections that they're not gonna ever stop saying that, bro, because it's just in, in, embedded in their in their DNA and their cultura. That's how they grew up, and it, yeah. it, it is what it is. Hey. Southern California and Northern California, the raza is different. At the end of the day, somos iguales. We're the same. We're the same, but the style is different. You know what I'm saying? But but at the end of the day, I agree. It depends on where you're from. You know what I mean? If, if the blacks are cool up north with you saying that, then by all means, homie, that's that's the culture you grew up in, then it's cool. But like in a global mainstream, quien sabe, way, a lot of blacks might be offended by us saying that. Because now, like I, like I told Tony A, if you look at my comment section on my youth, my last YouTube uh, video, I got all these blacks telling me like, hey, whoa. You're over here talking about Tiger's video, but why don't you tell all your black, or your Mexicanos to stop saying the N word? You know what I'm saying? Now they're coming no. out. Yeah. Now they're coming that, out full yeah. force. But no, no, hold on, hold on. Let me, they're just not talking yeah, about yeah. LA. Hold on. They're, they're just not talking about LA Raza. Yeah, exactly. They're talking about Raza globally. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay, so yeah. consider that before you answer that. Because they're saying this before you criticize us about this Tiger, Tiger video, check your own people. Mm -hmm. About using the N word, so they're talking about globally. Why? Because they take it offensive, bro. Yeah, but like you, like Tony's you know what? Tony, Tony, yeah, Tony. I agree. I agree. I agree with what Tony said right now. But let's let's talk about it in a deeper sense. Well, if I was to go into county, if I was to go into prison, and they would tell me, "Hey, what's up? Where you from?" and I tell them, "I'm from some valley, nigga." Dude, you know how much bad reputation that's gonna get for my neighborhood? Right. You know how many people are gonna look at me like fool. This fool, right now, like, 
hey man, like you guys said, you might get a pastor out there in the street out there with the black homies and shit, and it's right. all cool. But man, when they get deeper into that shit, you got to change your vocabulary, right, right. man. Absolutely. Like you, right, right. you got to. Be- mira, mira, carnal, you know what I'm saying? Mira, carnal, let me say this. I, in the 80s, because I'm, I'm 54 years old, in the 80s, I had a lot of homies. And when I say homies, Chicanos. Right. That were bloods. Right. I had a little bit of Raza that had jury curls. Simon. Okay. When they went to the pen, do you, do you think they used the N-word? Hmm. No. So here's what I say. If you can't use it in there, don't use it out here. Go ahead, bro. Yeah, and that's what I'm getting at about, about what I'm saying about the outside looking in. These Norteños in prison and all these other guys in county, they're not going to stop, bro. Right, they're right, not going right, to stop right, sagging right. with the niggas backwards. You know, everybody knows that niggas backwards. They, 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 that's something that comes with the gang culture, you know? Like, that's something that they're not going to stop. You know, a lot of these people from L.A., they don't know what side of the rag the Crips roll with. They don't know if it's on the, the rag is on the left side. They don't know if it's on the left side or the right side. And, and another thing, our vocabulary, a lot of us, I don't want to put people on blast, man. But, cause, you put know, I have on respect blast. for them, bro. But a lot of, all right, man, I'm, look, hood socks, man. Look, you have respect for him, man, but he always says what's cracking. Mr. D, when he came out, too, I put him on blast on live. I told him, bro, you guys got to stop saying what's cracking. Only Crips say that. You guys can't. If you guys think that's about that culture and shit, about that gang culture, you guys should know better, bro. You guys cannot be saying what's cracking all the time because when someone else, a black person hears it, you don't know if he's a blood, bro. Right. You say what's cracking, you come up to a, 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 a crip, a blood, and you go, hey, what's cracking, dog? Where is it? Hey, what's cracking, dog? They're going to say that shit like you banging on them. They're going to not homie, we're trying to respect. They're saludos. But it, and, and actually, and the way they see it is disrespect because we're calling up, hey, what's cracking? That's like going up to another thing and saying, hey, what's so busted? You're right. You know, right, it's right. like, wait, hold up. I get your point. I get your point. I get your point. You know what this means to me? That we have That's- to be very careful. <laughs> no, it's true. Depending yeah. on who you're talking yeah, to. Yeah, we have to be very careful what we say, bro. At the, end of, at the end of the day, you're right, Very though. At the, at the end of the day, you're right, though. Certain sections, like a Texas or Northern California, yeah, they're they're not going to probably ever get away from that. But at the end of the day, homie, I'm going to keep it real with you. A lot of Southern California Mexicanos youngsters, they're, they're starting to use that word, bro. It, 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 More it, it, bro, than uh, ever. In you know L.A. Word? and San Diego, hey, you know they use that word, word, bro. You know, what's that? Tell us, tell us. Look, this is... Before, before I get off on this, we're on a good subject right now. And I know the black people got to hear it. I know I'm Tiger's hearing this shit, too. And all these other people. Another word that a lot of pe- people from Cali have been saying is the word y'all. That word only comes from the white man in Texas, which derived later on because of slavery to the blacks. Now the blacks adopt it. Everybody, it's okay. Or I guess it's okay if you're from Texas. Like you're saying, bro, hypnotic, you're talking about how... You know, the, you know, they say nigga, and they also certain say sections, y'all. Certain sections are heard, used to I, certain languages. Yes. Yeah. yeah, so when we hear that, when, like, Sudanians hear that, Southerners hear that, you know, the people that mostly say y'all are the people from upstate, are Norteños, or people from Texas. And I feel like that should be a Texas thing, and we should respect that. Hey, that's Texas. But we're okay. Cali, bro. We're hey, not Texas. Hey, at, at the end of the day, fool... I'm going to keep it real with you, dog. I'm not a gang member, never been a gang member. I happen to be born in Oceanside, San Diego area, dog. So automatically, because I do music, I might be labeled as a Sureño rapper. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not going to lie. I, I grew up wearing blue. It is what it is, dog. That's the environment. I listen to Little Rob, Mr. Shadow. So, you know, I got the I got that stilo, dog. You know what I'm saying? But, but at the end of the I'm day, dog, who- like... At the end of the day, Chicano to me, dog, is is just embracing your cultura, bro. Like, and 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 that's just keeping it Mexi- more Mexicano. That a Chicano to me is stems from a Mexican. You know what I'm saying? Like, we have our own lingo, dog. Chicanos out here that grew up, we have our own ese vato, cubole homes, loco, we, loco, all that shit. We don't need to use other cultures' words, bro. Be, but the thing is that there's no representation in the mainstream for us, bro. There's not enough fools that are big up there in the rap game. Hip hop, 
took over all of us, bro, because we we love our Tupacs. We love, and, and let's keep it real. Hip hop is ran by the black community, dog. All our favorite rappers are black in a sense. You know what I'm saying? So when and they say you know when they and say and the N word, it's just gonna it it, it it just trickles down on our community, dog. But at the end of the day, there's not enough representation of us, like 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 being big and mainstream where yeah. it affects the whole globe. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But you, but I think we're starting to get there, dog. You know, but it's just not hip hop. I want to say this. We talk. We could talk about Mary Wells, Brentwood, right. Al Green, the Delphonics. All the all these we, you, lo- you we know, love. All that shit. We yeah, love bro. All that shit, bro. You know. We, you know. Look. Let's be honest. Whether you want to admit it or not, we love the black. We culture. love black music, dog. We no, love the culture. Let, let, let's just be honest with each yes, other. Yes, we do. You know, if we if we're honest with each other, we can move forward. Yes. You yes. know. So that's my thing. So my thing is this: when a rat, uh, you know, Chicano. Uses the word, you know, the N-I-G-G-A word. Yes, yes. Bro, I don't approve of it. Right. But now here's my thing. And I can say this because I was there. Okay. In 1988, N.W.A., what was the group called? Niggas for Life. With Attitude. Oh, Niggas with Attitude. Okay. Now, I'm referring to, I'm referring, hold on. (laughs) Hold on, you can look it up. I'm referring What's to up, Bunny, their second might album. Get, All right, I'm might referring to context again, man. Hold on, <laughs> you're not gonna. I'm referring to the hey, second they're gonna, album. They're gonna use yeah. that on you, dog. You I just know. said the oh, N word. I know. You should have said that. Be careful, dog. bro. Yeah. Be careful, Bunny. Hey, Adam. Oh, Adam, I know. Okay. Adam, I know. <laughs> Adam, Adam, twenty. You know, Adam, no jumper. He's gonna <laughs> jump to conclusions. Ese bueno. Yeah. So, niggas they're gonna crucify you. Okay, hold on. But the second album is called Niggas for Life. Their group was called Niggas with Attitudes. Right. I'm not gonna say. You know, in with attitudes. Right. I'm not going to say, you know, in for life. I'm not going to say that, bro. I'm going to say what I felt comfortable saying that. But I didn't mean it in a disrespectful way. So all I'm saying is, you know, you know, let's respect our culture and let's respect ours. That's all I'm saying. All right. All right. All right, let me let me end it on this because we've been on this for a little bit. Look, okay. all right, another word that we've been saying too, just just for you know the youngsters and for the older people too, because we all be using it, but we gotta know as Chicano, we gotta know we can't be using this vocabulary. The yeah. tapaisa, they've been using that word. They've been using that word, tapachica, tapachica, and like a whole, everybody that's knows. A new thing. That's yeah, a new thing. Yeah, that's a new thing. That's like a meme, and you know they they kind of have like. You know, they kind of have like, they look tight skinny jeans. They have the Edgar haircut. They're flashing jewelry. You know, like, like they're trying to, like, the bikes are trying to get into the gang culture, but they don't really know what it's really about. But they don't, they're still between being hood and bikes at the same time. Right. So, look, when they, I've been noticing that when they say, watch you cut, they're, they're also banging, too, because it's the only crips they cut. You know? Yeah. And a lot of, like, the crypts, they say, like, the OT crypts, too. Like, bro, every fucking vocabulary. The Asians, they say, cut in the end. What's up, cut, 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 all the time. I, but, see, right. a lot of Chicanos don't know that. You're right. They don't know that that shit means crypt. You're right. right, right. You're right. You gotta stop using that shit. There's more to it. There, yeah, when you and start, because he, he can use yeah. it in the wrong, if he comes yeah. to take a trip out here in Cali, that could be consequential, dog. That's just now, the now, facts, bro. Now let me yeah. say one thing. Let me say one thing, bro. Before I let you go, okay? Um, right here, Wilmington. I go grew ahead, up. I grew up in the S neighborhood, that was slash blood neighborhood, okay? But I also hung out in Long Beach on Twenty First and Elm, where it was nothing but insane Crips. So I grew up with Bloods and Crips. I grew up with the East and West. Right. So I have always kept it like one hundred with everybody, okay? Mm-hmm. But I've never used the N-word because I knew by saying that word, I would be disrespecting my homie. Today, people, a lot of people use the like N-word. Like Eminem. Yeah, like they use it friendly. Like, it's nothing. They use it too loosely, dog. Yeah, There's, that's what it is. They might not know the history. The younger, because a lot, let's keep it real. A lot of the young Mexicanos are the ones using it. Yeah, they might. It is. We it grew is. up and we knew what that yeah. word meant. And we know how offensive yeah. it is. And to if the we didn't bring the stuff. Exactly, and if we and if we would have never brought this up, and with the ones that are listening, they would have got checked, and that's yeah. part of helping our youth. Yeah, that's part of our yeah. educating them. Yay! Hey, listen to us. You can't be saying these things around older men. Yeah, because there's consequences. Yeah, man. you're so gonna get, before you, you do get it. Not, you get knocked out if you say it around the wrong black yeah. dude. Yeah, hey, you can't say you're that word, homie. You're gonna get fucking knocked the fuck out, bro. 
Yeah. It's, hey, it, it, hey, not only you might get it, us together at first. Hey, not only does it look bad on us because we're Rasa and we're saying that, but at the same time, it's gonna offend a black man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You you got to look at it both ways, bro. All good, Kadan. Listen, you have a blessed night. And without a mouth. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Feed yes, me, sir. homie. We out of here. Buenas noches. Buenas noches. Andale, andale, andale. Okay. Buenas no chest. Okay. No so, chest. No swells. Buenas no chest. No chest. Like no yeah. swells. Like no tetas. Okay. Okay. Here's what I'm gonna say. Fuck. I'm over here drop my crystal ball, bro. I'm, I'm gonna read you your future right now. What's my future, dog? Dime. This is the second time that I read your future. Tell me, dog. It's upside down. It doesn't look good. <laughs> oh, what the fuck? Damn, homie, like that? Hold on, hold on. Let me rescramble that shit. Yeah, yeah, tell me what the fuck it is. Oh, yeah, that shit looks good. Firme, firme. Hey, but by this time next year, you'll be a millionaire. Tell me it looks firme, dog. It looks firme. Honestly. <laughs> hey, your the boys are all, you over they're there, all high over there, dog. <laughs> Those edible cookies and shit. No yeah, no chip. No chess. Okay, you know what? You know what? Out of all this, you know what I got. Uh, look, look, bro. I'm not gonna spend too much time, too much time on this marvelous and um, American cholo. I got love for both of you guys, bro. And after this, if you guys choose not to talk to me because you know I don't want to choose sides. I understand, bro. Right. I right, understand, right. but I need you to understand that this is where it all started. Right. So, so if they call me and I'm, you know. Tony, I need you to be there. I'm cool. Hey, mom. I know Cholo. This is my first time talking to yeah. Marvelous. So, you know what I mean? I'm going to ride with my boy Cholo. But at the end of the day, he has his reasons. That's that's something they got to hash out. Yeah, I know. And if he don't want to talk to him, then I understand him, dog. He's on some gangster shit where the street code, it is what it is, bro. Like, if, if that's how the street code is. Yeah. I can't speak on that, bro, because I'm not a, a gang member. You know what I'm saying? I never claimed to be one. I'm just a hente out here speaking for, for our right. hente. Know. But, know. you know, people have their reasons for feeling how they feel. But, you know, that's like you're in a tough position because you, you're you cool with both of them, dog. I love both of those guys. That's right, bro, right. So that's all I'm going to say. But I'm riding, I'm, I'm riding with Cholo, but I have no animosity towards uh, uh, your Marvelous. homeboy Marvelous yeah. and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, they, that's something that's between them and shit. But... But I love what, what American Cholo's doing, and I just want to re reamplify that. Like, yeah, he's speaking up for us, dog, bro. And he's the man right now. He's the biggest motherfucker. He's what everybody's talking about, dog. He's the Don King right now. On behalf of us, though, only in America. <laughs> right, 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 right. He's Let's making a lot going. of motherfucking noise, bro. He came a long way, but he's always kept it real. Cause I I've been on an interview with him two years ago, bro. Same bato that I met then is the same bato now. Same battle, yeah. homie. Same spirit, same charisma. He's a good speaker, dog, and, and I applaud to him, dog. Salute. Let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. You know what? Um, other than that, um, anything else you want to promote? You want to yeah, push? Yeah, yeah. Anybody want to right, Come here, dog. Yeah, yeah. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna get my boy Rick, my good homie, dog. Slick Rick. Slick Rick, motherfucker. The Mexicano Slick Rick. Come on, dog. big dog. Come on. But um, you know. He has a brand called Orra Wear, dog. Orra Wear and, and Orra Wear like O R A. O R R. O R R. Okay. Orra. Orra. So you know there's no saying? A in it. Yeah, there's an A at the end. O, yeah, o R R A. Okay. But what he did was, I I identify with this me myself because I'm Chicano, dog. Yeah, yeah. But he came up with a flag. It's it's um I'm gonna let him speak on it too, but I'm gonna speak on it, um. Uh, it, the flag It's approved by both uh, Governments Of Mexico And United States bro No shit Real shit It took ten, Over 10 years right To 11, develop 11. I'm gonna let him talk about it bro But It's It's a uh, American of Mexican descent, dog, and I identify with that. Of At the end of the day, course, I'm Americano. I I was born here, but I always got love for my raza, bro. But with that said, I'm gonna let Rick take the motherfucking stage and speak on this flag, bro, because all my shows lately, I've been having him there with me. He's my wingman, dog, and I and I want this flag to get the recognition it deserves, because it's an identity thing for a lot of us, bro. You know what I'm saying? Okay. In my opinion. Come on, big dog. Come on. Let's go, what's, up, what's up, what's up, what's up, everyone? Uh, first and foremost, uh, introduce yourself, give us your name, and, you know. Okay. A little yeah, bit of background. Um, yeah, my name is uh, Rick with Autoware Productions, and uh, 
And, uh, you know, we, me and my pops, I'm one of the original artists. I'm, I'm one of the author, authors of the American and Mexican descent flag. And uh, it took eight years to develop and another three years legalize, legalizing it with both governments. So, um, you know, without further ado, I'd like to show it to everybody. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So, 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 so now we have a blue. Yeah, we have a blue. White with uh, uh, eagle. Yeah. And then we have the red. Right, right, right. On the left. Mm -hmm. Can you kind of explain that? Like, why why is it formed that way? Well, Greek, because we have stars on the, you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, we have stars in our American flag. And, you know, me personally, I identify I was born here as American, you know, on my birth certificate and, and, and everything. It's American, you know, but of, of Mexican descent, you know. Correct. Like, uh, uh, my, my, my father is a first uh, generation here. He served in the United States Marine Corps, you know, props to pops, you know. But, um, you know, so I identify as American of Mexican descent, you know what I'm saying? And uh, as you guys were talking about earlier, people that were born here and people that are born over there, you in know, Mexico, credited, yeah. yeah, labeled as, you know, pocho, chicano, you know, uh, uh, other stuff like that. So, um, you know, I'm you know, I'm Chicano, you know, I, I feel Chicano, you know, I yeah. was raised and born here. So, um, um, first, uh, the uh, red stands for bloodshed, valor, courage, and resistance, Mexican-American bloodshed for freedom, and also U.S. military service. You know, we, we had a lot of, uh, you know, Mexican-American uh, people that served this country that also, you know, bloodshed and stuff like that for their, for their freedoms. And we also had a lot of uh, um, uh, veterans and soldiers that also served this country but then got deported, you know. So, you know, it stands for that too, but the white stands for peace, home, family, and love. The blue stands for justice, education, science, and technology, blue skies, and space exploration. The uh, golden eagle means Amer Amer uh, Mexican culture, the forest green circle, keep America clean, safe, and beautiful, and strength and unity. You know, I'm really pretty big on unity, and then, uh, you know, um, hearing your guys' conversations earlier and stuff like that, they're really big, touchy subjects. Yeah. Um, you know, big ups to Gil, and big ups to uh, Marvelous, you know, that's a real motherfucking G right there in my eyes that I've seen that, you know, yeah. it, it, it is uh, representing himself, you know, uh, correct, you know, from, from the streets, and also, you know, Gil making a voice for us, and I appreciate, you know, what he's doing for the Chicano and, and and the culture and making our voice heard, you know, and, and that's big props, bro. You know, to me in my eyes, you know, uh, otherwise what anybody else thinks about the about, about the VOT, you know, a big props to him, bro, for, for having the voice, to having the platform and using it in the correct manner and addressing the right issues. You know, uh, certain things come up in, in people's careers where, you know, once they get there, we're always going to have haters. You know what I'm saying? You're, yeah. You know, you're doing something right when you got a hater or when you got people, you know, trolling and, and may, tr trying to make a mockery out of your name and your reputation. You know, that, that's, uh, you know, that's something big. But um, um, as far as uh, my background, bro, you know, I, I grew up in the SGV. I grew up in Bassett. You know what I'm saying? After I, 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 I you know, I grew up there and, and you know, lear learned my ways and stuff like that, man. And, you know, a lot of respect. Uh, I played football at East Los Angeles College. You know, thank God I got a scholarship to kind of like, you know, it, it, it's it's saying my life, bro. You know what I'm saying to uh, kind of yeah. pull me a, a away from uh, my childhood just ways when 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 I was you know young and stuff like that and and you know what I'm saying mis, mis kind of not, not misled, bro. But it, whether it was self defense, bro, or whether it was uh, you know defending my my honor or or something like that, bro. You know what I'm saying I I kind of grew out of those things and uh, fell in love with my rasa in a different way. You know and uh, to where. I want to make a homie, not break a homie. You know what I'm saying? And if he's doing something good, you know, more power to him. You know, let, let, let's support someone, you know, and let's support, uh, you know, people that are doing things in the, kind of that area. So um, when we came out with Auto Wear, it stands for one representing Raza Attire. And, uh, you know, it was doing good, but then there was still kind of something missing for the Raza, which was a flag, you know, like what would represent us more as a Raza? I'm not only representing, you know, People from, from, you know, from Mexico that came over here and American and Mexican descent, yeah. yeah. But all of our raza, you know, you guys were uh, mentioning other other countries, you know, Honduras, El yeah. Salvador, you know. Uh, you know, those are still raza. You know, I still have love for my raza, bro, and what they're doing in their identity and what they're doing here. You know, that's very important, bro, because we've been in this region of the world since the beginning. We have we adapted, we thrived, and we overcame, you know, a bunch of other stuff, especially, uh, you know, within our communities as far as our identity, you know, uh, uh, are we from here or from there, you know, and uh, you're too brown to be from right here and you're too white to be from right here. You know what, we are Chicano, bro. We are, uh, you know, our people. This is part of our people, part of our cultures. 
know, we like low lows, you know, we like a bunch of other stuff, bro. But, you know, the, the, this is who we are, bro. And, and no one's ever going to take that from us, whether we were born here or born over there. Yeah. This is kind of who we are as a, as a community, as a raza and stuff like that. So you show the flag. You yeah, yeah. The flag? I, I showed him the flag. Yeah. So, Beautiful. you know, see it again, you know, yeah, there it, it is. Again, bro. Like that's the flag right there. It's mm -hmm. a representation of both sides, bro. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing, bro, because it's mm -hmm. an identity thing that we, That's right. we do lack here. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, we, and we do lack that identity, you know, because uh, some people might be uh, shy to uh, represent, you know, the Mexican side and other uh, other people may be like uh, shunning upon, you know, um, you know the American side, bro. But yeah. you know, on dude, the mic. speak on the mic. Uh, but you know, but shunning the American side. But you know, I was born here. You know, I, I played American sports. I grew up in the, you know, in the neighborhoods here. You know, what I'm saying so. I, I did learn what was here. You know, and I adapted. You know, both cultures, bro, the yeah. American side and the Mexican side, and that that became a part of me. Who I am as a Chicano. Who I am and what am I doing here? You know, and and. The opportunity, you know, and, and the education yeah. that's available to all of us, you know, and yeah. uh, uh, success doesn't necessarily mean you're successful because, dude, su success is like being pregnant, bro. You're successful. People tell you congratulations, congratulations, but nobody knows how many times you got fucked, bro. I'm serious. I'm serious, bro. To, to everybody. You know, people say, yo, success, success, but nobody knows how many times you went through it. You know what I'm saying? And, and you actually did that. No, you're so. right, because I know girls have been fucked many times. They've never been <laughs> she's su successful? She's never been su <laughs> successful. Bro. No, all right, right. But until she, you know, got that baby daddy that's going to come along and, you know, hey, pay oh, for she all of us. Him, so anyway. <laughs> oh, shit, all right, all right. Uh, but, but uh, you know, uh, success is, uh, you know, pay, pay Actually, pick a, a valid, you know, point, yeah. you know, a direction, you know, and move that towards that direction. If you're moving that towards that direction, whatever level you're at, you know, it it, it could be, you know, at the bottom, and you're, right. you're just making a turnaround. It could be on a, uh, on a recovery you know, of an addiction. You know, success could be on any level, bro. Whether it's right here or up here, you know, as long as you pick a worthy ideal and move it towards that direction, you know, and and. And, 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 st and start doing it in a positive way, bro, right, you know, because, right, right. you know, we could bicker and fight all day long, bro, and that's not going to get us nowhere. No but way. just heated arguments, bro, and then us puffing out our chest or, you know, yeah. oh, okay, you know, a piss contest, you know. Right. But uh, once we start backing each other, bro, and start saying, okay, I respect you right there. Here's the lines in the sand. I, re I respect you over here. You know, now, now what are we going to do about it? You know, how are we going to approach, you know, the, the, the next thing? You know, the, the, that's where it is. That's where the unity starts, bro, on liking somebody's stuff. Not hating on it because even myself, you know, jumping into this stuff with the aura wear and this and that. Oh, homie, you just shitted on the Mexican flag. Oh, you just shitted on the American flag. Nah, chale, bro. You know, this is for us. This is for all of us. You know, yeah, I am American first and I care about this country. So you know? but by you displaying that flag. Mm -hmm. Have you got shitted on? Oh hell yeah, a lot of times, bro. A lot, uh, a lot of times. Oh, you're not Mexicano. You're you're not a you're not American. Uh, when we first opened up our PO box, we got a mega hat in in our PO box. You know, I thought it was pretty funny, bro. But you know, it, you know, people are are coming at us like that. You're not American, you know. And when we were going through the litigation with the U.S. Library of Congress, because this is the very first flag that got approved by the U.S. Library of Congress, bro, recognizing our raza. So when we were going through the approval of the U.S. Library of Congress, we got denied for three years, bro, for the copyright the, to own this. And we had to write a letter. We had to go. Uh, we had to talk to uh, people from the Congress, senator shit calls, bro. Like they had to pull their cars, bro, because we wrote a letter that, they, no, this is from America. This was created. This was created to recognize our culture, our people. It, everything that you see around us, bro, we have our hand in, bro, whether it's construction, whether it's the, the, the school system, whether it's supporting artists, it's black artists, it's black presidents, you know, we have our hand in, in the majority of stuff to where it needs to be recognized. We need to be respected on a different level, bro, than just yeah. looked upon like that. Like we're, like all of us, all the Chicanos, you know, even our immigrants are looked upon, you know, yeah. Bad, bro. Bad. They come over here to do good, bro. They come over here to, uh, you see the Palatero mass, bro. You you see all of them, dude, you know, trying, feeding their families, raising their families. My best friend that was, uh, that I grew up with, bro, uh, his parents were from Mexico. They didn't really have a lot of stuff, dude. And, you know, I used to call him, Pat, hey, bro, here's some K-Swiss, you know what I'm saying? Here, here, yeah, come yeah, on, bro. Yeah. You can't be walking with the homies like that, bro. You know, you can't be walking around like that, bro. I'm gonna, let me suit you up a little bit. But, uh, you know, that's where it starts, bro, the, the, the support, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. we have to just, even if it's our own agenda, you know what I'm saying, that we have, 
we got to put that aside, bro. We got to unite, dude. We yeah. got to like kind of Absolutely. express that. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Or my brother, any shout outs you want to give? Because uh, I sh- yeah, this. yeah. Shout out to uh, you know first and foremost, bro. Thank you for having me on. Bro. Absolutely. And thank you for having the ho- the homie hypnotic man and uh, big respects to you, Tony, for uh, always putting on the rasa man uh, Absolutely. and always talking thank about you. touchy subjects, bro. That need yeah. to be touched. That need to be. Uh, talked about bro you know what i'm saying yeah. much respect on that bro because uh um, not too many people are talking about those type of subjects or even bringing up those type of issues and uh interviewing you know our rasa and stuff like that so man big ups yeah. to you man and what you're doing man and uh you know just I, we, we, thank we, you we recognize man the community outside of who you know man you know people are watching man and, and a lot of people respect you bro and repeat and appreciate what you're doing for the thank community you, thank all right, you all right. thank you mm-hmm Big dog, mm-hmm. come over here, give your last shout outs. Oh, all right. What's up, what's up? No, you good, you good. Thank all right, you. All right, all right. My bad, my bad, Spence, all right, Damn, let's go. Tony, you got me all fucked up, fool. Bro, you know what? But that's, that's Mando bro, bro, coming to the road. When have, right have I not got you fucked up? I, I got to drive, dog. So does that mean I put something in your drink? You got some tacos here, dog, or what's I'm cracking? Saying you fucked up like that. <laughs> he wants something in his drink. <laughs> right now, Miss Pacman's like, "Hey, what happened he to my, in my drink? Damn, all right, you took my my my. He put something in my drink. Where's my red cup, fool? I don't know. You don't got blue cups. Yo, yo, just give me another red cup. Tony, you don't got no blue cups. You don't got no blue cups, fool. No blue cups. Oh yeah, I'm not a gamer. Bro. I'm sorry. Well, I mean, this is what. Uh, Tony, let me get a shot. Let me get a shot. Oh, hell yeah, let's do it. This was like, yeah, let's do it. Is there another bottle over there? No, they finished it. Oh, they finished it. Hey, Tony said, hey, you guys got that. They finished it an hour ago, dog. Okay, Okay. I got to give it to my boy right here. Uh, That's cool. That's cool. That's enough. All right, right, for sure. Fuck, you guys killed. Hey, hey, CR. You spilled it like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you know what? Hey. I just want to say, bro, CR's right here with his crew. We got we got black people here in the black community Absolutely. here while we talking about black and brown. You Absolutely. know what I'm saying? So just so the fans know, like thing. we ain't here like, oh, it's just Mexicans here. We speaking about this shit in front of the yeah, community absolutely. too, dog. That's we, a beautiful thing, we, And we're speaking real shit, bro. And, and it's this is conversations that need to be had, bro. You know what? Because, look, if black and brown community come together, we could run this whole fucking world, bro. And that, y'all already did it. You and High C did it. Right. That was 30 years ago. In, in 1991. So you, you gave an example bro, of what can be, bro. bro. It's just people. It's just right. Yeah. People. Politics. Bro, in 1991. It's egos. It's egos, too. Individual. You got it, Mexican Mafia, uh, Black Gorilla Family. Right, right, you got right. I see uh, motherfucking uh, Tony A. You got. Uh, 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 it's, bro. It's doable. It's doable, dog. It's doable. Everybody got it's just individuals, bro. But that was the first. Y'all was the first. Niggas ain't even kind of announced we're gonna do a black and brown. Right, 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 right. Yeah, absolutely. Y'all started from the beginning. Absolutely. Salute, salute to that. That was high scene talking. Yeah. Big dog. All right, what do you want to do, dog? Shout outs. (coughs) We doing shout outs. Let's go. All right. First and foremost, man. Shout out. Shout out to the familia, dog. Shout out. My hermanos, my hermanas, mi mamá. Shout out to my my dad in the in the swell, in, in the sky, bro, in heaven. Um, shout out to my fans, bro. The day ones, bro. Shout out Orra Ware, Orra Ware, the homeboy Rick that I just had on, man. He's been showing mad love. Yeah, and he's he's been there for all my music videos, dog. Just coming through with the. A mean ass fucking ice chest of chelas, Gatorades, waters. That goes a long way, bro. Because of my music videos, I got a lot of hint there. Yeah. So we're willing to accommodate that. And Ora does it from the love of his heart, bro. Um, shout out to all my day ones, bro. Shout out Ancient Face. He produced my last. Uh, he was a, como dice, the director of my last. He did the storyboard for my last video that's gonna be coming out soon. Okay. Shout out Ilza Kill. We're gonna be doing an album together. Like I said, shout out my familia and shout out to the Raza, homie. And then I got it. Is what it is, bro. Shout out American Cholo because he's the one right now, like in the forefront, bro. Just speaking up for us, bro. And um, and that means a lot to us. You know what I'm saying? Cause, cause there's we don't have a lot of representation out there, dog, in the mainstream, dog. And if he's gonna get Rolling Stone, Power 106, uh, fucking No Jumper to hear us, I'm behind homeboy 100%, dog. But, 
But at the same time, bro, I've been doing this shit for a minute, bro. I'm not here to toot my horn, like I said, but shout out to my motherfucking self, bro. I'm going to do my Conor McGregor shit, you know what I'm saying? Hell yeah, to yourself. Shout out to my motherfucking self, bro, because I've been doing this shit for a minute, bro. I've been on my Rasa tip for a while, bro. And I didn't do it because it was trending, you know what I'm saying? Three years ago, nobody was on that Rasa shit, bro. When I dropped Cholo Stilo seven years ago, every Mexicano was trying to be black, bro. But I still kept it Cholo Stilo, dog. And I've, and I've always known this, bro. The carnalismo, the, the Chicano style is embedded in us, bro. It's right. never going to go away, bro. Right. You got countries in Japan and, right. and, and all these Asian countries that, that even Germany, bro, a lot of different areas that, that, that embrace our culture, bro. And it's sad to see that our own gente don't embrace it, bro. That's the saddest part. But the there's a lot of motherfuckers. So I just did a video shoot in Elysian Park. All I saw was Rasa. Shout out to Shook Bandit. Shout out Alize for coming out to my last video. Shout out to um, Carissa. You know, a lot of gente out there that were out there, bro. Like Chicanas, bro. Like they still have that stilo, bro. And that, that's always going to be embedded in us. So all you motherfuckers out there trying to be something you're not, don't forget that Rasa, that Cholo stilo, that Chicano, that Chicano stilo is never going to go away, bro. That shit lasts forever. And I've always been on it. Not because it was a fucking trend. I've been on it because that's what the fuck I am, bro. Uh, and now it's trendy. Now you're going to see all these motherfuckers trying to be Chicano, homie, when I've been doing that shit, bro. That's just what the fuck it is, bro. My nah, bad. Man. I got to get my little ego out there. All bro. right, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, Come on, okay. Tony. When it comes to Ch Chicano and black culture, right? we got Europe, we got Japan, we got Canada, right? Australia, all trying to bite LA <laughs> shit, bro. Let's just be honest, bro. Hey, look. It is what it is. It is what it is. So they're trying to bite our shit. So as blacks and raza, all I can say, bro, let's stick together. Right. Because when LA sneezes, the whole world catches the cold. Yeah. Think about that, bro. That's fear me. Think about that. Right, 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 right. Let's keep it pushing. Thank God that we live here, bro. Okay? Because we get to push the fucking culture. But let's make yeah, absolutely CR. Right. You got you got homies in, let's be honest, in New CR. York. With the Cholo Steel. We got bro. New York motherfuckers living out here. Okay? So all I'm going to say is when L.A. sneezes, the whole fucking world catches a cold. So let's keep pushing the right culture. Hey, hey, Chicanos out there, dog, but it's also prevalent. It's also prevalent in Dago. I know L.A. is the biggest what we known for, but it's out there in Dago, too. It's out there in, in Ventura County. It's it's out there throughout Southern California, bro. Let's keep, let's but Los keep, Angeles, is it is what it is. It's the biggest It's the biggest influence, Absolutely. but it's there in Dago también, bro, because I'm Escondido. Yeah. I was born Oceanside. I'm a Dago motherfucker, dog. I got a rep. Yeah. But, yeah. hey, Raza's everywhere, homie. Everywhere I go, I see fucking Raza, bro. Everywhere I perform, New Mexico. Arizona, Kansas. I see motherfuckers dressed up Chicana, Chicano, Southern Cali motherfucking attire, bro. And that's what the fuck it is. We influence the whole nation, bro. Fuck what everybody says, bro. Absolutely. Right. Let's go. That's right. Let's go. Mr. CR in the motherfucking building. Once again, hypnotic in the motherfucking building. Let's keep it pushing. So, uh, once again, Friday, I'll be here live with Marvelous, my co-host to Freaky Tales. Fuck. <laughs> well, that's going to be a good one. Yeah, absolutely. And then Sunday, I'll be here with, uh, I, I don't even want to say his name. Say it, just say no, it. No, I'm not going to say no, his name. No, you are, you, just say it, dog. Say it, dog. Say it, dog. It starts with a K. K? I'm not, not going to say it, no. But anyways, Marvelous, I love you. America Chola, I love you. I hope this doesn't cause no shit, but you know what? Let's keep it going. So, once again, Hypnotic, much love, much respect. This is your third time here. <laughs> much love. We out of here, carnal. Out of way. You already know what's up, dog. Absolutely. Mr. CR, much love. What's up? So, all I want to say is fuck Miss Pac-Man, gobble, gobble, and we're out of here. So, let's go.
Gary! <laughs> Hadouken!